wanna say, but I'm the baddest. You can try, but ain't no point, you never match shit. Cause I be on my new and it's incredible. I'm only coming down so you can snap me. I'm going to win this. I'm all in. And he is all in. Barcelona. Jason Mercier, he went with his instincts, he made yeah. the call. Yeah. There's the professional level, and there's the Ivy League. Come on! Sebastian Pauli coming to terms with what he has just achieved. Nicky Corrin has done it! Two main event cycles! Sebastian Mallets has gone from poker fanboy to poker champion. This is why people love the EDT. Hello, my babies, and welcome to the penultimate day, day five of the Poker Stars European Poker Tour in Barcelona, where from a record field of 2,294 players, we are down to the Sweet 16. We're already broadcasting today, just one more day to go, 1 p.m. tomorrow for the final table. Thanks for being with us yesterday. It was five full levels, plus 10 minutes of another, it should be more of the same today. We want to hear from you. Sort of. Some of you. Questions and comments are welcome. Use the hashtag PokerStarsTV on Twitter. Use the live chat on Twitch or YouTube. But in the words of my boss, before you do, I'm going to need you to engage your brain. Welcome back inside Casino Barcelona. A few days ago, all 90 tables in this room were playing the main event. Now just two tables remain. Before we see the final 16 players, let me introduce you to my co-commentator for this first session, Nicholas Walsh. Hello, thank you very much, Joe. I'm so excited today. Day five, 16 remain, 67,790 euros guaranteed to everyone remaining. 1.7 million for up top. Day five recommences, let's do it. We're gonna see where all 16 players sit chip count wise, starting with the bottom eight. Some stacks in the danger zone. Danger zone. Rocha, Haratunian, Guerrero, Machado. None of them particularly safe. Jack Salter hovering around 20 big blinds. Let's focus on the positive. Let's look at the top eight chip stacks. Some folks we saw yesterday, things Things looking pretty good for at least the top three stacks here. Over 100 big blinds for Patrick Yarosh. Kahan Mockery and Michael Pinto. These are the players headed into the day today. That is Yarosh, the overall chip leader. Kahan Mockery also crushing. Rocha was down to half a big blind yesterday, ran it up. Fabian Kowalski with a major suck out to close things out last night. Peterson Machado. Had well over 200 big blinds for most of the day yesterday. Still sitting pretty. Jack Salter being railed by his father, Walter Salter, and the entire Salter clan from Gibraltar. Jimmy Guerrero is a character, and we haven't seen much of him at a feature table, but we will today. Valentin Marius Cristea qualified online. Also, you're of Romania. And finally, Chip leader, Michael Pinto, unbagging at the feature table. This are the eight players who will be on the main stage today. Michael Pinto, overall chip leader, feature table chip leader, has an interesting story we'll get into later. Let's have a look at the other table, and that's it. Just two tables. Yarosh, the leader there. Fabiano Kowalski, second in chips. A big berth between one and two at the secondary feature table. Two big stacks at the main feature table. Shortest stack here, Peterson Machado. 
And as always, it is good to remind you that we are playing poker for money. For money. And we will finally get into some of these payouts today. 10th and 9th will almost certainly be paid out. More than likely 8th and 7th as well. And all of that big seven-figure scores will be redeemed tomorrow. Of course, that 1.7 million first place prize comes with that golden trophy. Nine, yeah. Nine should be Official nine. Official yeah. is eight, right? And cards Official. are in the air. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's mix up all the cards and pass them out to the players. All right, good luck, everyone. Good luck, everyone. Hey, a little good luck yeah, there. I'd love play? to see it. We're off. Hand number one. 1.1. Guys, I'm so pumped up. I'm not just saying it. I really am excited about this. Day five. <laughs> Playing down oh, yeah. to a final. Yeah, because of the camera. We jack off oh, UTG can, first hand of the day. Uh, Joe, is it bad luck to win the first hand of the day? Okay. No. Okay. Is it bad luck to win the first hand oh, yeah, of the yeah. tournament? Luck isn't real. <laughs> okay. It's one for the merch. Okay, uh, oh, no, okay. no problem, no problem. I, I can do like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw uh, my card. Oh, okay. I can do like this. <laughs> okay. Everyone's very chatty. Maybe some low. nervous excitement. No. I feel like that would help me out, Joe. Going into like this stage of the tournament, you've like you've bagged for day four. You're going into day five. English, if you went to a table and it was really serious, well, I think I'd be feel really anxious. You know, if you arrive and everyone's chatty, <laughs> kind of eases the tension a little bit. You know, you're like, oh, we're here to play a game. I forgot we're just playing a game. It's not that big a deal. I'm already nervous, chatty, and I think it kind of makes me a mark at the table. So if everyone was doing it, I would definitely Amen. not feel as much like a. You know. <laughs> Amen. No, I'm I'm with you. I think. Uh, I think I think I'm the same. That was supposed to be a fish noise. It sounds a lot like my turkey noise, but. <laughs> Neville Costa starts off on the button. How much did you start with, Scott? 47 big Fair. blinds. Good for you, man. Blinds are 40,000, 80,000 with an 80,000 big blind ante. And we did get 10 minutes into this level yesterday. Shouldn't really affect anything. We're just going to play it right on through as if we were starting with a 90-minute level, but it's going to be 80 minutes instead. <coughs> Somebody forgot to reboot the graphics machine. We'll handle it as best we can until we get those going. Okay. It looks so like Margerison was the original raiser, re-raised by Costa on the button, and it's back on Margerison now. The original raise is 175. Re-raise was to 400. And Margerison kicks him in. This, this is better, right? Yeah. Do like this? Thank you. Bueno. Listo. Like this? Stacking up a pot. Right? Perfect? Perfect. There we go. Thank you. It's fucking yeah, like cool, this. Huh? Okay, like you play many tournaments normally? <coughs> normally, you normally you play a tournament? Yeah. Yeah? Tournament play. You? No. Cash game? Yes. Interesting. Fun. A couple people in the chat asking you. about our good friend Khaled uh, So. Here on the rail though. <laughs> <laughs> Neville Costa's girlfriend I like play, huh? I like hanging play. out, huh? watching day five commence. Yeah, he got That's a big problem. Now, we, now that you gave him a new show. <laughs> uh, a couple of people asking about Kelly Dusso. Uh He did exit at the very end of yesterday. It, it, a very, very unusual pot. A very, very, not very unusual. sick, sick Not beat. unusual for those of us who are ex used to experiencing <laughs> just heartbreaking <laughs> defeat constantly. I don't imagine Kalidou runs like Joe Stapleton usually, though. So for him, it was probably yeah. pretty savage. It was absolutely savage. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was a very unusual pot. If you guys want to watch the full replay, we have a command in the chat, exclamation mark, S-O-W. If, if you're on Twitch, of course, this is on Twitch. Um, you can watch the replay of the hand. It was a really, really goofy spot. Uh, and I won't spoil it for you if you guys haven't seen it. But, yeah, what a way to exit. And my heart goes out to him. He's a... He's a really, really cool guy, and it's such an unfortunate way to exit European Poker Tour Barcelona 2022. Mark Jarrison raising for the second hand in a row. Didn't catch the cards the first time. This time it's King Queen. Rocha in the small with fours. Rocha 
the shortest stack at the table, elects to try to hang on, maybe ladder up. Yep. I you will make more money if you can outlast even one more player. Yeah, I think Forrest is the easiest fold ever here once you've seen the open. He's only got about 10 big blinds behind now. It, you're not going to set mine. We've spoken about this a lot. You know, you're not going to try and just, you're not, you're not going to put in, you know, 20% of your stack to try and flop a set and just be really confident about your hand. You're not going to shove and risk being called by over pairs, etc. Or even, you know, King Queen might still make the call if you're jamming there. I don't know. That seems a little defeatist, Nick. You can, with fours, you can flop a set. It, the board can come five high. <laughs> That's pretty good. Those are two good outcomes. If it comes five high, I'm going broke. <laughs> if it comes a four, I'm going broke. Joe's right. How much was it? Your stack? Of, uh, I've looked at it. I've looked at it. I did it. 400? I did it all. Mine, like 560. So the goal today is to play down to six players. But as ever, it's fluid. <laughs> kind of like me in college. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's a lot of different outcomes that can happen. Sure. No judgment. Uh, if we get down to six players very quickly, we'll probably play a little bit longer. Uh, if we play six full levels and we're only at seven or eight, we'll probably call it a day. But the goal is to get to six and have it so that uh, so that the average stack isn't super, super deep by the time we start the final table. Yeah. 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 I mean... You know, Joe's been doing this a long time. I think he's right. What we want is, you know, a decent amount of action tomorrow to follow, but not so much action that it's like 5 o'clock in the morning here in Barcelona when we finish, right? Correct. Yeah. You know, we want to uh, we want to see plenty of action tomorrow, fill up our entire schedule. My, my goal is that it doesn't go so late that when I hand the trophy over that I don't remember the winner's name. And that has happened multiple times. Let's give it up for <sighs> Manic Lurzer. Luckily, I didn't have to do that one, but that would have been a situation. <laughs> Guerrero all in, 8-7 suited. From plus two. Guerrero starting the hand with 1.1 million, which is around a 15 big blind stack. Kind of risky? I don't know. You know what? I'm, I'm actually not sure about this line. Uh, you know, these suited connectors are very frequently going to sneak into some of these jam spots just because they perform so well when called by some of the premiums. And actually, these are some of the best combos if you're going to run into aces or ace jack. He still has plenty of equity here, though, Joe. That's kind of the point I'm trying to make. He'll still be about 60 40 against ace jack. I mean, this is unfortunate. Also, shoving into the big blind of the biggest stack at the table who can afford to call you as light as possible. I think, I think yeah, this I is a call every time. <laughs> yeah. I know. <laughs> Certainly for the 136 big blind stack of Michael Pinto. Yeah, I mean, he's going to give it a thought. He does, you know, you don't want to make any mistakes here. You've got time. I just think if you really dig deep, he's going to shove a lot of weaker aces here. So immediately you're crushing a bunch of that. He might shove hands like 8-7 suited once in a while. He might shove like 9-10 suited once in a while. Pinto makes the call. Guerrero at risk. I'll say this. It takes heart to shove eight high from under the gun, plus two. Yeah, I'm not completely sure if this is the shove that that I would make, but, I mean, I'm not super well-versed on these sort of 15 big blind spots um, when we are still eight-handed. But as Nick said, you're going to be live a lot of the time when you get called here. Yeah, that's exactly why some of these perform so well when you're playing push-fold. Um, they perform some of the best against aces as well. Yes. Six, oh, seven, eight, nine, <laughs> ten. How do they know? Guerrero flops the joint. <laughs> Let's go. Pinto not dead, but Guerrero with 91% of this pot locked up. And the four on the turn seals it. Guerrero is going to double up. Don't tell me you can't play poker based on a feeling. <laughs> no, I love it. I, I, I honestly think that the shove is probably going to be fine. I, I I don't think it's bad by any stretch of the imagination, and that's what I'm talking about. He's like 60. He's going to have at least like 60, 40 a lot of the time he gets called. In this case, a little bit more than 40%. It was almost a coin flip and just flopping the joint. There's the reaction. Got him.
I mean, you're like, hey, I hope I run good today in day five. Oh, wait, I'm just flopping straights. Let's go. Jeepers. How do they know? <laughs> That's dope. That's dope. And everyone in the chat saying how sick that was. I, it was a coin flip, guys. Honestly, calm down. Calm down. That's why the shove there, I think, is going to be totally cool. No messing around. Got a tweet coming in here using the hashtag PokerStarsTV. It says, okay, so I've not been feeling great the last few days, hence my absence from the hashtag EBT Barcelona stream. But the rest of the PokerStars TV commentary team is fire and doing awesome work. Nick Walsh, Maria Ho, Griffin Benger, special love for Stapes. Miss you, buddy. Shout out. So, again, unclear about what a shout out is. Nick. <laughs> So this is from Hart again. He wants to be like, hey, James, sorry, not feeling great. We love you. We miss no, you, buddy. No, no, it's, it's James Hart again. <laughs> Definitely not doing that. Oh, that was a shout out. No, I don't do shout outs. Oh, okay. Uh, that is high praise indeed. Thank you so much, James. That means a lot. You guys, I made it. I finally made it. I can quit now. I can, I can resign a happy man. <laughs> Yeah. Good stuff. The table absolutely loves that flop, Joe. A lot of fun happening here. Yeah. Didn't do too much damage to Michael Pinto either. Although, KN Mockery now top dog at this table. Costa, ace king suited. I do want to address something I already see happening in chat. I'm going to nip it in the bud, and I'm going to allow the mods to liberally time people out. I see a lot of complaining about tanking already. Someone had nine deuce. Anything that doesn't yeah. Go over the 15, like, t if it doesn't go over 15 seconds, you're not allowed to call it a tank. People are allowed to sit there and take their time and think about all their options and even balance their timing tells. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. If I see people complaining about tanking for something that doesn't even take someone's allotted 30 seconds, half of it, you're going you're gonna to sit in the corner for a while. Uh, yeah, but Joe, counterpoint, it's Chapro yeah, Saturday. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh. Uh, oh, no. Okay, okay, but guys, it's Chapro Saturday. We're going to allow a lot of nonsense, okay? But the tanking thing is ridiculous, so please, out of respect for us. I made it worse, didn't I, Joe? It is Chapro Saturday, but I'm, I'm, I'm carving out... <laughs> You're not allowed to complain about tanks that take under 15 seconds. I agree. Sorry. I agree. Come on, guys. I mean, we're playing eight-handed poker here. There's a lot to consider. They don't have the benefit of knowing all the chip stacks, you know, right there on the screen like we would online. They got to size up situations, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be a long day. Yeah. I'm very good for Sakai. Oh, yeah. All right, so here you go, guys. So now you have to fold a lot. There was a raise and a call pre-flop. Check, check. Eight of hearts on the turn. Mm -hmm. Ace King doing just fine. Ace King doing what Ace King is supposed to do, as long as you don't call it a drawing hand. It's supposed to be have a fair amount of showdown value in and of itself. And Margerison here. Probably once there's a check on the flop, is thinking my ace is my ace high isn't good enough with the kicker I have, so he might turn his hand into a bluff. A lot of hands like queen jack probably would have bet the flop if you were in Costa's position as well, so he's not going to have as many of those. Does decide to check with some showdown? That also makes plenty of sense, but that is an opportunity once your opponent is checked to take some shots. That's not to say your opponent can't turn up here with some four x, maybe some nine x. Although 4x probably a little bit less likely given uh, the position that he opened from. Ace on the river is going to cost Margerison at least some chips. Like I said, when it goes check, flop, check, turn, he's got to be concerned about other aces. And with his kicker, yeah, good check, good check. It's going to be a check call river every day, I think, in my book. Host is like, well, I kind of want to cry and call from like an 8 here once in a while. So he'll probably go... He'll either go small to target some of those smaller pairs, or he'll go big to try and get max value from some larger hands like 10x. Although 10x probably defends their hand or protects their hand, excuse me, on the turn as a lead.
you put yep. three, two, five. So about oh, three quarters wrong? pot and a call. Ace King is going to play. Jarrison drops slightly. Cost to up to 60 big blinds now. If you bust, I'll take it off. So if you're in, I'll keep it. motivation for you to stay in the tournament. I've already banned someone for complaining about tanking after I said not to complain about tanking. That takes under 20 seconds. So come on. I can do this all day. Mati, you know you have no Mati? Mati? Get about Mati. Oh, you mean Shisha. No, it's like uh, missing. Giomas, luckily, because of Chat Pro yeah, Saturday, Messi, says, pretty uh, bad call. Uh, and uh, even though you're 100% incorrect, Chat Pro Saturday dictates, yeah. Oh, oh Joe. Yeah. Yeah. Well said. <laughs> I almost did it. I almost did it. He reminded me it's just last minute. All right, fine. Argentina. <laughs> Yeah, imagine calling with top oh, pair, on. Joe. <laughs> oh, a terrible call. Oh, what a terrible call. <laughs> calling oh. one bet with top pair. Yeah, it was pretty yeah. terrible, right, chat? Yeah. Oh. Better? Yeah, okay. Yeah, uh, I'll have to listen to you. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, then I, I need to go there. <laughs> where are you from? Where are you from? Brazil. Uh, sorry. You know you're sorry. Ramate, sorry. You know you're Ramate, huh? Jimmy the patch. I'm going to die. I'm super Sorry, sorry. <coughs> Sorry, guys. It's okay. It's okay. Bye, guys. <laughs> I think at an international table such as this, Joe, you know, you're going to get a little bit of... It's going to be a couple languages flying around. Just keep it... Keep it chill, especially during the hand. Jumas chimes back in to say, everything is relative. In some cases, top pair is like five high. Nick, it's Chat Pro Saturday, so we have to tell Jumas how smart they are uh, for thinking that they should fold top pair on a non-straighty, non-flushy, non-paired board. Oh, Chad, I wish you could see my face right now. We might have to call quits on Chat Pro Saturday. I don't know. It's already causing a lot of pain to Nick. I'm not really loving it at the moment. You guys, you guys have taken something which could have been so fun and so pure and ruined it in the first five minutes. Heratuni and all in over the top of the open from Caustic who had King Nine of Diamonds. Yo, Curtis Lambert in the chat. Shout out, buddy. Good to see you. He wants me to bring him a hoodie back. We'll see. I'd like to give Shane here, after Costa really folds, I'd like to give Shane here the opposite of a ban. Really close. This like Should be a ban on anyone complaining about tanking no matter how much time is on the clock. They are the players who are there and playing, not any of us watching. That's a far more accurate statement. VIP? Do you want a VIP him? Let's, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to knight you. <laughs> for him, it's like in eight. It's too much. For me, yeah, yeah, it's overwhelming. Uh, in eight. My apartment doesn't. <laughs> BC says, I sort of need a commentary face cam to see Nick's grimace right there. Yeah, I, it's like screams internally face. I will have call you. I will, I will call you with the <laughs> instead of him. Okay. What's. 40, 40, it would be a pleasure to develop you. You are not. Uh, uh, well, I'm a straddle. I'm a straddle. But you, right you can come. You can come. Oh, be, you can oh, come yeah. between, uh, bro, if you want. Oh. Like in cash game, you can come. You can come between. He must create attack, la putain attack. Somebody saying? He said must create attack. Jose, to answer your question. The video you're seeing is 30 minutes old. The voices you're hearing are live. We're seeing it for the first time with you, but there's a 30 minute delay on the pictures in order to maintain the integrity of the game. I like the way you fall. Like the Matrix. <laughs> is that a compliment or is it like Dimitri? Matrix. Dimitri, like the... No, the, the, the Matrix. Oh, the Matrix. 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 <laughs> Neo. Neo. How does one pronounce, pronounce the Matrix in French? Ben Danelli going to open this pot. King 10 offsuit.
Is that the face you make during Chat Pro Saturday, Nick? Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> I think, you know, last time Chat Pro Saturday fell on a final table day. And today it falls on a penultimate day. And I might just have to say that there's no Chat Pro Saturdays on penultimate or final table days. On a day two, maybe. Day three, even. We could get away with it. Guerrero does not flop a straight this time, defending in the big blind with 7-6. Hey, no, bro. I fall. <laughs> Guerrero. I fall. That's my move. I want, good, bro. I want to tell you to fold pre flop. Yeah, I want to fold pre flop. Yeah, yeah, why you defend? Yeah, yeah. I, said, <laughs> I, mean, I promise you, it's a very big end. Oh, but okay, I, like I was scared. Eight, 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 eight track suit or something like that. No, no, a little bit less. A little bit less. But I want to fold. I said, yeah. <laughs> what is the point to play against the best poker player in the, of table, course. the table? Yeah. That's. I want to fold. Yeah, really. From the beginning. <laughs> Stupid. I give you chips. But don't tell to him because he starts to to three bet the button. If you tell to to him, uh, he's do, in, you're, you're the best. Uh, yeah, if you tell to him, uh, you are not like a big mind. Uh, <laughs> no, man. I like All right, guys. I mean, you. So, you just you. as an illustration. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, he starts to three bet. Oh, he wants moment. to, but he just Ooh. give up. Scott? Scott? Or, uh, Leave Scott alone. Yeah, Scott. He's not said a word. A good... Scott <laughs> is the second best. <laughs> Poor guy has not said a word. Scott is the second best. <laughs> it's okay, Scott. I know, I know. I, I protect I know you. Scott. Thank you. I didn't even understand what the comment. I didn't even understand what happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the superhero is Puka Priori, the You know, we're the two only normal ones left. <laughs> yeah. Which which one? Which <laughs> Me and him. No, you are not normal. <laughs> not at all. Like, not at all. Gulano! All right, action folds around to Bendinelli. Ace four off. Marley did that really funny video where um, the guy's being super chatty and he looks down at aces yeah. and he's like, uh, uh, that, that was a good one. I like that one from her, yeah. Yeah, that was good. <laughs> he wills up for like five minutes and goes, sorry, what was the race? <laughs> Mark Jarrison now with the 8 7 suit in his turn. This could be the hand of the day. Heratunian short. 15 big blinds, ace 10 on the button, facing oh. a late position raise. Oh, oh no, Guerrero Ooh. Reese shows behind him with oh. ace queen. Stepped in it this time. Lightning fast. Guerrero got it in a bit of a dog before. Flopped the joint. Now he's the favorite. Does have Haratunian covered as a result of that double up. <laughs> You have to, I think you're, you're five starting hands, yes, like course. seven dudes, five, eight, Queen? nine, yeah. four. Oh, it's actually nothing. Been <laughs> that's good end. Uh, it's a good end, yeah. It's a good end, yeah. Don't try. Don't try. Don't try. Don't try. Don't try. Domination situation. I mean, chop okay. is fine enough, yeah. Some chop opportunities yeah, now. Come on, the three, bro. Yeah. Come on, the three. Come on, the three, bro. <laughs> No ass. <laughs> Swiss is fair enough. Okay. Turn is a six. Three, six. <laughs> Swiss is fair enough. I'm okay with the shop. River is a four. Ace, queen, hold, ace, ten, dust, Heratunian, out. On this river, he can go in with an ace part. First player eliminated, yeah, sure. why, eliminated here on day five. 67,790 <laughs> euros. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone else just laddered up 14K. But for sure, you are the best player in showdowns. Like, yeah. And then there were 15. 
you know the cool story? I buy yeah, go back, I'm gonna go back and get those uh, sunglasses. Okay, okay. Like, uh, 67,000 yeah. is a lot of money, but you don't want to replace like $400 shades. I mean, you know, shades are shades, bro. <laughs> How did it go the cash game? I don't know. I, I, I need heard to finish won. like uh, 11 to break even. 11 to break even. The cash game. Uh, hey, come on. I promise you, 11 to break even. So let me finish 11. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I just want, I don't play in the end. I want okay, to finish okay. 11. Yeah, they am even on this festival. You're in the bubble now. What do you mean? You're in the bubble. Almost in the. Yeah, now I'm in the bubble now for me. Yeah. For my festival. Take care, bubble. <laughs> bubble fest. It's kind of bubble, yeah. yeah. He goes, I, I got a different bubble from you guys. I have to come 11th just to break I'm even for EPT. I had, I had the same in Prague in the tank. I had a festival bubble there as well. I just <laughs> made it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. That's a good stuff. <sighs> Question here from Area 22 it says, hey, Joe, viewer from India here. What happened to the Indian guy, girl, who folded pocket kings because he got bluffed on a one-card straight board? Um, yeah, no, he's he gone. He gone. If you guys want to see an actual image of my reaction to Chat Pro Saturday, go and check out my Twitter. At Nick Walsh TV, <coughs> I uploaded an IRL photo of my face as Joe told me I had to agree with whatever everybody said in chat. Also, Area 22, if you want to find out where everyone in this tournament finished, you can check out the Poker Stars blog. There's a new Poker Stars Live app that yep. I believe has all the results in it. Yeah, very, very cool app, and it keeps you right, like, literally by the second up to date with what's going on at any live event. As well as giving you some cool schedules for upcoming events as well, like you know, I don't know, EPT London, for example. Excellent. King seven versus king eight, hijack versus big blind. Mockery checks to Pinto. These are the two biggest stacks. I feel like a C-bet's pretty standard here. Ace nine six is pretty dry. Nice and small. Don't have to go too big. Maybe one third at this stack depth. 150, 160, 170. Ooh, okay, a little bit on the bigger side here. Goes for 260, a little bit over half. I think that's probably enough. King seven, no back door, easy fold. Would love to uh, love to hear some analysis from Pinto on that that sizing. These are sometimes spots where you're going to want to size up for sure. Man, you what? Well, but now, what do you do if you win 1.7? Playing I, like uh, me, I played the bubble. I don't care. Or something? Or Trist yeah, asks, Lex and Spraggy yeah, played in some of these, right? How'd they do? No. Anyone know? I don't I think don't, Lex don't played think the main event. Man. Spraggy did Maybe play I'll the main. Go, uh, buy Jimmy a dinner in Paris. Cash. I think yeah. laddered up at least yeah. once. Yeah. Me, I play for the bubble. You play for the win. Yeah. Well, don't forget me. That. I play for the staff. <laughs> for the uh, 11 space. I play for the trophy. What? Trophy. You play for, I play for the 11 space. Ah, glory, yeah. Amsterdam asks Break Pinto even. isn't that experienced, right? Based on his hand and mob. Pinto's yeah. got a really interesting story. We're going to hear more about it later. Isn't that what we're But apparently. He was in a motor vehicle accident a couple years back, at <laughs> which point he decided he was going to try to do some things that he'd always wanted to do, give him a new lease on life. And uh, poker turned out to be one of those things. So I do think he's relatively new to it, well spotted. Making the most of it, though. Final 15 feels pretty good, man. Sevens are going to open up here from under the gun. Guerrero in the cutoff. A seven off. Doesn't have that. He's got. Uh, he's got about sorry, forty-seven big blinds. I was going to say he's one of the shorter stacks, but he certainly has a, has enough chips to play if he wanted to. I think a seven is probably easy enough to get away from from that position, though. Not great playability from that far out of position, especially against the sh tighter range of the under the gun open. It's a big raise. Well, Rosha made some magic yeah, happen sorry. yesterday. It was down to half yeah, a big yeah, blind and ran it up to, uh, I want to say, 30 or 40 big time. blinds again. Yeah, yeah, but, uh, Unfortunately, now is back in a similar position, has eight big blinds. 
But maybe we'll see that magic more than once. Moments ago, I answered a question about... Okay, that's in French. We can talk over that. I, was, I answered a question about... Uh, no offense, just most of our audience speaks English. I asked a question about how some of the members of Team Poker Stars did. How did Lex do? How did Spraggy do? And uh, neither one of them really did anything of note here. Spraggy did win the True Jordy Showdown, but we've got a member of Team Poker Stars here who actually won an event. Congratulations, winning the eight-game mix event. Close, close. Horse. 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 The yes. horse at the five-game mix event. Five-game limit game. Yes, that game. Mason Pie, welcome Hello. to the booth. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure. How's it going, Pie? Yeah, going well, going well. How's everyone doing? We're playing two card games. Two cards. Two cards. Two cards. Let's check out some of the bants here at the table. Somebody see us on TV? I think they quit. I think they quit. Yeah, yeah. We don't have any street. I don't wear this patch for nothing. Don't bust me, guys. Don't bust me. Don't bust me. Don't do anything crazy. I didn't say my card, bro. But I'm gonna call you correct. Like, people looking at this, what is that doing? I'm telling you, they've never seen anything like this. I've got this people do the final table. Commentators, yeah. My God. Rosha all in, small to big. Yeah, it's gonna get through. Let's talk to Mason for a second. This is going to be a fold, as long as these guys don't pipe up with their chatter. Mason, I saw the video of your uh, fist pump. Your celebra your, it, your it was a relief, really, okay. to be honest. So, I mean, it was a long battle. So it was meant to be a one-day tournament, um, and we battled for 14 hours, and we realized we were not getting anywhere near the final table. The bubble took so, so, so long, and it was about 2 o'clock when the, the money bubble burst. And then we carried on, played to about three-handed, um, and decided to call it a day about 5 o'clock in the morning. Then we wow. came back yesterday and uh, played three-handed. And it only took 40 minutes, so we could have actually done it yesterday. But um, Wow, okay. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, came victorious. Maybe beginner's luck, maybe, but uh, yeah, super relieved, super happy. And uh, well, you're not a beginner to uh, limit games. No, you not mean to limit. You mean live? To live. So like, sure. this is the first EPT that I've actually played at. I was in Prague for comms in 2019, which seems a lifetime ago now. But um, this EPT in Barcelona was the first time I played. We had an eight-game tournament at the start of the series, and then obviously this horse tournament, which finished yesterday. So in between, I've just been on vacation, basically. So I've only come here for these two tournaments, and somehow we managed to, to bink one. So happy days. That's cool, man. That's really cool. So what's the story of this main event? We're already down to 15. Wow. Any qualifiers that I need to be noted of? Or? There is a qualifier. Cristea from Romania. You're Romania. You're Romania, of course. Uh, qualified for 530, although he's a, a relatively accomplished player. Not exactly the Cinderella story it would be if you or I qualified. <laughs> Sorry, $55, excuse me. Wow, $55, not 530 Nice. Oh. <laughs> That's a little bit more fun. Somebody bust. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. Costa kicking things off with a raise. Queen Jack. It's so weird because I haven't seen Twitch chat for a very, very long time. Been away, UKPT Nottingham, you were there as well, Did, some, did some of your hair grow back? Did yeah. uh, some of your ailments, yeah. just the toxicity? No, your, your yeah. community is pretty good. No, I mean, I love my community very much, and uh, I think they're very, very happy for me. I mean, the, the amount of support that I got yesterday, Nick was on the rail as well. He was there, came out of comms, or maybe he was on break to, to come around me. It was, it was class. Yeah, I'm glad I was there too. I think that uh, that little video I, I got of you, the fist yes. pump, I think that's going to end up in, in in your spot at some point. Yeah, a no, highlight. They put a little tweet out about it that interview today. Did it actually get broadcast on the show yesterday? I'm not even sure, but um, yeah, it was it was lovely, man. It was Beautiful. lovely. Yeah, it was a great moment, honestly. Well, we were so excited when it happened that I announced it immediately, and then I was like, oh, wait, maybe we're going to actually reveal it in some video footage. <laughs> it was it was so weird. So obviously, I got the the, the picture. Uh, with the trophy okay. done and the guy okay. doing the photography okay, yeah. put the cards down on the table with the winning hand 
And I picked these cards up like, you know, like in an arcade machine uh, where you're picking like up the, the toy. I was picking up the, the cards like this. And the guy looked at me like, this guy has never held a, a pair of cards <laughs> in his life. And I was just holding these Have seven cards Have you ever seen like a winner's photo yeah. before, Mason? Right. You could tell that was the first time I've ever done it. So. <laughs> I, 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 I imagine the, the photographer thinks we play poker like, like you know, in the old yeah. west where we fan the cards out like this. You know, when we're playing live, that's not that's not even how we play. Right? I mean, no offense, but True Jordy picks up the cards and looks at them. He <laughs> leans back in his chair like he's in a saloon every single time. <laughs> Guerrero raising out of the gun, Queen Jack. Pocket sevens for Costa. And some would call this a loose open under the gun. We are what seven handed. Yep, seven-handed. I think oh. a lot of it depends on the sort of table dynamic here. Who's in the big blind? Uh, who's on your button? Who's going to have absolute position on you as well? In this case, Pinto's on. Pinto's in the small blind, so probably he's going to be a little bit on the tighter side generally. Uh, on the button, 74 big, so not exactly short, but also not one of the deeper stacks. And Scott Margerison, big blind. 78 big blinds. I think Queen Jack's probably playable from here. Maybe a little bit on the wider side. Pi, what do you think? Nick, you're asking me about two car games. Um, <laughs> that's a big issue in itself. Uh, personally, I like to play on the tighter side of things, but that's because I'm not as experienced as these guys right now. I mean, they are top 15 of the, the biggest ever EPT main event we've ever had. Um, so I would take my advice with very, very little pinch of salt. The tiniest of pinches. The, the tiniest of pinches. Just a light seasoning. Limit hold them? Maybe. Maybe limit hold them, that's easy. That's just clicking buttons. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, kind of as if by... How about this move by Pinto, by the way? <laughs> yeah. Three betting, ace nine off in the small blind against UTG and UTG plus one. <laughs> taking it down. Yeah. And, I mean, that's one of the reasons why maybe having a slightly <laughs> wider open from such an early position does open you up to some of these lines, especially if, you're, if your opponents start to notice yeah, how that's wide that's you're opening pilot, there, right? Off, yeah. As soon as you have the <laughs> offsuit variety of Queen Jack, Pinto that's another 16 combinations. Pinto checking in with his pal, Nick, on the rail. Oh, hello, yeah. Nick. Hey, buddy. I love your name. Nick in there. <laughs> Nick out there. Nick in here. Go on, Nick. Sorry. Yeah, no, sorry. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, as soon as you introduce the, the offsuit variety you have another 14 combinations excuse me um that and that means that's 14 more times that you're going to be opening from that position that you otherwise wouldn't if you were just playing the suited variety well that's the beautiful thing right when you're such a chip leader going into the final two tables of this main event the pay jumps are absolutely ridiculous and you can just apply so much pressure to those medium stacks It really is an incredible spot with 1.7 million euros up top. I'm not sure if this has been talked about, but were we expecting this number? I know we were thinking the records were going to be broken, but were we expecting this number? I, th I said 2,100. Yeah. So I was off by almost 200. I undershot it by almost 200. And not even just the main event, the Australia's main as well, with 600k up top. That absolutely obliterating records as well. I also, by the way, uh, part of the reason I didn't get the number correct is because I wasn't sure that we would be able to accommodate 2,300 total entries. And so, bravo yeah. to the events team and to the tournament staff for absolutely. being able to even make this happen. Because there could have been a point where they were like, sorry, like we're good. Like, Go home. <laughs> exactly. Like I mean, I was playing till five o'clock in the morning. These dealers are working tirelessly uh, around the clock. Tournament staff, floors, etc. They are doing a smashing job. Poker Torres in the chat is absolutely right. It is twelve combinations, is what I meant to say. I misspoke. Of the offsuit queen jack, sixteen in total when you include the suited. What a strange thing to happen on Chat Pro Saturday. I mean, you know what? Oh. Uh, if oh, it I'm wasn't coming. Chat Pro Saturday, I wouldn't have allowed it. But uh, <laughs> yes, I'm. Uh, I just misspoke in the moment. Blind on blind here, Margerison versus Guerrero. Margerison has Guerrero well out chipped, but it's Guerrero who hits the flop middle pair. 
I'm guessing middle pair and a blind on blind hand is stronger than middle pair in other situations. Yep, of course. Um, as soon as the ranges are wider, there is more combinations that won't connect. And in situations like this, blind you blind middle pair, very, very strong. But it's Mark Jarrison who's betting. The eight of clubs might be Guerrero's lucky card. Guerrero shoved seven, eight suited on uh, the first hand, second hand. Yeah, something from like early that. position. Did he flop the nuts? And flopped the nuts. But as I came at my hotel room, I had croaked. Well, it's Go. not quite the nuts, but yo, hold on, six, six, nine, ten. That's the nuts, right? Yeah, he flopped the nuts. Flopped the nuts, yeah. yeah. As I came out of my hotel room, I heard Croaks go, oh, he flopped the nuts. <laughs> and, and I was like, all right, all right Croaks, i, I got to go, mate. i got to go. <laughs> that's funny. Just piecing it together later. Like, oh, that's what that <laughs> was. Yeah. <laughs> Mark Jarrison now contemplating firing again. As the King of Hearts hits the turn. Is the King of Hearts like a, a much better card to barrel off than, say, like a, a low card, Nick? Because you can obviously put pressure on those middling pairs, etc. Yep. Yeah, I mean, for, for the most part, uh, over cards to the board tend yeah. to be better barrel cards because they represent an, an additional over card to a uh, one pair type hand, like a deuce and right. a ten. I don't expect a ten to ever fold that turn just because people are aware of that fact, right? But the eight is definitely a little bit of an interesting one. When you've got a queen in your hand as well, you can start to sort of more plausibly tell a story like maybe you bet the flop with queen jack and then you continued on the king turn with the draw. In which case, even if you do have middle pair, the guy probably has two over cards and then an right. up and down straight draw to go with it or something like that. Um, I'm not sure if that's exactly what was going on. It looked like he was just trying to barrel the high card more, yeah. off, more often than not. But... Um, when you hold the queen as well, it makes it less like your opponent's going to have king-queen. Okay, Having said that, the way the hand played pre-flop, yeah, uh, you know, fish you know, not sure if that combo's going to be in there, but Where's all things to consider you? when you're uh, when you're in these moments. GBR Breakdown has a question for Pi. After the win, have you ever considered streaming mixed games? Uh, it has been known that I've taken quite a bit of time off, but I, you know, I have been around. I've been traveling. I was at UKPT Nottingham. We had the, the Summer Festival in Malta, which was an amazing experience. Um, but I will be back streaming WCOOP um, on my channel. We're going to be doing some cool stuff as well. Um, obviously, the schedule's been announced. We've got uh, championship events now, which is a nice little addition. Bringing the prestige back to WCOOP, which um, is really, really nice to see. It is the most prestigious online series um, that we do run. And it's good to see because we've got a uh, championship doogie. We've got championship uh, single draw horse eight game. Um, so, yeah, really, really excited for that. And I'm going to be streaming all of that in September. Cool. Uh, as long as, you know, everyone else will be as well. I, sure. do th I do think it's the most prestigious series because you've got Scoop, right? The spring championship of online poker. Then you've got WCOOP, the winter championship of online poker. And there's way more people indoors playing during the winter. So it's harder. It's like more difficult fields, which makes it the more prestigious of the two tournament series. Supermax asking, Nick, do you have any plans for WCube? I'll, I'll be doing tons of commentary for sure. But I have to say, in particular, EPT Barcelona and also Pi as well have both really inspired me to dive a little bit more deeper than I usually do in these WCubes and try and pull out a trophy. I mean... First of all, because Pi really, really inspired me to try and play some more mixed games this trip and actually gave me a couple lessons before I, I was going to join the horse, but I, I unfortunately couldn't make it for timing reasons. Reasons, But also, he's got a spade now, you guys. He's one-upping me on the team, so I got to start I gotta start pulling my weight, and I got I to gotta pull a W coop out of somewhere. Three-way action to this flop top pair for Guerrero. Second pair for Costa. Margerison with a total air ball. Margerson might be tempted to rep that ace. He does have position here. Um, doesn't have any back doors, which is always helpful when you're going to see that. But I think ace five tray is probably like a mandatory continuation here. Six hundred five in the uh, five thousand in the pot right now. Decide, decides to go for like a one quarter pot sizing. What do you think about Guerrero's flat there from the small blind with ace jack? See, now when I look at those positions, dealer, button opens, and then you're in the small blind with ace jack, it's a pretty reasonable hand compared to the hands that 
uh, the button's going to be opening. Um, should we be three betting this sum, or should we just play this as a flat? Because, I mean, it's pretty awkward being out of position against other people because the big blind is going to come along a lot there with a sure. great price. Sure. Honestly, um, it's it's a really, really interesting one. It might be the case where you three bet H-Jack suited, but you fly with H-Jack right. off, or, or, or maybe, the, maybe the alternative, I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, I think it's reasonable to three bet or flat here. His hand is really well disguised now, and I think it's possible for Margerison to continue barreling. Although it's difficult to see kind of what kind of, you know, hand he might... He's not going to have a five that often when he flats the, in the small blind, unless it's maybe like five, six suited. So he's probably more likely to have like hands like nine, ten suited here, maybe king, ten suited with the diamonds. So he might be tempted to go big on the turn and just try and get all those flush draws to fold if that's how he perceives the distribution of his range. Check, check, check also is reasonable, and he picks up some showdown on the river now as well with the 9-10. Pereira's got this hand locked up despite Margerison improving. May elect to bet here so things don't check around, and it looks like that is the case. That's what his glasses are telling me, at least. Five fifty. Mark Jarrison, the last player remaining. Quick fold from the pair of fives. Yeah, and as I said, he might have thought his opponent was on that flush draw, right? Yeah. So if he thinks he's probably going to have more of those suited situations that have flush draws than ace -X combos, then probably a nine is a lot stronger here than, than you might think. So he might level himself into a call, and I think I think I'd probably find myself doing the same thing, to be honest, Pi. The only thing that changes it is because the big blind's there, he's probably less likely to bluff into two opponents who might have called flop. So that does kind of tilt it a little bit more into a value range. So, gang, we've uh, only been focusing on the main feature table, but it's time to head over to the secondary feature table. I'm being told there's a major pot already in progress. Looks like cards are on their backs. It's going to hurt double then, you know. Oh, wow. I'll be honest, I probably... Looks like it involves Patrick Yarosh, the chip leader at this table. Or one of the chip leaders, I should say. And I saw a shot of Jack Salter. Yeah, it's Salter all in with Queen-10 suited kings for Yarosh. And that is it on the turn. Salter has come close. Specifically, the time he finished second in Monte Carlo, this time is going to bust in 15th place. And those chips are going to ship on over to Patrick Yerosh, who is certainly now the chip leader at the I'm table. 81,000, not bad. Sorry? And I'm the running after pay running. jumps come much quicker now. There's yeah. another ladder on you know, the table. Imagine, this fold was bad. <laughs> this fold, I made like some queen fold, yeah, versus the uh, yeah, this older Asian guy. But this guy was actually... Huh? I, mean, I would have fallen. Like no, nobody bluffed. It. Nobody bluffed. It. Like actually, I would bluff there, but I would call your hand. Too. You would, but this like this kind of guy is like, you know. No, he plays. Uh, he plays. Yeah. Now, now, yeah, I know. Yeah. Jack yeah, Salter like started the day with 20 big blinds. Was not the shortest the at the table. Was, like he saw that I'm like a little bit tilted, you know, after the big hand, you know, it was like. I'm committed, I was few around. Only hand 13 of so the, the penultimate day, and we've already lost two players. We're playing down to a final table of six. And that's where the pay jumps get really juicy. That is the goal. And we've got action that we were missing out on. It's going to be like this today, my babies. Back and forth all day, ping-ponging between these two tables. Guerrero opened... Yeah. Jack-10 suited on the button. Kahan Mockery, second in the chips at this table. Three bets out of the big blind with Ace-King. Guerrero is going to see a flop. Hits one club and one straight card. Uh, 
Jack Tenner clubs with the two overs and all the potential backdoors, backdoor flush draw, backdoor straight. And yeah. position. Of course. Yeah, absolutely. I think Mokri obviously has the initiative here, though, being the three better. And 9-5 Trey is super dry. I think you always continue here once you three bet. I mean, it's it's almost like it's a value bet at this stage <laughs> a lot of, in a lot of cases, right? Ace-King is just going to be the best hand on this kind of a texture so frequently. See, I'm a panic kind of player of Ace-King. I just much rather get it all in the middle pre, but and then <laughs> and then when I don't see an ace or king on a flop, I just start to panic. Mm -hmm. I think that was a quick call. Yeah, yeah Guerrero yeah, rec yeah. recognizes he he pr might have equity against hands exactly like Mokri's and decides to call. And Whoa. there's a straighty card on the turn. There we go. Yeah, even if you bust, you take a lot of money. Straighty more. card. Thirty k, you take one hundred k. And if that straight comes in, I think it'll be fairly disguised if we do get to the river. I don't, think, I don't think a turn bet here is particularly wild. If you are going to do it, though, it's got to be big. It's got to be chunky. you got to scare those 9x combos, maybe some of those small pocket pairs. He does decide to check. I think that's also a completely reasonable line, given the turn. 8-9 suited is going to be defending here some of the time, Pi. So that could be a, an absolutely savage turn for you when you just got the ace high and no way to improve against a turned two pair. So what is check to you here in a three bet pot? And you're sitting there with Jack Kai. Yes, you have the open ender. Yes, you do have the two overs. Do we want to bet here and try and fold out ace queen, ace king, all those ace highs? I think it's a big question about stack depth because what you right. don't want it to, what you don't want to happen is to get check jammed on on the turn. And right. the shallower you are, the easier it is for your opponent to justify that given what's in the pot. If you're really deep, it's really hard for your opponent to check jam if you're like 100 big blinds deep or something sure. like that, right? Yeah, SBR here for Guerrero is nearly one. So it could just be the pure jam. You could you could take it out of his hands completely and just get in on the turn. <laughs> okay, he's gonna go for a count. I think a small bet is probably m more scary, makes it look stronger than just the jam. Yeah, I think this might get a fold, but it would be really interesting here if uh, we did see Mockery continue and what Guerrero would do on the river if it was a blank. So what was that, about one-third on the turn, something like that, Pi? Yeah, 875K. Has about 2.1 million behind. Counting out the calling chips wow. and makes the call. Oh, Mockery wow. has been real tough this entire tournament. Yeah, yeah. Like, has zagged when he should zig and has zigged when he should zag. Oh. Oh. And it goes check, check, check. check. I win. Hey, oh, Guerrero oh. got him. The suited connector is paying off big time for Jimmy Guerrero. I saw you were breaking five off. Against Maria, that's why I called him. Huh? I thought it was a draw. I thought it was a draw. I saw you were breaking five off yesterday against Maria, that's why I saw you were breaking. I almost jammed three flop here. Yeah? Two more stops on the EPT this year. London back on the schedule for the first time in a long time. Everyone pretty stoked about that. Oh, yeah. Prague, Old Faithful, still on the schedule, was the first event back for most of us but london is the next stop on the tour yeah really looking forward to ept london it's been eight years since we've had it on the stop and in particular for me we've got a 1100 pound horse championship which is going to be awesome in addition to lots of other no limit hold'em events i'm sure you guys will be getting involved with satellites running of course as well to those events and good to see prague back in december before christmas because if you've never been to prague ept prague it's a lovely 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 place and especially around christmas time oh, it's, cool. it's quite magical it's cool. weird because pe people will accuse us of having diplomatic answers but every stop really does have something for sure um you know london of course being one of the greatest cities in the entire world you know right up there with new york Tokyo. I mean, London is just <laughs> yeah. vibrant, center of the world type location. And Prague has plenty of charm. Barcelona, again, summer by the beach. It's all got something. Yeah, don't forget, guys, uh, London this year going to be held in the Hilton Park Lane. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it was this great moment when we did the, uh, the Schumer Showdown. <laughs> 
where uh, Magincast, one of our one of our online streamers, Team Pro member, goes, "Wait, Park Lane? Like what? Like in Monopoly?" <laughs> <laughs> and I went, "Yeah." He goes, "That's that's really cool." Next to Mayfair? No way. <laughs> oh, that's right, because English Monopoly does use like Soho and um, yeah, yeah. Guerrero after winning that big pot with Jack Ten now picks up Queens from the cutoff, raises it to 180,000. Guerrero with a real hand finally. Raise and take for Guerrero. Been a great day for Guerrero. Started with around 15 big blinds, is now up to about 80. 25 minutes left on the level. We have lost two players so far. Started with 16. We're at 14 now. We're on another pay jump. Next player out gets 81 and a half thousand. Make it to 13th, and you're near enough 100k, 97,000. The magical six-figure score. And the top two will get seven <laughs> figures. Not many events where second place gets a seven-figure score. EPT Barcelona main event breaking records out here. Ace five suited, otherwise known as sourdough, artisanal sourdough, raising under the gun from Pinto. I'm going to take a second to explain the sourdough thing because we had people ask yesterday and I didn't get a chance to explain it. Just a little thing we came up with. You know how um, during the pandemic everyone got real into making sourdough bread, baking at home? I was like, oh, sourdough is in fashion, just like ace five suited or ace five in general was in fashion. For a while, everyone was going crazy with Ace Five, especially Ace Five. Cold four betting, Ace Five suited. Like, hey, this is like sourdough. That's where the name came from. Thank you for the question. No one asked. Mark Jarrison three betting. This table is goofy AF. <laughs> I mean, you were just alluding to the fact people have been doing weird stuff uh, with Ace Five suited recently. Could we see? A four bet here from Pinto, perhaps. No. Don't say that. No. No. Yeah, just easy. Yeah, don't need to think. Nothing. That's my plan, sir. Yeah, it's easy. And Danelli. <coughs> double checking the 5 3 off before double mucking the 5 3 off. Yeah, Ace 5 suited here. Doesn't seem like a hand that I want to flat a three bet out of position. Um, but as you alluded to, maybe we could find a little four bet here with the uh, ace blocker. Yeah, absolutely. It's in there. Looking at the ranges. Oh, ace five suited. Yeah, we just four bet this one. Sure. Yeah, for sure. We're allowed to. Yeah, you only really want to do it when you're playing against top level players, though. You know, people three betting from that position will generally be Ooh. a lot stronger. That time bank card says that we might see a little fireworks, a little sourdough. Just got to make sure you find the right opponent who has some bluffs here. And Scott Mergerison, a.k.a. Agro Santos, does have some bluffs here. And whoop, there it is. A four bet to one million two hundred thousand, I believe. Yeah, one point two six million and joe called it it's these these kids with their sourdough these days joe the old sourdough starter <laughs> <laughs> there goes margerison now we saw jack salter bust out a few moments ago and although jack was a party to one of the most horrific <laughs> nights of my life Don't you do this the nine hour heads up battle no, between no, himself no. <laughs> And Antonio Bonanno, I still love the guy. <laughs> Even last an hour, so I can't say it that great. But uh, yeah, I was hoping for better, but you know, it doesn't always work out that way. Yeah, I'm not sure what's up and running today. I think I definitely need to relax for a bit because uh, always how it is in the main event, you don't sleep too much before the day three, day four, day five. So probably time to chill out for a bit. I don't know, go hang out at the pool or something. It's crazy, considering like how much money that we're playing for and how much pressure's on the line, and you know I'm sure everyone's feeling it. It feels really relaxed between hands and stuff. We're all we're all laughing and joking, so she really enjoyed it, and it was like that every single day from day one to here. Uh, yeah, it's been great. I can second that. Certainly been a lot of fun, camaraderie, laughs, 
slapping each other with the hot mops, pushing each other into the bushes. Sorry to lose Jack, but man, still got a smile on his face. I do remember that heads-up match all those years ago. Was it true that some of the crew actually flew home and then from... from oh, actually, we see an all-in here. Get back to that. Small blind versus big blind. Official has shoved, yeah, for not a lot of chips. Ladies, samba? That's fewer than 20 bigs. They didn't like me, actually. Yeah, maybe screaming at them from the poker table is a bit of a turnoff. Machado with even fewer chips. <laughs> That's the real stack at risk here. And there's probably a lot of situations where you might want to call it off with 11 big blinds and king high. Not an enviable spot. Machado lets it go. <laughs> Couldn't tell if that was real or fake. <laughs> I think that might be a tell, Joe. Yeah. Uh, sir, it's on you. <laughs> we all know you were going to fold. <laughs> okay, at least you know what that's called. It's great to see everyone so relaxed, despite they're yeah. playing for ridiculous money. 14 left in an EPT. Both tables. I was not expecting this. It's good to see. It's great to see. Yeah, I said to Joe earlier, you know, you come back, you know, you, every sequential day, the pressure builds inside you internally, right, to perform. And then right off the bat, the uh, feature table was already cracking jokes and laughing. Yeah. I was like, if that was me, that would let the tension off so much. For sure, for sure. If everyone sits down and they're all sunglasses and hoodies and cold, you know, just like you know, dark stares. I know, it's, it's quite refreshing. Ace-king offsuit for Valentin Marius Cristea, you're of Romania. Yarosh ditches the ace nine onto a player we have not seen much from this tournament. Mar Noira. Kowalski with pocket sixes and a similar stack size. Oh, is that the Kowalski? Yeah. This is the Kowalski ah. that KO'd Kaladu So with deuces last night. Wow, it was so savage. I'm still reeling. So we know sixes is a way better hand than Kowalski needs to ship it. Just going to call. What did you mean? Oh, an ace queen for Fischl. There we go. Yeah, open. man, you don't really want to just call here, do you? Yeah, opens up that squeeze potential in position. Yeah, it's really pretty here. This is a yeah. great spot. Fischl all in. It's official. He's all in. <laughs> Can we wake up with more hands in the blinds? Machado, queen five. Okay, that's not going to be one of them. But what's happening in the big? Bruno Pega still to act in the big. He folds. Cristea has ace queen dominated. Has both other players covered. Obviously not folding to Fischl, but just probably trying to figure out, do we want to call? Wow. Or do we want to move all in, all in? Oh, well. GG, boys. GG. Kowalski gets out of the way, and it's a domination situation. Fischl at risk and behind. Four million chips in the middle. And domination nation. Official needing a queen here to survive. It was such a beautiful squeeze spot as well. Yeah, you Just hate, so unfortunate. You hate to see it, don't you, Pi? It's You're a just good like... squeeze spot, and it feels bad. Just yeah. It feels wrong to call a queen there weak and like you're going to 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's done everything right here for sure. This is not a mistake by any stretch. This is going to do just fine. You just unfortunate to run to the absolute tippy top of this guy's range. All right. Well, time to see your fate. Two tens on the flop does provide potential opportunities. Jack on the turn. Ooh, now dear. three outs for Fischel. Oh! oh! And gets one of them. Trades queens for kings and rivers the straight. Christea hiding the pain. Ugh. Swap outs on the turn, drills it on the river, leaving Christea with two million in chips. As you said, Nick, he did everything right. Oh, yeah. I mean, and most importantly, he, uh, he won the all-in, too. That's right. <laughs> and check out this reaction from Fischel. Yeah, but when yeah, but when I hit you, <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Yeah, okay. Guys, you're in deep shit. <laughs> <laughs> Deeper than a fish hill. Okay, moving on. Back to the main stage. I mean, which table's having more fun? It's hard to say. Yeah, and are, are, are we going to see any hands that aren't major hands where, where chips are exchanging, you know, major fashion? We keep jumping back and forth. One hand huge. Let's see what happens over here. Ace-five suited in the hijack. Uh, Rocha, super short stacked, has a suited ace. He's all in. I'm calling it. No. Oh. Artisanal sourdough going to leave a little bit behind. Taxi bet. Taxi bet. Three quarters of the stack. Now, for people watching that don't realize why players only put the mid well, about half of their chips in the middle there when they're all in is because if it were to go shove and then reshove, they could actually find the fold and perhaps make a ladder. I'm not sure if we're on a, uh, a pay jump right now. Um, uh, we are. We are. We absolutely that, are. Yeah. About 10 grand or so. Well, that is the reason. Falls around to the small. So Who gives it up? Far so good for Rocha. Mark Jarrison holds a 6-5. Guerrero oh. calls with threes, and we are off to the races. Like Park Guell versus the Sagrada Familia. One of these two things has a slight mathematical advantage. Sourdough versus Larry Bird. I mean, sourdough all day, right? Come on, guys, let's be real. It I mean, 20, the 2020s is the decade for sourdough. Yeah, so. yeah. Make some bread, baby. Seven, seven, nine is a good start for Rosha. Can now counterfeit the pocket trays. Yes, sir. Any nine means nines and sevens with an ace, which will. Counterfeit those trays. Deuce. Not a good card for Rocha. Could have picked up another counterfeit out. Somehow an undercard to the to the trays. That is pretty sick. It's River card is an eight. Three is hold. Rocha was on life support yesterday. Came back from half a big blind. Never. Laddered up tens of thousands of euros, <laughs> but finally succumbs <laughs> to Jimmy Guerrero. This is Rocha's girlfriend. Good mentality. Good mentality, bro. A nice moment. Say, wow, you're so good, bro. Wow. You're so good. So good. Jimmy, he just called you bad. Are you going to accept this? Probably still going to have a good day today, uh, I'm guessing. Size, my friend. Thank you. So you are super good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Always winning, even when he's losing. You know? yeah. 
Lucas Rocha out. 81,450, and that is a ladder. Oh, wow. For everyone else, yeah. He's getting emotional. Amazing, amazing result. Man, that's something I really like yeah. about people from that part of the world. Not afraid to show their emotion. Yeah. Hell yeah, this is a big moment, you know? You got to enjoy these moments in your life, and getting this deep is, is, is really quite something. I hope it's more a happy emotion. I think, than, it, I think it was. Sad. Yeah. I think it was. Oh, it's getting me a little bit, honestly. Ooh. Ooh. No, that's I great. feeling stuff. Don't do that to me. You can't bottle up your emotions, How guys. How dare you? I mean, you say you can't bottle up your emotions. When you're at the table, I suppose you should probably <laughs> put a cork in it for a minute, but, uh, you know, it's going to come out at some point. My bro. A little bit of Brazilian love on the rail there. Our guy came off the table just to say congratulations on your deep run. Doing it for Brazil. you. All right, well, the show must go on. Mockery raising under the gun with King Queen. Gets around oh, to queen. Pinto, who is once again chip leader at this table. And Mockery second in chips. Oh boy, here we go. Buckle up, buckaroos. 200 plus big blind stacks. Oh, and it's not even over yet. We still got more pre-flop action. <laughs> Mark Jarrison with the off-brand sourdough folds the button. Uh, it could, could have been a squeeze spot pie. I don't think that would be unreasonable to 3-bet with Ace-5 off there. <coughs> would we obviously prefer it if it was artisanal, of course? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely right. Guerrero with his newfound chips in the small blind with deuces. Ponders and folds. I mean, Jimmy can't miss today. Not sure if I agree with that fold. Hey, you and me, buddy. Big boys. I'm not a big boy anymore. <laughs> big boy. Half a million in the middle pre-flop. Jack, six, five, one heart. <coughs> By the way, you know his story, the guy you busted? Yesterday, uh, he had like 100. He came back with... 20K. Yeah, 20K. 20K. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rocha, Rocha. Eh? Yeah, yeah. Mokri yeah. electing to check. So, I saw, I saw. And that is the green light for like. Pinto yeah, yeah. to yeah, fire yeah. a quarter of a million green, into yeah. this pot. He, he all like like the stack, so I don't know uh, how we play this. I don't know why. I feel like you have a... Three-fifths of a royal. Mokri having yeah. the king of hearts. Job, and... Pinto yeah, yeah, picks up a small close. one. Take, take like closing yeah, yeah, in yeah, on that 11 million mark. Like that. You can tell me if you're lying. We will see you, we'll find out. <laughs> nice hand, buddy. Nice hand. I don't think Kai is even watching. No, I don't. <laughs> Jimmy's watching for sure. Yeah, He's bringing up hand histories for four days ago. <laughs> 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 I did everything. Yeah. Okay. Mokri. Mokri. I told you the story. I know which place you, you will finish. Hmm? I know which place you will finish. Which? <laughs> I'm all ears. Number nine. Look at that trophy. Freshly polished. Yeah, yeah. Write it down. Nice work, Joe. <laughs> I already write. Yeah. I have the date. Yeah. So ben Dinelli with the aces. The dream. Everybody, every hand, the hope that you looked at. Mason, in your case, it would be like aces and kings or ace, king, double suited. For sure. But right? the, the thing is, like when I do play Hold'em and you do peel that second ace, yeah. it, it, there is no feeling like it, actually. It's like it's an electric really nice charge one. goes it's through like, your body, right? It's, yeah. it's beautiful. Right. And you're like, oh, we're going to be playing a big one. It <laughs> does get folded round to the small blind, though. <laughs> Cost of folding, jack 10 off. Will Ben Dinelli get a customer in the big blinds? <coughs> Everyone defends their big blind all the time. Don't do it to the aces. There you go. 
Is there a different strategy, Nick, with defending big blinds when we're playing a big blind anti-game because we put in a little bit more? Um, should we be defending our big blinds a lot more? Or does, that, does it not change at all? It's a great question. It should just effectively <laughs> effectively be the same. You shouldn't be swayed by by the money that you're forced to put in in right. the same way that you know you're not you're not swayed by when you're putting in big blinds okay. unless it is a significant portion of your like you know half your stack or something like that. Um, although obviously, if we're playing a big blind anti, that can depending on the number of players that are in the pot augment how many how much actual dead money there is right, in which sure. case it should then change your strategy so really it's just how much dead money is in the middle if we're playing shorter handed with antis where play, players are putting in an anti that isn't big blind there's actually going to be less in the pot to win when your opponent opens and you defend um, if it's always a big blind anti even three handed then it's always going to be the same value right. so that therefore there, your strategy remains the same as you get shorter handed on a final table for example interesting yeah we see ben Danelli actually check back this flop three clubs on the turn aces and threes now gets the check mark mockery not falling for it though doesn't fire and now ben Danelli does decide with the delayed continuation bet 150,000. I'm just so eternally oppressed by people that can Sad face. just not fall for it when they're up against it. And then when there's a chance they can win the pot, just fight so hard and just find ways to do it. The way Mockery just played that hand was good, right? Sure, absolutely. That's how I play every hand. Yeah. Which you can't do. You can't just go, I don't have anything. I was going to check till they bet and then I'll fold. <laughs> I think I think it's a situation where where if your opponent's not seeing that kind of a texture, it's a bit of a red flag immediately, just because you're going, well, you do this with all your bluffs, <laughs> yeah. So so they must have so they must have showdown of, of some variety. Now sure. that doesn't mean he's always going to have aces, but he's going to have under pairs to a queen. He's going to have some second pairs and stuff like that where he doesn't want to inflate the size of the pot. He's going to have some ace high king highs that if he's going to check the flop, he's the same kind of player that's going to defend on the turn regardless, especially if it pairs the board or something. So. Yeah, I mean, you know, <laughs> trying to interpret situations where your opponent's yeah, going to check sure. stronger <laughs> stuff and when they're actually just going to be checking complete air, and that's kind of the name of the game in those situations if you're going to defend super wide for the big blind. Don't try to cheat, bro. Don't try to cheat. I should myself. I should myself. I should myself, bro. I should myself. I feel more rich, you know? I these guys are fantastic. <laughs> Honestly, this might be the friendliest uh, friendliest feature table I've, I've uh, done commentary on. Everyone's just having a great time. Honestly, if you were to remove the graphic from the top right, you would not know it, we're down to 13 <laughs> players in the no. biggest CPC ever at all. It feels, it feels like a, just like a, a cash game, you know? People just, people just shooting the shit, having a good time. It's brilliant. <laughs> it makes a great content. As Ben Danelli wakes up with Ace-King suited in the big blind, facing a button open from Costa. Uh, oh, Costa is one of the shorter stacks table, but still 56 big blinds. That's still Omega deep, yeah. really. And, the, and when you think about <laughs> tournament <laughs> tournament stacks in 13 with 13 remaining, you know, and it's just credit to the structure of the the main events here, the European Poker Tour. Just fantastic. A lot of room to play with. Yeah, deluxe structure, as uh, Sam Grafton says, and I think that the just really sums it up for me. It really is luxurious. The effective stack depth, the average stacks being, uh, being so significantly deep at this stage. Yeah, ben Danelli three betting to 780 and a reasonably quick call here from Costa in position. And there are no more short stacks at this table. Costa's the shortest stack, starts the hand with 50 bigs. Wow. Two spades on the flop. Very good news for the yeah. dominated ace seven. Yeah, I'm not good enough to catch them, to be honest. I choose to gamble, yeah? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I play uh, high stakes. Famous. Yeah. Famous. Famous in every, all the card rooms in Europe. Yeah? Hmm? Famous. What? Famous to play touch. I'm going to gamble, yeah? I lost too much, bro. Ben Danelli betting around a third pot. Costa with that nut flush draw on this paired board. And I'm liking the speed of how he's playing. No deliberate tanking, just getting straight on with it. Drill me that spade. Oh. But does drill the seven <laughs> instead. 
Domination rotation, a seven now pulls out to a 94% favorite. You got the seven, which is going to be the best hand a lot of the time, but also the the uh, the nut flush draw as well. Yeah, he didn't need the spade because he knew it was always coming. And now the problem is, Pi, Pentanelli's going to be aware of the fact that the float here could just be like king queen with the king of spades. Of it could be like jack ten of spades, that kind of yeah. thing as well. And in a three bet pot in many situations, you know, uh, even though it, jack ten of spades would be like two over cards in a flush draw, you're not just going to slam it in because you yeah. don't just want to get snapped off by an over pair where your two over cards to the board aren't necessarily going to be live. Is it better to um, have ace king of hearts as opposed to ace king of diamonds because you uh, block those back doors um, that they might call it? Oh. Oh. When did you like your hand, sir? Yeah, yeah. It just got better and better. Yeah, I was going to say it's it's so much easier with the, it, it's so much easier having ace king of hearts here to give up. Um, Sorry, it's sorry, it's so much easier here with the ace king of hearts to go, oh actually he's gonna have more spades, so yeah. maybe, maybe I should continue betting here because he will have more of those floats that I was making reference to. But he does slow it down on the turn, understandably. But like you this game we we play like twenty bigs, ten bigs with sixteen red lights. Yeah. I mean the queen isn't just bad because it's a spade, it's also like I said, gonna be part of those weird overcard float situations yeah. that your opponents are gonna have here too. Yeah. King Queen of Diamonds, for instance, making a pair on the end as well. Yeah, this is the problem. Those smaller Always flop C bets do invite some more Always interesting floats. Touchings. And this has just gotten worse and worse and worse for the Ace King. Deuce three deuce actually a pretty good flop to begin with, but moment two bet. Seven of hearts, not outside <laughs> the realms of possibility to fire again, does decide to check in on the river. I think he's probably going to be giving up here a lot of the time. Costa bets 650 into a pot of 2.6 million. Okay, do some push up, bro. Do some push up, man. You want to fight. Ben Dinelli bends the cards, lays it down. We have ticked over into a break during that hand. We're going to check in with the secondary feature table. The only other table, I should say. Still going. Make sure that action has concluded there. This will be a good time to thank Mason Pai. Thank you very much. Thank you for Congrats again. Thank you so much. You might want to stick around, Mason, not for too long, but just a few minutes into the break, I think there's going to be something you might be interested in. Oh, wow, okay. Paul's champ. Okay, second feature table also finished. So let's take a look at the feature table chip count. As I stated, no short stacks at this table. 46 big blinds is the shortest stack. Mark Jarrison, Costa, between 50 and 60 bigs. Jimmy Guerrero worked his way up to 70. 109 big blinds for Michael Pinto. Stick around because taking us to the break is a recap of Mason Pye winning the 550 horse tournament. More from Barcelona in 18 minutes time. Back after this. It was a horse tournament, 550 euro horse tournament. Uh, we, we finished at five o'clock this morning. We got three handed and we decided to, you know, call it a day. Got barely any sleep and then came back at around two o'clock, played it out. It went so quick. We could have probably done it yesterday, but uh, we finished it. And that was for you, Twitch chat. That was for you. So I'm super happy. I can't believe it. I played two tournaments this trip, literally. One at the start of the series and one now. So I've been on holiday in the middle and somehow we beat the tournament. Literally my second live mixed game tournament we managed to beat one. I'm so happy. I don't know how we've done it, honestly. I don't know how we've done it. I was meant to go home yesterday. I, had, I was meant to be home right now. Um, but luckily, you know, they pushed me back to the end of the series. And uh, yeah, I'm glad they did because, you know, I wouldn't have won otherwise. And uh, I'd be on a plane back to the UK. Now we're here with one. It's my first big win. I'm just overwhelmed. Uh, we've got everyone there waiting for me at the beach with drinks. Drinks on me. I can't wait to celebrate. Let's go. So Gus Hansen making the early running and he's going to play with Queen 8 suited. In fact, raised to 250. 
five times the big blind to put it into perspective. I think we're going to see him in a lot of hands now, Gus. He's got, you know, he's got twice as many chips as anybody else. He's going to start pressurising the table. Whoops. <laughs> We've seen Hansen win with the bullets. Larson's now got them. He re-raises. It's very rare to see aces so quickly uh, in so few hands. OK, so... Early on, some players will play tight. Some players will play like Gus Hansen. OK, so he's called. He likes to see a flop, Gus. He likes to think he can outplay people on a flop. So let's see how this turns out. It could be in his gravestone, Gus Hansen. I like to see a flop. Uh-oh, he's hit a queen. There could be fireworks here. Well, of course, a bad card for Hansen. He thinks he's got top pair. He's going to bet out. Yeah, but how much? 4.25, something like that? Oh, 8.25, yeah. Wow. It's good to see Chris Martin from... Sorry, that's not Chris Martin from Coldplay, is it? No, it's not. It's Daniel Larson. <laughs> so Larson raises over the top of Hansen's bet. Is that a good thing? Should he flat call them? And well, it's the thing is, I'm not sure that he's raised enough here, really. I mean, Gus is Gus is getting a pretty good odds to call here if he makes two pair. Or let's see, even if he puts him on an over pair. Oh wow! Ah. Trip Queens now, the best five cards you can make out of the seven that will eventually be available. Five in the middle, two in your hand. Hansen's got Trip Queens, he checks it. Okay. Larson seems slightly baffled. <laughs> Poker Queens for Hansen. And of course, Larson's got the full house with aces. He knows there's only one card can beat him. That's a horrible and that's the card. Queen. I mean, it's a horrible card for Larson because he's got to call now. That, that you know. And <laughs> If, if, if he's got quads, he's going to want to see it. You know, he's got the best full house you can have, uh, Larson. Uh, it's going to be really difficult, and he's going to go out if he... Could. Yeah, he's called. Goodbye, Mr Larson. Hansen with a dream start here in Barcelona. Pocket aces. Poison chalice to so many players. And a little bit of rainbow disappears from the TV table here in Barcelona. Don't worry, off you go. Into the arms of Gwyneth Paltrow. Glenn's got 6-5 off suit. And he puts in a raise in that position. Well, that's certainly just a raise to steal the blinds because the chips are not deep enough to think that you're going to play a flop with 5-6 off suit. Absolutely. You know. But if he hasn't played ha! a hand in a while, ooh, if he hasn't played a hand in a while, though, he might figure he has a good shot at stealing the blinds. Unfortunately, when you run into pocket aces, you're not going to steal the blinds. Well, Angel had the amateur rub of the head there. I have nothing. I don't know whether to call... Can I just leave the table now? I hate this game. Oh, no, hold on, I've got aces. Yeah, when you act concerned and weak like that, <laughs> well, he's going to have a little bit of a thinker here with pocket nines, that's for sure. But he just had a tight player make a re-raise, and he's had a tight player do it while pretending that he's cared and concerned about his hand. So uh, yeah, he laid that down relatively quickly. Uh, that's a good lay down. And, of course, Keston was the one who had the sixes when Dinesh Kaur had the nines and he folded them. So the nines aren't playing today. There must be an international law against playing pocket nines. I wish she'd get out of my eye line. I'm trying to concentrate on poker. She's been there for the whole, whole, whole week. Uh, I don't like this call at all. I mean, he's looking like he's thinking of making the call. and uh, He just doesn't have enough chips to... Uh you know, speculate like this and try to flop something with 5-6. You, um, you say, I, I, I've been called, I've, I've tried. You know, the game's up, player. I've lost a few chips, that's it. Why would you sit here and play day in, day out, and then go all in on a 5-6? I mean, sometimes I might sit here and think like this, but I'm usually doing it to save face. Yeah. I want the table to put me on a hand like ace-queen oh. when I'm thinking and thinking. He's called it, blank, oh... Yeah. Must be one of the happiest men. I mean, if you don't think Angel's got a monster hand, maybe you could re-raise and hope he's going to lay it down. You've got enough chips to do that, but... Uh... Oh, well, the flop comes down, gives him a pair of sixes. That's not going to help, but the inside straight draws there. Look at that oh, nose twitching nose. Oh. Did you see that twitching nose when, when that flop hit? <laughs> he's got to call it. Blanco's got to call it. He's favourite, for, but from a you know an almost unbeatable position... He's now set up for the bar beat. That's why he's closed his eyes. That's why he shook his head. He can't believe he's been called in the first place by a 6 5 off. See, it's preposterous. A crime has been committed in Barcelona. And Bjorn Eric Lane is bang to right. 
one of the tightest and best informed players of the day, Ankel Blanco Puris. May not have a long way to travel, but travel he will. And his pocket ace is beaten to 6 5 unsuited. Action at our feature table. He's got aces. Timothy Adams has got kings. Adams opens. Seidel has three bet. Well, this isn't going to end well for Timbo. 34. 35. 34. There is the four bet to 34,000. If he had made it 35, he'd pot committed. Maybe he can get away from it for 34. All right. Seidel five bets, and he five bets small to just 50,000. 64. 64. And then Adams clicks it to 64,000. That six bet is even smaller relative to the size of the pot. Seidel bets enough to put Adams all in. Adams calls. It used to be a time when commentators would be all, hey, maybe he should have known by the five bet he was up against aces. And all I have to say to that is... Folding King's pre-flop is like trying to record your favorite show on a VCR. We don't do it anymore, brah. Adams is the player at risk and way behind. He needs to see a king on the river. He has two outs. And he hits one of them. Wow. Hail to the kings, baby. Both these guys handling it like absolute pros. And by pros, I mean boring. Seidel, would it kill you to berate a guy one time? I mean, at least put some bleeps over that. Adams, can I get a fist bump? Anything? We're heading over to our secondary feature table. Phil Ivey with aces. Rafaela Jerby with two pair on the turn. Ivy shoves. And Jerby will call. He looks like a Jerby. And Phil Ivey will need to see an ace five or three on the river. But it's a four, so we lose Phil Ivey for now. He can, of course, reload. How much, what are these chips here? Yeah, I think, yeah, yeah. So what happens now? I get up and go to the cage and rebuy again? Can you rebuy now? Or is it How do you rebuy now? What? I can rebuy and stay at this table? I know why he wants to stay at this yeah, table. Yeah, you got it. There are two reasons why Phil want to stay at this table, and they are Raphael and Jerby. It's going to cost Ivy 50,000 euros to come back into the tournament. Jerby now up to 410,000 in chips. And this graphic should read, Phil Ivy, he'll be back. The power of Timex compels you. Well, Timex is actually a four to one dog here. Bully Chev, an 80% favorite to double up. Timex flops a gutter ball. Six or nine would crack those aces. The turn is a 10. McDonald open-ended now. And the river, a 9. A set for McDonald. Yamo be there. Ilya Bulachev sent to the rail. And most importantly, the tournament average is not the sign of the devil, sign of the devil. And Mike McDonald now has more than a million in chips. Actions on Elkie in his kimono. And he's got aces under the gun. And he's doing a good job of looking pretty bored by them. Which may not be an act. He could just not enjoy the challenge of how easy it is to play aces. Sicko. He raises to 325. Hasn't found a customer so far. Vlad Svara. As King Deuce off. That'll go in the muck. Hold it around to Phil Gruesome. Yes, Phil Gruesome. This kid's always good for some action. 7-9 suited on the button. I wonder where Elkie keeps his wallet in that thing. You know what? I don't want to know. Gruesome calls. Elite Belly folds from the small blind. And the big blind will pass as well. We're going to go heads up to the flop. Elkie with way the best hand. Gruesome with a decent hand for cracking aces. And he's flopped a double gutter. Elkie's still nearly a two to one favorite. And he continues for 400. Oh, Philip. 13. He raises to 1,300. The semi-bluff raise. Told you this kid's always good for some action. Elkie not folding up. No, he calls nonchalantly, and this battle of the high rollers continues to the turn. Which is the six of diamonds giving Gruesome the straight. That turn card is the worst thing to happen to Elkie since he caught that kimono in an elevator door. He checks. 
My guess is that Elki's just going to have to station the pants off of Caruso unless this board gets obviously worse. 2,500. 2,500. Elki's already stationed his own pants off. Super gross spot for Elki. Phil's probably not always raising all of his two pairs and sets either, so there are way more bluffs in his range than there are hands that have Elki beat. And that six really only helped a few specific hands. Elki does call. Nearly eight and a half thousand in the middle. With Elki drawing dead, the inconsequential king of spades on the river. Elki will check. And Gruesome will bet 7,500. This spot is grosser for Elki than the part of the robe he's been sitting on all day. That's a visual image I really didn't need. And it looks like Elki is folding. He lets it go. Wow, what a read. I don't know how he does that. So, 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 so many people are calling there. I saw. Show on, show on. Show on, show on. Come on, show on, come on. I never, never see you show anything. Back over to our secondary feature table. Action on Super High Roller newcomer Vitali Lunkin. He folds. Ace King suited for Yuha Helpy. He raises to 4,000. And his fellow countryman Yanni Sointola has aces. This will be a re raise, a three bet to 12,000. Now, who's this handsome devil on the button? Philip Sternheimer. He folds. O'Dwyer and Lemansky both fold the blinds. Action back on Helpy. I'd say long gone are the days of folding Ace Kings suited before the flop, but I don't think they were ever here. Helpy calls. He'll be first to act on the flop. And that flop is all clubs. The nut flush for Helpy. What is the finish word for Yahtzee? He checks. Sointler does not continue. A fourth club on the turn. I don't love that check behind, even though he was losing. Helpy checks a second time. Sointler checks again. And the royal flush on the river for Helpy. That time I was a fan of him checking. Hard for him to get called by worse in that spot. This is a big hand for Helpy, but tough to get paid with it. 28,000 in the middle. And he bets small, 6,000. The teeny tiny please call me bet. Helpy may get called here, but I think him checking the turn may have been a mistake. It would have been the only way to build this pot and probably how a lot of folks would have played their bluffs as well. Soin to the calls. Time for Helpy to table the nuts. The super nuts. <laughs> Royal flush. <laughs> Free flop, you have. How is it that two fins get aces versus a royal and it's the smallest pot ever? If it was top hair versus a bluff, all of it would have gone in on the flop. Five players remain at the Pokestars.net EPT Barcelona final table. I like my women like I like my poker. Short and five-handed. I really did not think that through. Clearly. Luca Fiorini has absolute junk. <laughs> That's not junk. Aces for Nielsen. He's counting out a raise. Race. He makes it 435,000 from the cutoff. Queen Jack for Kimo Koko in the small blind. And while he's got 4.4 million, that's sadly only 22 big blinds. Oh, and he shoves! Sormanen in the big blind. I'm surprised Creston's containing himself over there. King, eight, he'll fold that. Nielsen's calling, faux show. I call. Eventually. Slow I'm gonna rule that not so much a slow roll as a big moment roll. If someone disagrees with you, I just heard a Finn say slow roll. Yeah, the Finns also think these hats are a good idea. They didn't work out last year and they're not doing so hot this year either. Bad juju. Kirko at risk and way behind. Big Toro stack about to get even bigger. Let's see a flop. Queen 9-8. That does give Coco some hope. He's got nine outs. Oh, now he wants it quiet. A queen for trips. A jack for two pair. A ten for a straight. The three on the turn. You guys, he said, shh. Coco is a 76% favorite to go out in fifth. But he gets there on the river again! Huge double up. Aces cracked. And is there an audio problem? Because this place is silent. 
What were you saying about those hats? Well, Jan Heitman is the last remaining team pro. He's just called Mark Wagstaff's all-in. Jan, a four-to-one favorite with aces against Wagstaff's queens. I had an uncle who was a Wagstaff. Yep, wagged it right at a flight attendant. Ended up in jail. Yeah, and now an 88% favorite. Set to become a top five stack. Oh, Wagstaff hits a two-outer. That is gross. He doubles up, wins a massive pot. And Jan Heitman will be left with just 48,000. He is devastated. You just can't tell because he's German. Hello, my babies, and welcome back once again to the Poker Stars EPT here in beautiful Barcelona and this record breaking event. It is day five of six of the biggest EPT main event of all time from Casino Barcelona. I don't know why I said it like that. Barcelona, one word. Here are the biggest stacks at our feature table. In fact, it's all the stacks at our feature table. Michael Pinto, still on top. 109 big blinds. Kehan Makri and Michael have tangled a few times. Some small pots go in Pinto's way. Jimmy Guerrero worked his way up from 15 big blinds to 70 in just one level. No legitimate short stacks at this table, but I guess if we have to name someone, that would be Giuliano Bendinelli with 46 big blinds. Only two tables in play. 13 players remain. That was a table of six, which means a table of seven. Patrick Yarosh, the overall tournament chip leader with 12.2 million chips, 122 big blinds. And things are a lot more disjointed. Just one player way out in front here. The second biggest stack, as opposed to the other table, is Paul Fischel with 48 big blinds. And things get worse from there with Valentin Marius Cristea at the bottom, just 15 big blinds. As we come back, blinds 50,000, 100,000 with a 100,000 big blind ante. I am Joe Stapleton. I am joined by Maria Ho. Joined hello, by Maria hello. Ho <laughs> and Jennifer Shahadi. Welcome to the booth. This is what they are playing for. One point seven million for the winner. One million for the runner up. We will start getting into those six-figure scores shortly today. Everyone now guaranteed at 97,000 euros. Action will be back underway shortly. A long five days for these players. Jen Shahadi, one more time. Hey guys. There she is. A lot of headphones in this booth. <laughs> more headphones than people. So yeah, everyone guaranteed 97,000 at this point and the ladders come a little bit more frequently. 11th place gets you into that six-figure range. 12th and 13th play the same. 10th and 11th pay the same. And then from 9th on up, it's ICM City. Players are back from break. Looks like Jimmy having a chat with the floor. Both French. And this table's been quite chatty. Let's see what they have to say. Last time, I three bad days. Oh, yeah, yeah. Ciao, bella, bella, bella. Bueno. Your name is Spanish, right? Uh, Portuguese. Portuguese? Ah, you speak Portuguese? No. No. But <laughs> my name is. <laughs> ah. 
Really couldn't believe how friendly and chatty this table was during the first level, considering the stakes that are on the line. Yeah, but some people are more comfortable when they're chatting, right? Uh, yeah, that's what Nick and I were saying, is that it does relieve some of the tension. <laughs> oh, yeah, you can make the, the worst joke at a poker table, and everybody will start dying laughing. <laughs> Don't I know it? <laughs> Why not? Sounds good. Scott Majerison going to kick things off with 7-4 suited under the gun. Jen, how's your trip been? Good. I, I made a deep run in the mystery bounty yesterday, ended up in 11, so I was right around where we are here in the tournament. Wow. This one goes to 11. How many bounties? Five, but all 1Ks. Oh, man. Yes, the, that was the minimum for those who don't know. I was playing in the 3K mystery bounty. You could get a $250,000 bounty, or you could get a 1K bounty. There wasn't much of a sweat by the end of the tournament, was there? No, no. It, most of the good stuff had been pulled. Yeah. I know the 100K got pulled super early. I heard it from the hallway. <laughs> I mean, when people went bananas. So 11th place and five camp bounties, though, like a bit of a bummer that they were all the minimum, but still, that had to be a nice score. Yeah, about 30. So. Oh! Beninelli is going to call out of the small blind. Pinto will defend 9-8, so we're going to go three ways to this flop. Nice Which is king high, king five four. So top pair for Costa. You know, as you mentioned, Joe, on this feature table, just everybody pretty deep. You know, so there's a lot of playability post flop with a variety of pre flop holdings, and this one though, all Costa. Costa continues for 250000 And this hand should end relatively quickly. Benelli does have some back doors. And it goes fold, fold. Maria, I know you mentioned you were thinking of playing a hyper the other night. Did that happen or no? I did. I played. And um, as hypers usually go, you have a lot of chips, and then you're out <laughs> five <laughs> minutes later. <laughs> so um, no real results to report on that front, but it was fun. I love the hypers in the European Poker Tour. I play almost all of them. And the reason is the dealers are so fantastic on the EPT that even a 10-minute level... <laughs> you know, you get a lot of hands. It's really, it's really impressive. It's like you get all the aspects of poker in four hours. Or sometimes only you last four minutes. Yeah, right. <laughs> it can go, can go either way. Hand number 25. The aim today is to play down to six. Now, that's always a little bit fluid. If we somehow got to six during this level, we'd probably keep playing. If we somehow weren't at six by the time we finish six levels, we'll probably stop. But generally, things work out the way that they're supposed to. They've pretty much figured out how long it takes for certain eventualities to happen. So that's the goal, to get down to six today. Well, this could be an interesting hand. Three bet the pot brewing. Nope. Pinto's just going to call. It has been interesting. You know, there's been a lot of unconventional play. Like Jimmy Guerrero, I mentioned, he has chipped up from 15 big blinds. He shoved on the first or second hand of the day with 7-8 suited from middle position and got called by the chip leader with ace jack and just flopped a straight right out of the gate. Yeah, I think it's always good when you're flatting to give a little bit of a three bet look, so it keeps your range really hard to define. So he fooled me. I thought, his guy thought it was going to be a three bet bot. Penzo here with top pair. Or Jerison with the flush draw, though. And... 
Omar Jarrison always trying to hide, you know, his breathing under that <laughs> under that shirt. Yeah, a little bit easier to hide your breathing online. Omar Jarrison plays under the name Agro Santos. We see a lot of him in the big buy-in online events. <coughs> Mm. Checks around. Turn card is the Jack of Diamonds. So Margerison with top pair now. Two. Very nice hand. <laughs> Sorry, two pair. That's right. Yep. Two pair. Flush draw. Bendinelli with a gut shot. Yeah, you see Pinto leading for some protection, but, you know, just card too late at this point. Margerison has well caught up to him. Jarrison in a great spot here to raise with impunity. Really no sweat here whatsoever, raising two <coughs> pair in a flush draw. Lots of other draws potentially out there you can get called by. There goes one of them. Always feels a little heroic when you check back as the original razor and then <laughs> a lot of action and you're yeah. like, oh my god, I saved a bet. Granted, there are a couple of draws possible and that's what Pinto is thinking about. And you know, having the eight in your hand definitely makes it you feel a little more comfortable that your opponent doesn't necessarily have a straight already. Queen of Diamonds on the river. Pinto does not improve. That's the stack Mar Jarrison's interested in also, right? If anyone's going to stick around, you want the the big stack. All those <coughs> chips. Pinto Pin checks. Yeah, and Pinto doesn't block, you know, any flush draws. And so obviously... Definitely considering Mar Jarrison could have been on a semi bluff of sorts with that raise on the turn. Certainly could have been some combo draws in Mar Jarrison's range there. I think Pinto's range calling from the small blind is a little more defined than Mar Jarrison, so you know it's really tough to be able to put your opponent on a hand when they just defend the big blind and at this point, I think even though I feel like Pinto might want to get sticky with this type of hand, I'm not sure, depending on Margerison's sizing, that Pinto will Check. stick around. And Margerison actually ends up checking back. <clears throat> pair of and jacks would have been good, but two pair also good. You, you can see Pinto's a little surprised there that... He checked back. Trying to catch a little bit of that table talk. Nice, you, have, you have to call, yeah? Hmm? yeah you have to call, yeah? Yep. A lot of, uh, a lot of semi block there. Get from them. No, on the turn. On the turn. You hear Pinto well. saying a lot of semi bluffs were possible on the turn. Yeah. It's a nice pull. Yeah. You all need to. Uh, all of you guys. How tight am I? When, they, you. when you get home, just check into the nearest. You know. <laughs> all of you. Check what? Check in. Check in. Like hotel. Check in. But this is not a hotel. So. <laughs> 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 Making a lot of friends at the final table, huh? Right? You guys aren't kidding. They're enjoying it, and they're even talking strats. Yeah. 
<laughs> Final two tables. One point seven million euros up for grabs, but hey, let's talk about the hands. I mean, you know what you told people, right? So you can always use it against them. Yeah, and certainly a lot of these players are good enough to use that and try to level their opponent maybe later on. Mockery, of course, you know, seemingly one of the most talkative so far. An exceptional player, as you guys have seen over the last few days. Oh, big hand after just winning that jack three five off. Huh? Picks up ace queen on. Queen five off. Fuck you, bluff me, bro. Yeah, you bluff me, hold it all the way around to like Marjorie. You bluff me, queen five off. I'm half nine. I fold the best hand, yeah. I got you on the flop. Queen five off. That was crazy, bro. Hey, for the queen five off. I check. I check you. Check me. Queen five off. He's talking about an earlier hand, I think. Yeah, that. But, but also Margerison doesn't really seem that interested to, like, dab Guerrero mid-hand. But uh, Guerrero with the deuce offsuit from the big blind dominated folds to the open. I think he's a little upset maybe about the jack three suit in hand, potentially. You know, checking back. I know, I mean, I think the table might have been needling him a tiny bit. Joke, jokingly. Right. A little fun. Yeah. I'd like to I'd like to think that these players can take it. You know, I feel like it, you, Especially at the poker table, uh, it's it's tough to let things rub you the wrong way when there's a lot of needling going on. And yeah, and the past is the past. I mean, look at that. You know, you pick up ace queen off the next hand. You just got to get into your new moment. Play eleven space. Yeah, I'm not watching. So you play eleven space. Stop. May still be in his own head a little bit. He's like listening but not listening. Play your ace. I just start doing things. I should I should call you. So there's only two tables left in the main event, but there's so many exciting side events going on, Maria. Today is actually the final table of the ladies' event. Oh, right. Yeah, you got 110 players, and there's eight left now. Lolly Tournier is among the players. Yeah, I knew that um, a few women who played in that Platinum Pass uh, sit and go were going to stick around for the ladies' event. Um, not all of them, but it would have been cool to see them make a deep run. I don't think I saw any of them in the final table. I just popped by right before this. They just made it. So here we see an open with 10-8 suited. What about Jimmy? What are you looking at? Uh, I spoke to something. I spoke to something. Uh, what? Action uh, back to the big blind of Costa. Huh? You read? Nine. No, no, no. And just like gonna you call. Thought? We did in Vegas. Considering yeah. Mockery did open I from under the gun. We did in Vegas. Oh yeah, we played together in Vegas this year. Yeah, we played in Vegas. Oh, yeah. we, played, we played many times. Yeah. I know we played a lot of Vegas. Was this year in Vegas? No, no, this year. Huh? King oh, Jack on, like Seven, a couple of diamonds on that like flop. <laughs> Definitely the type of texture that Mockery can, can uh, follow up with a continuation a bet, and he does have a gut yeah. shot. Maybe you bust LT. Needs one of Costa's on nines, of course, yeah. to make his hand. That was within a few years ago, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. After, before the pandemic. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> hey, you change? Yeah, I change your haircut, yeah. Yes. Before you were small blondie or... No, no, I just need a haircut. I need a haircut now. Now I just need to go get a haircut. No. You were different before. Well, they can definitely afford a really nice yeah, haircut. Older. Really good hair. You grew up. How old are you? Oh. 29. Man, you're young. You're a young guy. Young boy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no. Really? But I look 23. <laughs> and you, Pinto? 33? Okay, you guys. Yes, how, how do you can? Who could you go? 45? 45. Huh? How old are you? What about 42? We, now? We bet on your how age. Old are you? We bet how old you are. He say 45, I say 23. And you know yeah. how old I am. I don't. I, would, I know <laughs> how old I am. I can't remember how old you are. Hey, 29, uh, 29, he's, bro, 29. He's trying to big time me on TV now. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 29, you got 29. He knows, he knows, he knows. You got 29? 28. Hey, I'm good, eh? I'm good, eh? Are you? How old are you? You're confused, yeah. You. How old are you? I also forgot about 45 years. <laughs>
I'm the youngest. Don't try this conversation at a ladies' event. I was just thinking that. <laughs> not, not a good question. But go ahead and answer. Go, go ahead. <laughs> 28? Okay. 30. 30. 30. You guys are the same. So on you. Age, 30. Yeah. personality. Although, of course, it's a great privilege to get older <laughs> and play a game. <laughs> but, yeah, still, don't try. <laughs> and then the guy's like, hey, you could have just looked it up. We're at the final no. table. <laughs> <laughs> we're, all, we're all famous. I said see, not look. I said see. I remember you for a long time ago. Ooh. 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 No. How old are you? Yeah. 29. 29? 29, yeah. Uh, Same like you. Internet boy. Yeah. Are, are you 29? Definitely a lot of <laughs> internet boys. I'm old. Oh, shit. You're not a has been. You're an in in. Remember what we talked about? You expect him to remember what you talked about? He's the ripe old age of 29. Smart individual. I believe I can steal. I believe I can steal the... <laughs> Mockery. <laughs> <laughs> Following the current meta of calling the big blind with any two suited cards. That's the song of Mockery. 10-5. Woof. He could have hit this, though. I mean... <laughs> Four, five, six, yeah, seven, eight. That's a gut shot. Yeah. 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 Got, a, got a little something. Thinking about leading here. Oh, he's doing it. Yeah, I like this lead against the cutoff open range. You feel like there's going to be some weaker hands that are opening that may not be able to stick around against the lead, and that way you're just folding out hands that have you beat so far. And if you get called, course you have some equity to improve as well and just overall not a bad spot for it not at all you got the you got five six you got two pair combos all sorts of good stuff and then you also have ten five suited three does not add much to this equation but if he <laughs> had six five he'd have a really long straight now <laughs> I wish a really long straight beat a straight. <laughs> Feels like a chip. I see Margerison just calling that flop just because, you know, okay? not necessarily the board texture that you want to be raising on and play such a big pot when, again, your opponent can have a lot of different hand combinations that actually have aces beat. Mockery sizing up on this turn. Makes it, you know, harder for Margerison, but I think at this point, you still just call and see what happens on the river. I think obviously your hand is too strong to just be folding. And if nothing else, it's mockery that you're up against, right? We've seen how capable he could be and certainly a different type of opponent may get a little more credit for the double barrels on this type of board, but yeah. Mockery, not so much. Mockery plays solid, 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 and then goes crazy. That's a great way to be. I love it. 9-10. Oh, he has 10. Yeah, so he's got, like, part of two straights now. Yeah, that, <laughs> that almost feels like the perfect card to barrel again and probably going to go huge. Does indeed. Now we've seen Kings fold in this spot in this tournament. Might have even been against Mockery. Mark Jarrison, I think is going to be a tougher customer to get to fold aces. But that is nearly a full pot bet. 2 million into 2.3. I mean, what, what has happened to the game where you can't even snap call aces against the big blind anymore? Well, well, we'll get one thing straight, which is uh, the story Mockery is telling is extremely credible. And you are definitely going to be calling from the big blind and defending with all your 10-9 offsuit combos, of course, the suited ones, all your 6-5s, all of the suited ones. 
The thing is, is, you know, even two pair, I think, can go for the sizing, <laughs> but Marge Harrison does end up calling. Oh, nice call. Very well done, yeah. Agro Santos, Station Santos, this time nice around. Nice and, call. Yeah, takes a big awesome. chunk out of Kahan Makri. So much so that they flip spots on the leaderboard. Pinto and Margerison now neck and neck. For I won't. Table chip leader Makri now second from the bottom. What? I wonder if that, you know, I don't know how, how much check raising um, he's doing, but that could have helped um, make the aces make the call as well. That, you know, maybe the 6-5, six, five, the 5-6, five, and the 7-8 would have also considered check raising that flop, so there, some of those are eliminated from the leading range. You know. Yeah, certainly it just depends on how balanced I think your opponent is in those spots in terms of their leads with those type of draw hands or, you know, weaker... Yeah. Mid pair type yeah. hands versus having you know two pair and I mean, flop straights. I definitely think it's a little less likely that uh, they would have led with yeah, the flop straight, you but you sometimes you, you can you definitely you trick you your opponent into thinking you're a little yeah. bit weaker than you are if you say had top two there and decided to lead. Yeah, definitely a really interesting hand, and it is very tricky to balance those yeah, ranges. But these players. Oh. Almost at the final table of the PCA. I mean, at the EPT, Barcelona are playing incredibly well. I'm thinking about PCA. I'm thinking about the Platinum Pass. I mean, Barcelona is <laughs> kind of a cross between the PCA and the rest of the European Tour stops. We got beach. We got heat. Yeah, that's that's why I, I mix it up. I was just at the beach. I ran from the beach here, <laughs> literally. You <laughs> think The closest I get to using the beach or the pool here is, is meeting a local girl and giving her my room key. <laughs> I've never even seen the pool here. We might have to change that, Stapes. Surely you can just wake up at 8 a.m. tomorrow. We'll do a two-hour pool beach stint. Surely. Yeah. It'll be great. I mean, you're getting woken up at 5 in the morning today anyway, so you <laughs> might as well. It didn't last long. <laughs> Heads up to the flop. So an under the gun open with nines. Let's see what it, ooh, spicy flop. Two overs for the nines. Can't be all that appealing, but the flush draw for Costa looks nice. Nines are ahead. You know, spicy for Costa for sure, but nine still ahead, right? Um, will he see bet here? Nice line here from Torrente who says, "You saw the prize pool." Ah, <laughs> yeah. Good one, good one. I go for the beach though. I mean, the pool is so is great, but the beach is just so fortifying. You're gonna love it. But the pool has, you know, cocktail service and food service. The beach, it's like. If I really wanted a cocktail, I'd have to go up and get it myself. Oh, there's guys walking around that'll sell you a cocktail on the beach. <laughs> True. <laughs> they will. They will. Team beach, um, Maria's team pool, so saves. You gotta I'm, <laughs> I'm a pool. Pick I'm, a, a team. I'm a pool guy. Uh -huh. <laughs> I don't care if I ever touch sand ever again. <laughs> You're both from LA. I, I was guaranteed to lose that one. <laughs> <laughs> Pinto bets 220, Costa calls. River is a jack. Pinto's playing jacks and nines with a king. Checks to Costa. Pretty interesting because as played, considering Pinto had checked nice. the flop, I mean, I think sometimes nice. Nice. Costa could recognize that he yeah, may sixes. actually ha be up against a hand like okay, that. You know, nines, block, tens, eights, and may have to turn his hand yeah, into... Yeah. A bluff there, but doesn't. Like well, he figures he can chop at that point sometimes. Maybe if he has, it's like, high. the queen 10, that, that would be a good candidate, actually getting some ace to fold. <laughs> the nice. Action, action, action at the other table. Ooh. Peterson Machado, who was chip leader for much of day three into day four, is at risk with 9-7 against five deuce of Paul Fischel. And I saw a five on the flop. Also saw two diamonds. Fischl has diamonds. Looking grim for Machado. 
The river card is a 10. And Machado. Oh, I've been waiting all, all week to do this. Much ado about nothing for Peterson Machado. Not nothing, though. Thank you. Nearly 100,000 euros for his efforts. And part of that Brazilian squad that's been so fun to watch this week. There's every day to sun run. Yeah, Brazilians are crushing it, huh? They, they were also crushing the mystery bounty. I think they came second, third, and seventh or something in it. I think they're the second largest country contingent here after Spanish. And we're down to 11 now. Okay, okay. I understand what you put up. Sorry, 12, excuse me. Everyone else laddered up to 11th place money. I could I thought it was a Hey, dude, dude. That's like a whole day. Which is now six figures. Toute ma vie j'ai sauté 13e. Toute ma vie. Maybe it's better for me. Je jouais aucune main. Now we are 12. Et là on est 12 là. Là je peux mon Magri picking up queens on the button and gets one now caller we'll from the big blind, but <laughs> quick check fold. Good, hand. Yeah. good time for Magri to pick up some big hands, Ayy though, because Ayy may have lost a little Ayy bit of his credibility, Ayy so Ayy certainly Ayy could Ayy get Ayy paid Ayy off Ayy huge Ayy in the right <laughs> situation. Yeah, you get a headache if you were Mockery's had a few yeah, moments over the last few days where he should have lost credibility, and then he slowly regains it, only to lose it again. No, bro, don't do that. I promise you, don't do that. Do what? There was what a you... real fun shove where no, it went like raise, three bet, my, my bro, my, my bro, maybe even a four bet, and then he five bet jammed no. eight. Oh, he did? Yeah. You saw that hand. I saw that last night. You guys yeah. were calling it with Nick, right? Yeah. yeah. That was great. I'll, I'll listen to you, Jimmy. And he got, uh, he got ace king to fold. Yeah, no. He got ace king to fold and then <laughs> sucked out on Jax, I think, if I remember. Yeah, that was, uh, that was a brutal one for Jax that uh, made a tough call. By the way, when he had the, uh, the bluff on that hand, did he show, did he show 10 five suited or did he mock? I can't remember. He definitely said nice call right away, and I don't know if after he said that he opened his hand. I think he did because I would assume Makri is the type of person showed. that wants yes. to confirm showed. Yeah, and he wants to get the information, right? Like, in essence, you paid for the information of seeing what your opponent called you with there. And I think that's going to be valuable at some point to him. So most of these heroes, they just proudly flip over their bluff, and they're like, all right, well, what do you have? Speaking of aces. Once again, they've been going around. Yeah. Well, I guess you are slightly yeah. more likely to get them in the small line. That's <laughs> 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 Well, this is good news for the aces. At least he's going to get a call. No. Wrong. <laughs> Somehow oh, they just know. Great read. Great read. I mean, you know, I thought that King High was going to gonna feel that. I mean, I would fold King 6 every time. <laughs> no, it was not. Every <laughs> other time people are calling with King 6. I don't know what's going on anymore. Not that I ever did. And I had two queens. <laughs> Uh, I no. bet you really enjoyed that. Huh? I bet you were loving that. Yeah, it was fucking annoying, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 t I thought I had 200 k, okay, like this. And then I just, I see after 125, I was like, oh, shit. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. It could be an angle shot, yeah. It could be an angle shot. And it could be, yeah. Yeah, it could be, yeah. yeah. And then he raises, and then... It's yeah, 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 it could be an angle shot, yeah. You know? It could be, yeah. Making sure it wasn't. Maybe it was. <laughs> <laughs> Some folks asking who's in the booth right now. I am Joe Stapleton, joined by Maria Ho, Jennifer Shahadi. Hey, everyone. Jennifer Nightbot has you as a two-time U.S. Women's Chess Champion, author, and Poker Stars Ambassador. Is that all accurate? Oh yeah, that's right. Thank you. Yeah, fuck. All in, we'll you will win the main event in 2025. This is such a great final, uh, 20, I mean, final two tables. Any event you will win. It's such a great feature nines. table. In Vegas. Huh? I mean. 10 million. What oh, the full nine? <laughs> that was the point you're not supposed to be able to do anything. 
so many interesting hands so deep and so much table talk. It's like you've got the triad of factors that make it really entertaining. And then, of course, you guys. Oh, thank you. <laughs> just, just an afterthought, but, but us. <laughs> I got nothing to do with that. Yeah. No. I love days um, where so I can just be quiet and let the, <laughs> let the table do the talking. Yeah, I definitely agree with all of that, but especially there's yeah, been so many that. interesting hands and so many, I think it's a testament to how many good players are left is that they have been able well. to <laughs> get themselves into a position where, you know, with the structure being how it is and everyone being so deep, they're really able to get creative and they're really able to play their best game, which will often end up being some really interesting pots on our side to watch. You know, it's not just going to be checked all the way to the river. It's not, you know, just one street poker. There's just a lot of barreling on three streets and definitely nice to be able to see a lot of these really great online yeah. heroes play live. We used to be able to uh, yeah. talk over the raise and take it's, <laughs> you know, or certain hands were like, okay, well, we know that this is going to get checked out. It just doesn't happen anymore. Like, every pot is contested on every street. It's really quite bizarre. I imagine that rail is going to get bigger and bigger as the field gets smaller and smaller, especially if those green flags remain. Bendinelli, 5-3 off. Folds it. On to Pinto, who folds. Mark Jarrison. Ace King on the button. Second in chips, but not by much. Nearly 100 big blinds to start the hand. And Jimmy Guerrero, who has not been shy about putting chips in the middle today, has pocket tens. Getting chilly in here. <laughs> yes. For someone. <laughs> right? Especially from these positions. Certainly going to take an aggressive route against a button open when you have tens in the small. I think I had this exact hand um, button versus small blind in the mystery bounty and got in like a million big blinds. <laughs> I, I, I was the ace king and I won. So it, on the button, exactly the same. We also both had had a lot of chips. We both had heaps. Well, Costa's gotten out of the way. You have seven more. So tall? Carrera did have just about seven million to start the hand. Yeah, Guerrero's yes, an effective like stack, but it's like so that. many big blinds. It is so many big blinds. This dynamic button versus small blind, it does tend to cause some bloated pots, especially when both players actually have it. Just rips Whoa. it. Wow. Mark Jarrison <laughs> shoves. That's crazy. That's kind of what I did too. I ripped for a lot. Only? This is <laughs> exactly the same way. Not exactly the same ICM situation, I don't think. No, we, we there, not. Things. No, there was a you pay jump, but things. not like this, right? We're in the <laughs> final table bubble now. Yeah. Um, it, the thing is that this so looks like it could be ace king or nines it looks like ace king <laughs> <laughs> yeah could be nine so he can convince himself that it's nine sometimes or it could be jack sometimes so it's just so tough. Way, yeah. yeah but i think when anyway, you're you putting TV, yeah? all of when? the <laughs> hands he would do this into anyway, consideration the TV when, yeah? yeah i think you, you unfortunately might just have TV, to anyway. give up your hand in any case how many time bank chimps does he have left <laughs> <laughs> i don't know whether he's going to call or fold but he's going to use those time chips how much? How much you got? <coughs> he's got you covered, Jimmy. He's trying to figure out how many he's going to have left Man. if he loses. Wow, I want to gamble. 
Well, that, that's what you would be doing, Guerrero. <laughs> Six million? How much? France. Absolutely. Wow. Huge spot. He called. I think he just called. Did he say call? No. I don't think okay. so. It did so I did hear a word that sounded like call, but when nothing else happened. <laughs> oh, good. He certainly wants to call. I can feel it. I feel like he wants to call. He's still, you know, he's trying to figure out, is it, is it the right thing to do? Were you, you think he should fold? Yeah, I mean, I think if this was purely for chips at the moment, it's a call. But I think, you know, given <laughs> ICM pay jumps and just the fact that, yes. You go ace queen, for sure you go ace queen. Yeah, I mean, a lot of times this does look exactly like what Marjorison has. But it just feels like at this point in the tournament, you don't need to be calling off for 70 bigs for your tournament life. For a flip at, at best, I mean, yeah, I would agree that Jax plus probably doesn't play it like this. I think he's losing it. <laughs> Not Queen's plus. I feel like Jax could maybe do this once in a while. But yeah, this is a, this is a really tough spot. Oh man, just brutal. Who's he talking to? He's saying ace queen. He says he's convinced he has ace queen. Oh, the time bank card. No, oh, that was no. a time bank card going in. Nope. That was the chips going in this time. Excuse me, the, the fold. <laughs> it was the fold this time. No, no, that, it wasn't. That. What a tough hand. Yeah, what a tough hand. And what a, what a, you know, spot to shove. You know, a lot of people might make it smaller and it's wouldn't get the, wouldn't yeah, get the quick W. It's mm. queen, that's it. Huh? We'll find out quite soon, what? right? I mean, based on the, that four-minute tank, it's only 26 minutes till the stream catches up. So, I think that's a fair enough to, spot to use a lot of time back tips, though. Yeah, because if you didn't use a time back oh, tip, you might just be so excited and call. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I also just think, you know, when Guerrero sees this in 30 minutes, I don't even think he's going to be that upset about it. No. Because at the end of the day, you folded in a spot where you're up against the flip, and now you still are really deep. Huh? I feel you're and you're able to uh, chip up huh? in other spots what? with less variance. So. Yeah, I agree. I mean, he I called out ace queen and ace king over and over. He definitely believes that's the most likely whole thing. I feel you go ace king, ace king. I don't feel uh, I will win this one. You can't call it. I want too much to flip all in. <laughs> of course I can call. Man, man, you crazy? Of course I can call. <laughs> <laughs> I know I got, I got the best hand. He knows the hand's over, over, right? I, just, I feel uh, I, will, I won't win this one. Oh, you had a feeling you were going to win that one. I see the flip for the TV. You see the flip for the TV? No, we're not <laughs> rabbit hunting. <laughs> what do you think this is? You should, should put mean... the phone for the TV. <laughs> Only the TV can see, yeah? Yeah, I think it's yours, but I'm not sure. <laughs> it would be amazing for the TV, yeah. <laughs> Guerrero just saying, you know, no, I've won so many flips up until this point. Yeah, Surely, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I was due to lose one. I feel, yeah, he's, I he's joking. That is why I folded. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know it's if he is joking. He's the guy that shoved 7 8 suited. Ha. From early position. He's like half joking, maybe. Half joking, I'll yeah. give you that. No, I don't care, I don't care the money. I promise you, I really, I really, I really don't care I the money. So, I can uh -oh. have Jax too. Yeah, but I, I, I honestly, gamble, definitely don't have yeah, Jax. Never know. No, Jax. If he doesn't care about the money, you know, you can buy a trophy. Yeah, I've got several. I just go to the store and tell him what to put on it. What do you have to put on it? World champion. Person, <laughs> number one, He's pretty good number, number one guy, <laughs> number one guy. I used to be really into karate until I realized I could buy whatever color belt I want. <laughs> He's going to be talking about this hand for ten minutes. Let's hope so. Okay, I'll tell you my prediction now. You will finish second. Me? Yeah. You think so? Yeah. Really? I wrote it. I wrote it. Really? Yeah, my phone. I wrote it on my phone. No, I don't think I'm good enough. I'm getting destroyed here. <laughs> Everybody, everybody's uh, running over me. Tori as well say, Mokri, we know second, top two. Everybody's running no, Tori, over me. No, Tori. Jimmy, if you Tori really do nice know guy. that, no spoilers, please. Tori, no vegetable guy. <laughs> Tori, yeah. He's very nice. Yeah. He knew the yeah. Acer King was coming. For you. You want to. That's good. I make a big fall, bro. Wow. 
I've never forgot. Hmm? I'm a macho guy now, 40 years old. I'm a macho guy, yeah? <laughs> I fought 10. <laughs> Even I know how to get a good Quien es más macho? Stapes, didn't you say that uh, on penultimate days, it, there's no more chat pro Saturday? I think I heard you say that. Yeah, earlier. like I was going to do chat pro Saturday, and then the first thing someone said was so dumb. Yeah. It's that I was like, I can't even entertain. <gasps> it's uh, happening. Yeah. It's happening again. There's a lot of people with very strong opinions who have mm -hmm. never been in this spot before. But it seems like the chat's great today. I'm peeking around. Because so I'm blocking everyone think, before you can <laughs> see it. <laughs> That's crazy, huh? Good job. Well done. No Best way. blocker. <laughs> that's that's what you're doing. Biggest ally. That's a, that's a joke Love that I it. myself. He's gone crazy. But that, that way I would never have folded. But if you went yeah, 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 yeah. like that and then all in the river, then... There's no ICM. I should fold. Yeah. Would you fold nines? Huh? Would you fold nines, that spot? Where? <laughs> that you had aces? Uh, I don't know. Nines? Yeah. Jimmy's losing he it. Had nines. Pretty much the same thing, right? If you would have 10 jacks, queens, then you would have 3 bet 3 flop, probably. Yeah, but guys, stop to talking strategy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm learning too much now. I'm learning too much. Please. It's like I've had it ages so many so times. Which time are you talking about? Yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah. 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 There's some silver abundance of strategy talk. No, I, I mean, was if I, I were at a table full of good, good no, players, no, I would no, no, probably just keep my mouth shut. I was under counter. I'm full day. Yeah, but it's not enough just to win. You need yeah, everyone else to think you know what you're talking about. <laughs> but this is also like a leveling strategy talk in that some of it's fake and some of it's true. <laughs> Hot! Hot! Jimmy's going to take a lap. Margerison opening under the gun with ace tray of hearts. I mean, it's comments like this from Macavrios, who says, Stop talking, OMG. Didn't you an hour ago say, These players never talk, you banned. Thank you for your comment. Pedronelli with a pretty, pretty bad hand in the small. He's out. with eight five off and is gonna take a flop and that flop is ace queen seven two diamonds top pair for Margerison bottom pair for mockery Like this comment from Fresh and Dennis says, People just don't get what it's like to play for this much money. I also don't get it, by the way. <laughs> Pinto checks, Mark Jarrison checks. Mockery is taking the bait. Maya, only two guys only. Yeah, Margerison just exercising some pot control by checking it over. Certainly not going to fold to this bet with top pair. I think Mockery, you know, having the backdoor flush draw definitely helps being in position, of course. It's nice you get to clear out some potential equity. And, yeah, if you get a call right here, depends on what comes on the turn. You can certainly exercise a few different options. Makes the call to the turn. Tray ball, <coughs> two pair for Margerison. Big action card. <coughs> Flush draw for Mockery. Yeah, and obviously for Margerison, who might have been unsure about their kicker on the flop, definitely 
feels a lot less worried now with that two pair and mockery with more equity. One point one million. Just unlucky in the sense that I think maybe if Mar Jarrison didn't hit two pair on the turn, this big sizing definitely would have given him a lot to think about with just mm. aces with a three kicker, you know, especially when you open under the gun, you get a flat from the button. So they can definitely have some suited aces and some offsuit ace-x combos that actually, you know, have your kicker well beat. It looks like Mar Marjorison has called the bet. That's correct. Yeah, so he's called the bet. This is Full house on the river for Marjorison. And the board pairs aces, which might make a seven appear stronger. But yeah. I don't know. I just saw the... Yeah, he quite zero. checks. Yeah, and we're still in 12. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, did what do you think, guys? Yeah. Is Mockery going to give up now? I think so. I think given the action, given the sizing that Marjorison called on the turn, and Mockery being the one with one of the flush draws, you know, it just feels... I don't beat many hands. Yeah, some. yeah exactly. It just kind of have to give up, unfortunately, maybe on some different rivers. Wow. That is one of the many hands you do not beat, Kahan Mockery. Good check back. Well done. I don't know. All in could have got it done, maybe. A rep ace queen. That's right. Feels like no, Mar Jarrison might be like Mockery's uh, kryptonite. No, he beat heads like me, yeah, you had Well, I'm getting word that the Where other table has some board. big what action happening. Bruno Pega has called the all in of Maher Noira, who has tens. Pega has ace jack. Tens holding on this queen high flop. It is a classic race. Deuce on the turn. Noira has to fade the river and does. That's a double up. Pega left with crumbs. And we know there's more short stacks at this table than the other table. There are a couple of players with sub-20 big blind stacks. And I think all that happened there is Noira switched places with Pega. Yeah. Sorry? You pay so Yeah, But when we were like... Like the three of spades, for example. <laughs> you got the same age. Yeah. So you have the same level. Yeah. Same age, I played with him. The same level before? You got the same level, you and him. Yeah, same, same level, yeah? Same, same team, same. That's crazy, man. Yeah, and there was like more than... Benjamin really hasn't him. had as much and I met him to play with all. today, and but nobody looks yeah. more <laughs> frustrated yeah. by it than, than him when he ends up having to fold. And I hey, what's going on here? Is it action folded hand? Yeah. Not yet. Not yet. Yeah, yeah. Beninelli yeah. has yeah. been using a, a fair amount of his time bank. Just his facial expressions every time. Like, yeah. when he had to give up those deuces in a pretty standard spot post, he was just like, oh. couldn't be more annoyed. A walk for Scott Marjerison. A rare walk. Okay, so in the time that we were gone, when he came to our team, hmm? Pega uh, has gotten it all in again. He came from the north of Brazil. I mentioned he was very short after that hand. And, uh, now he's gotten it in king four against Patrick Yarosh, ace seven. So at risk and behind. <laughs> Pega's gonna need to hit 
Well, now he's going to need to hit a king. The Arsh hit a seven. Does have a straight opportunity. No straight. Pair of sevens good for Yarosh. That's going to be it. Thank you. Good game. For Pega. Much like the Pega, Sus flew too close to the sun. Very nice run here, though, and... Eliminated at 12th place. You got it in good? This will be most tough shorthanded what you ever played in your life, guys. Enjoy it. Welcome. More toughest to yeah. shorthanded? Yeah. Jesus. If you know who I play, Jesus. <laughs> this guy. This guy. <laughs> That does, that does leave us with 11 players, so five and six, shorthanded action until we get down to nine. But all players enjoying a pay jump with that elimination. Correct. Yeah, he passes to the Ooh, Ooh, the famous eights for Mockery. <laughs> Mockery with his classic hand, nines for Pinto. Well, if you beat Jax, you can beat nine, right? Uh, Surely, that's how it works. Yeah. <laughs> Three million behind. Three million behind. Oh, Mockery okay. just hasn't been his day so far. We'll see if he can find a way to lose the minimum on this hand. Okay, well. This is exactly the matchup Jimmy thought he might have been up against before. Nines or ace queen. This time it's Jimmy with the two overs. Ace Queen suited. Morning. And rips it over the top, hoping to put the sort of pressure on the morning. bigger pocket pairs that he got when he had tens. I don't think Mockery's calling it off this time with eights. Yeah, and it's also not entirely implausible for Pinto to have flatted with some traps as well. I mean, certainly, if you expect some players to squeeze behind when you smooth call, then, of course, you can have some bigger hands than nines in that spot. So, yeah, I think Mockery definitely made the right folds there. But for Pinto, <clears throat> closing the action, definitely a little bit of a different story. Is there anything to be said for just folding this and holding on to your 100 big blind stack? Just take it. It's okay. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay, great. That's what he's going to do. Yeah. <laughs> he's thinking, you know, yeah, could have 10 sometimes. Would you have? If you fail, I fail. Continue. Is that fair? Yeah, it's fair. Yeah. Okay. We'll okay. see okay. on the okay. It gets addictive yeah. needing to yeah. know what everyone had at the end of every hand. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm well, don't get too comfortable here, gang, because we are heading back out to the other table. Potential storm of Bruin. Wow, pretty big pick, eh? Like Scott and me, eh? Oh, what do you have? I see an all-in triangle in front of Fishel. Cristea, well covered. Ace eight in the big blind. He's used a couple of time banks, but folds. Do you know? I don't know. 11. Very friendly. What? Not friendly. <laughs> Versus you, come on. Versus you. I know 2K, of course, is hard. Of course, it's 2K hard. starts, it's, it's tough. We're going to stick around here for one more hand. That starts in French. Move. That starts in uh, French. My start graph is beautiful. My ACR graph is <laughs> I like that color of orange. Because he's talking about his graphs on ACR and poker stars. Uh -huh. Peach. I like it. I'm bad with colors. I always get colors wrong. People are like, that's, I'm like, that's brown. They're like, it's green. No. Just like more. <laughs> Maybe you're among the 8% of men who are partially colorblind. I think I'm just dumb. <laughs> <laughs> but you're really, really cute. <laughs> I'd, I'd much rather be attractive than smart. <laughs> so Kowalski has raised ace five. Do we think Kalidou's still having nightmares, by the way, about Kowalski just 
delivering that deuce on him yesterday. That was brutal. Bit of a wheel draw here. Bottom pair for Yarosh. Malski continuing. Your Ash has proved to be a pretty tough customer. Who's raising bottom pair. Definitely don't mind this line. I think when you're up against the cutoff range, certainly check raising this can benefit from a lot of folds folding out. A ton of overcards, obviously. <laughs> Not these two overcards. Kowalski sticking around. It's a six on the turn. now has to decide if he wants to continue telling the value story. And it looks like the answer is yes. Yeah, I think that's a pretty good turn card as well to do it on. Certainly if your opponent calls the check raise on the flop and let's say, you know, an ace or a king or one of those cards come, then you're probably going to think about giving up. But... One point one million. Kowalski's still with nothing but ace high and a gut shot draw. Woo, baby. Not quite a believer yet, but the Hanging funny around. <laughs> the funny thing is, is Jarosh doesn't know it, but at the moment still has the best hand. Right. Rivers the Jack of Diamonds doesn't hit anybody. Doesn't complete any draws. Are we playing the seven deuce game in EBT Barcelona? Not the first any time we've seen people go absolutely crazy this week with seven deuce. The stupid got to call the big blind because it's suited. Gets people in some weird situations. It's not very often that when you check raise the flop, get called, bet the turn, get called, that you could really think that your deuces has much showdown value right now. I mean, if Yarosh decides to give up and Kowalski checks back, then that would just be a pleasant surprise taking the time to just think about can he follow through here? Gives up. But it's going to... Feels gonna, like a give up, It's going to like what he would sees. Would you look yeah. at this? It's going to rake this pot with a deuce. He doesn't win. No? Really? <laughs> wow. Feels like a slow roll. <laughs> Feels like you're going to get shown the winner, but no. What a fun hand. I, I'm going to take this opportunity as we go back to the feature table to say goodbye and thank you to Jennifer Shahadi. Jen, thanks a lot for stopping by. Congratulations. On your 11th place finish in the mystery bounty. It was a blast. What great hands. Um, so much. So much fun. Lots of fun. Don't, don't forget to enjoy that pool.
Yeah, we'll, we'll see <laughs> about that. Jeff's headed straight back to the beach right now. If these, if, if, if these players do their jobs and get us down to six in the next hour or so, maybe I can catch I sunset by the pool. Ooh, I, I would be right there with you, Stapes. I could use a mojito. Is my girlfriend invited or no? <clears throat> of course. Of course. <laughs> Back to the main stage where Ben Dinelli has turned a boat. Mockery had flopped a 10. Yeah, pretty unfortunate for Mockery. Day one, I followed the Broadway straight to get the runner runner uh, full house. Oh, yeah. Uh, if I didn't make it, Ali really hasn't played many hands one. today. But there are a couple of spots like that. that but you are up really against, yeah, you know, an under make, the gun opening range. Make a good decision. But it's, good. it's very Certainly. Uh, winning or losing is close. They could have a lot of Queen X here. Right. Plus, the last level. you know, it's just depends on if you Holding think up, that your opponent's going to be like betting like over pairs here, here, you know, with. The queen's on board. There's so much to think about. I mean, who has time for it all? <laughs> I mean, if you think your opponent's going to check back aces yeah, or like, kings uh, here, yeah. then you're going to be much more inclined to put them in the range of either having trips or having a hand like ace-king or ace-jack, perhaps. Well, Mockery is not one who folds easily. Tray ball on the river. And Mockery didn't think he liked having to face a bet on the turn, but he definitely <laughs> won't like it on this river because I think there's a lot of hands that Bendinelli would just show down here. And if he puts, I mean, when he puts this bet in, it's not going to feel good for Mockery. He's a super huge chip leader, but the chip leader lost. Hell yeah, well, he, he is, I think. I think he you got 15 million here? Yeah? 15? A little bit less, I think. 15 million he got. Huh? I don't think it's 15. 15. He, said, he told me 12, 12 million at the break. Then I grind some. Uh... Yeah. <coughs> All in. 2.5 million. All in. Yeah, he got 15. He got 15. Here we are. Mockery calls. He, shout me if the, he is I'm out. Shout me. It's a bad time to be a hero for Mockery, but... This guy ever played poker I mean, before? <laughs> the thing is, I think the reason why he's even considering it is having the king is not great, right? I mean, meaning it's bad for Mockery in the sense that he thinks that a lot of the strongest kind of queen-x type combos, king-queen... really is not going well. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he knows it. Like... If you think about it under the gun opening range, right? What type of hand can Ben Dinelli bet? Well. All three streets. Ben Dinelli also has not been very active today. No, which that should definitely play in Mockery's mind. But at the end of the day, I think Mockery uh, sometimes may be a victim of just being like too good you know when you're you're just so good and you think through every situation you just want to play every know, hand man. it feels like i'm getting bluffed for some reason man, what time is it please what time is it every hand the best way possible but sometimes you can end up out leveling yourself that way it is possible to be getting bluffed here but it is not what's happening. I just fold, fold. Yeah, it's been a frustrating day for Mockery, but, you know, sometimes you're just going to have to fold, and maybe you got bluffed. Most likely you didn't, but you have to kind of live with the decision that you make at the time. Mockery folds, gives up the time bank cards. Want to read this comment, a question actually on Twitch that says, Xanadu with Merkin. Can anyone confirm if Spraggy is still out? First of all, you banned. 
Second of all, ask him yourself. Spraggy is in. Spraggy is in the commentary booth. But I reiterate, maybe it was a you banned. You took one of my favorite people in the entire world. It yeah, made me hate the sound of his name. Yeah. <laughs> that's, the yeah. that's the harsh policy really, we've had to instill now. Really yes. yes. It's a meme yeah. now because they know it upsets me. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Well, you've, I you've basically I told a child not to some, touch something or do something. something. Correct. Yes. 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 I don't know. Hey, these plates are really hot. Don't. Uh, <laughs> what are you doing? I think he had like a, they just uh, have to do it, Joe. Both or uh, Jack Nine. I don't know. There was something wrong about this. You open under the gun? Yeah, he defended the big blind. Spraggy, yeah, I, I feel like know. you've had enough time to process Maybe your unfortunate maybe bust out, although you did finish month. in the money. But the I want to hear about your anniversary, okay. actually. My anniversary? Um, the anniversary was okay. We went to a really nice uh, pasta place mm. called uh, La Pasta Lab. Which is like a handmade. Ooh, sounds Spanish. Pasta, yeah. <laughs> uh, pasta place. That, that was nice. And then we we came back for about half past ten to late register the one thousand and fifty euro. So hyper romantic. Right here in EPT Barcelona. Oh, so Spanish. So romantic. Yeah. Which I immediately busted out of. But then Marley right. made a run Two towards million. the money. Oh. But then lost for just me, before the money. Oh. Break it, but I don't know. But, uh, you know, it was, it was a fun day. If all in all, bit, you know, sounds different. like a well-rounded anniversary. Yeah, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. I mean, Obviously, I was hoping to still be the main, but not to be. You can run. <laughs> you can run. Run, run. I don't have experience with this kind of fighting. Oh, you can take a bottle, a bottle of water, empty, 20, 20. empty bottle. Yeah. Empty bottle of water. Yeah. <laughs> 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 hey, what do I hear you? There, there, there. Are you good there? Kind of that, that, was, that would be one way to get to <laughs> the be sick. Tom. It's been a very <laughs> chatty table. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be a safe. If on go side bet, go you got like a lot of penalty. Yeah, you don't block check nine. If it, uh, you have like in time, right? Hey, if on if on Larry, he did it, he did it with the battle, you know? If on Larry, he did it, he pissed on the battle. I don't understand. It's from Derry, Antonio. It's from Derry. A piece on the bottle, he got one of one one of. Oh yeah, he. I remember that. It's a really bet. great story. <laughs> but he does not That's like so it being crazy. told. I don't, I don't know. Oh yeah, I remember the story. Yeah. But if he folds the queen, and yeah, it's more uh, likely. Yeah. <coughs> now you can go. Long time. I think I, I used to, all my time. Uh, you, you can run. No, no, Jimmy, go. Sometimes you get blocked. Life, buddy. I usually don't. <laughs> I usually never get yeah, it. Yeah, Jimmy's it's lost it a little bit. He's, face, um, on side, on <laughs> he's on the goofy pills. Know, we'll stop. Okay? You tell me. We'll <laughs> Spraggy, for the fans, what, what place there. did you bust in? Yeah, uh, 190 something, very something like that. 192, yeah. 11,760 euros. And everyone keeps coming up to me. It's like, nice run in the main. Nice run. So I, I got my money back in a little bit and then lost the flip. But You laddered up at least once. Yeah. It was nice. It's were, nice you in, were you in two bullets, though? I was, I was, okay. I was. And just actually before that, uh, Hardigan was kneeling, kneeling me about being uh, now you're all the min cash expert. He's obviously wrong. PSPC. I'm First made him on color. And, else, uh, and I was like, that's not going to happen this time, yeah, James. The and then boom. Earth, yeah. It's been quite a there consistent story from you. It's the sort of consistency I'm happy with you rather should, uh, than the consistency my, uh, of day one bust out. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah you, you take off and you lose all your shit. It's <laughs> certainly better than my I'll consistent like story of busting like 10 or 20 uh, for the money. No way. No and never hitting a set. Never hitting a set. Yeah, I've tried not I've tried not to. I've hit one set and one flush this year, actually. No, it's pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah. He put a hat on the final t table TV, then he burst. Oh. My story from that tournament was I, I got it all in Kings versus Jack 10, and there was a, a Jack on the flop and a oh. Jack on the turn, and the, uh, the guy who beat me at the it. end of the hand announces, Jack's yeah, hold. A great line, if nothing else. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so he, 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 nice he, parting okay, gift. So he doesn't know what else to do, right? Okay. So he gets the free information without saying it. Fair. He was I'm also dealing because it was a self-deal tournament <laughs> at a real oh, casino. Wow. No, no, no. Yeah. No, and he dealt himself the He dealt himself the, uh, the Jack-10, wow. the Jack on the flop, and the Jack on the turn. And then gives, and then gives they himself a little commentary <laughs> line as well. For the, a self-deal tournament, how much rake could they possibly take for that? So what it was is it was the yeah, Joe Stapleton was, Bounty was, Tournament. Yeah, what I didn't yeah, realize is that uh, for every player who entered, yeah, 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 it was a five-pound yeah, additional my, bounty on me. Uh, so my bounty ended up being worth second-place money. Wow. So the whole point of the tournament is not Joe Stapleton. Correct. It's a true bounty tournament. Once I, once I didn't have the table covered anymore, I was like, 
I'm all in. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Maybe only him, but it was on no, track. No, we've been telling we're everyone no, not was not hands against me. No, 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 I had a similar needle yesterday. No, I got it in in the 1600 mystery bounty. Yeah. With, uh, I was very short. I put in with King Jack. And the guy calls and goes, oh, you're not in that bad shape. And turns over Ace King. I was like, buddy, that's, that's pretty rough shape. It's so annoying. Yeah, it's like, as bad as it gets, nearly. Trip Queens here for Mark Garrison. There's nothing against you. It's nothing. You're... Yeah. Let these guys chat a little bit. Yeah, fuck. I should turn on the broadcast and see if I got bluffed. <laughs> he didn't get bluffed. It's going to be so excruciating. I'm going to... What am I going to do? <laughs> if you get bluffed. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, okay, maybe not exactly. that. Yeah. That'd be too much. You think too much? Way too much. Yeah. Lindowski says Margerison on fire. Did you not see the? Oh no, I'm thinking of someone else. You're right. Margerison is on fire. 121 big blinds. And looking to increase it has trips. Slow playing flop, slow playing turn, blind versus blind. Kimto does not catch up in any significant way. Yeah, but may be inclined to rep Jack 10 here. I think I'd be giving this a bit of uh, bit of go time. A lot of the natural backdoors improving, the backdoor hearts, obviously Jack-10, as Maria said, getting there. Jack-6 of clubs. Might feel like it needs to fire a third here. Scott Margerison certainly capable of still having some stubborn ace highs. Okay, so here's what I don't understand. Uh, one of the many things. So when you feel like, hey, a bunch of draws came out of this card, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I could have a draw here. I'm gonna have a draw. How yep. do you know your opponent wasn't on the same draw? Well, they could be, right? But there's other parts of their range that you want to get to fold. So, as I said, Scott Majerson very capable of like double peeling some ace highs if he's getting stubborn. Maybe a hand like nine ten double peeling if he's getting stubborn. Um, maybe put something like king three in a really miserable spot if you triple off. You really want to work backwards when you're betting in poker. All, take all of the hands you want to bet, your good hands, your value hands, uh -huh. and then have some bluffs to balance those out. And Jack-6, obviously, we block Jack-10, which is working for us. We don't have any showdown value. A would, lot of our other we, would it be good if we had a heart? Um, Better? Yeah, I don't think it would hurt, potentially. Okay. Like Even something like Jack-6 offsuit with a six of hearts um, is going gonna, is gonna to be working in our favor. It does look like Pinto decides to, to give up this time. Really, though, when a lot of your other bluffs improve, like the hearts improve, your jack-10 improves, you need to find bluffs from somewhere else. So jack-6 seems like a reasonable place to find one, but not always. Right. And uh, this time, yeah. correctly check folding, because Scott's sitting in the, in the big blind with the monster. And Mark Jarrison. Oh, no, I was. One third. You are Those a, keep stacking yeah. chips. By far or no? Uh, there is one who has less, he has no chips. After that, I'm by far, yeah. We're all deep here, all deep. Deep uh, stack. One with uh, no chips? Uh, like five weeks? Okay. No. You can see the hand? This guy French guy? So there was a long time where we didn't have a veritable short stack at this table. We do now. Kayon Mockery, 19 big blinds. Hello there, in the Red Bull Racing hat. Keep an eye out, by the way, for Red Bull Racing. Currently in a partnership with Poker Stars. Lots of cool promotions. And we gave away the Red Spade Pass in the Mystery Bounty. We got a huge argument about the Red Spade Pass last night over who would be a better person for that guy to take as his plus one, me or Maria. <laughs> you got it. Well, presumably, it was a debate of one. Joe Stapleton on the side of Joe Stapleton. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Joe Stapleton versus the people. <laughs> Everybody else, Maria Ho, unequivocally. And then you're taking yourself. Uh, it was a little closer than that. It was more like a 
Are either of you uh, Formula One fans? Oh, I am a huge Formula One fan, so I feel like by default I should naturally go as a lifelong follower of all things. Oh, my F1. God. Is, you, is, really, uh, is, is, is 2019 lifelong now? Um, okay, if it hadn't but, been a pandemic, you'd have never watched every single show on Netflix. Okay, but now I'm waking at up at 4 honest. in the morning U.S. time to watch the races. Okay, so what do you have to say about that? <coughs> Exactly. Uh, I drive exactly. a car every day. That's How about huge. That? Oh, Maria, that's wow. huge. This guy's actually, you know, getting ah. experience. Unbelievable. Okay, well, I guess I have to go and buy a Ferrari then. We do <laughs> have a hand shaping up here. More on this battle later. What is it? Oh. More on us driving to survive Jean. later. Jean. Costa over in the action Jean. with Jean. pocket Jean. eights. Jean. That's the uh, mockery Jean. hand. Jean. Margerison three betting ace king Guerrero reaching for chips with the third best hand in this situation. <laughs> there he goes. Back to Costa. Seems like too many big blinds to get it in here. Certainly a little bit deep to expect us to be playing for stacks pre-flop, I think, and obviously at this stage of the tournament as well. Uh, Costa being covered, calling in position and much more. Reasonable choice of action. And Scott's going to be three betting quite liberally here, I think. We're six handed. He's got all the chips in play. He's sure. out of position. So the eights is going to be ace king. pretty well. And he'll be pretty happy with that board. Uh, Maria, it's, it's actually Louis Shamilton. Oh, it's Max Verstappen is our boy on Red Bull Racing. Yeah, well, I I'm still allowed to like other drivers. Eh, I don't know. <laughs> you banned <laughs> <laughs> from going to any F1 races. So Scott's probably going to want to continue quite a lot on this flop, obviously representing all the good hands pre-flop with his three-bat. Lots of overpairs. Denying against something like Jack-10 suited isn't that bad for him either when he has uh, just asking high. And obviously can improve to a, a straight draw as well. Costa with the eights. Going to continue. <coughs> Got to stick around at the moment. It might get a little bit scarier down the streets, but a deuce is a really awkward card to navigate because... Is it? Everything breaks out. Give me a phrase, King. For the pocket eights, if you start facing multiple streets here, right? Because you still have an overpair. But obviously yeah. Scott Majerison before the flop is saying that he can easily have nines, tens, jacks, queens, kings, and aces. Eh, so nobody ever has those hands. <laughs> so you're kind of happy that it's a brick. But we'll see if uh, Scott Majerison wants to... Oh, so you would rather a card hit here that slows him down a little bit? Well, let's say it's, uh, let's say it's a four. Let's say it's an ace or a king. Uh, Costa's going to be like, you know, maybe a little bit sure of what to do. Um, obviously Got happy it. that it's a deuce, but it's just a tough one in a three-bet pot over three streets. You might have to really, you know. Now, I would feel deep. like if I'm Costa and I've been checked here that I need to bet to take over the mm. betting lead. Right. No, I know this is wrong. I've, been, I've, I've done this many times, and it's, and it's hurt me. I'm always afraid that the next card is going to be the one, but this isn't it. People just have clean runouts, it turns out. How the other half of it, eh? Yeah. I think it's close. I definitely think there's something to be said for protection. I think it depends on how you expect uh, Majerison to be playing all of his other overpairs, where I think he's just going for like a clean triple off all the time, or if he's going to mix in some chat raises. There's obviously a benefit of uh, protecting, especially on the 5-3 the deuce board, because the ace size have an additional four outs uh, with the wheel draw. Check, check on the river. This one's going to go to Costa. Yeah, and here as well, like, Marjarison's ace-king is, is somewhat happy to show down. He still beats the other ace-high floats. And as I predicted, the rail getting deeper for Costa, that is his girlfriend and her friends. Their friends, I should say. I thought, I thought I was winning. That rail going to be thick yeah, tomorrow. <laughs> Big 
tail of two rails, whoever is on that side. We played it. Played it yesterday. Wow, Scott. You actually lost him. Can you believe that? I thought the king was coming. Timon asking final table at nine players. That's correct. The unofficial final table is nine players. It's the last table. Then eight is the final table. That's right. Since we play it handed. Yep. It's a weird world out there in the internet, Sprag. I don't know how you do it every day. <laughs> All sorts going off in the no, chat. No, I know him. He loves giving himself Dutch ovens. His teeth are yellow from it. He blames it peeps marshmallows, but everyone knows. Well, everyone but you, I guess. There you go. Just, just able to uh, picking out the, the Dutch oven comment to read live here on the stream. And why not? And why not? <laughs> <laughs> Costa and Guerrero <laughs> blind on blind. 6-5, out-flopping, Jack-5. So we've got YouTube chat, PokerStars Twitch chat, yeah. Twitter, hashtag yeah. EPT Barcelona, yeah. at PokerStars TV, at, yeah. at Maria Ho. And in case six. all that fails to come up with the dumbest thing possible, me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then we've got your contributions. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Action goes check, check. And turn is the nine of clubs. You know, Guerrero not really continuing on that flop, even though he was the pre-flop aggressor, just because this feels like it's a lot more in Costa's wheelhouse when calling a raise to have a lot of these middling, straighty potential type hands. And now after a second check, Costa just going for a little bit of protection, deny equity to, you know, some of the legitimate opens that have two overs. Pretty big sizing as well, so most hands unable to continue for that sizing, and certainly Scott. not Jack Five. Scott. <laughs> Come on, Scott. Everyone very laxed today. Ooh, Noira. All in with the Noin Noin. This looks particularly spicy. What are we, blind versus blind? Kowalski facing call for his tournament life with top pair, blocks the straights. No returning the nines into a bluff, of course. Realizing he can't win at showdown, blocks the 9-10, which is the obvious nutted straight. Second nutted straight. But nutted nonetheless. If Kowalski makes this Kowalski, Noira is out. He does make the call. A valiant effort wow. by Noira. Wow. But Kowalski makes the hero. Wow, Samba. And sends Noira to the down. rail. Samba, you always go down, then you go back Samba. Yeah, somehow. Somehow. No, Maher, Noira okay, out in 10th place. Covered? He's covered? Yeah, yeah. Cashing for so nearly 120,000 euros. And we're down to 10. Two tables of five. Huge call from Kowalski. Wasn't for his tournament life, excuse me, but Somebody going digs to deep. Like big, big pot. Huh? You, you thought he was a yes. Kowalski wow. knocked out Kaladu So on the day bubble last night. Knocked so him out. So ugly. Yeah, the final two table bubble got it in. Yeah. Deuces. Big back. Strong. Against So's 
Kings? King King. Yeah. yeah. Juice on the river. And I threw up in my mouth a little bit, so I can only imagine how Kalidou felt. That is nine, I believe, right? Well, Kowalski can we get doing the work of the table by yeah, taking out another here and getting us down to ten. Just five minutes left on the level. And we're going to need to balance a player off the main stage and over to the secondary table where they're down to four. Very dangerous sight for everybody left in the, the tournament. Kowalski with a big stack of chips in front of him. Kowalski, Very accomplished yeah. player. Kowalski won, better known as online. Looks like Bendinelli just won that pot, which means that Bendinelli is going to be the big blind next hand. Good luck, Gilano. The best poker player of the table. And here come the racks. <laughs> ben Danelli banished <laughs> to the lower oh, stage. Thank you, Lanou. Thank you very much. It was a turn, really? It was a turn, right? Oh. Now, I know, Ben, that... We will watch. I swear to God, I Okay, chat the girls up on your own time. You're working, sir. <laughs> so, Ben, I know that uh, Anne Maria... Um, things often slow down at this point, right? Everybody want to, wants to make the final nine, but by virtue of the fact that they're five and five handed, can things slow down that much? Yeah, I mean, I think that it's safe to say that generally speaking, you will see play slow down at this juncture, but when we look at who's left and the way that they've been playing, you know, certainly not afraid to be involved when necessary, and they are not shying away from playing big pots, despite how deep everybody is, pretty much. And so, I don't know. It, it definitely depends on the group of players you have left at this stage. Of course, you know, big pay jumps on the horizon. Really important stage of the tournament. But these people came here to play. Yeah, in terms of our feature table as well, we kind of have an interesting dynamic now where Kyan Mockery has the 16 big blinds. He's significantly shorter than anybody else. Um, so a lot of the play is going to orient itself around how Scott Majerson is going to play the big stack and, and Michael Pinto uh, to a point with 90, 90 blinds. And then Mockery just finding his opportunities to, to get it in, reshove, steal here or there, um, and try and find that double up. But of course, being five-handed, he's going to have to play pay blinds pretty frequently. So he can't really afford to, to sit and wait for too long. Emilio is asking, Joe, do you know how James is doing today? James, from what I understand, is feeling a little bit better. We may end up hearing his voice at some point between today and tomorrow. I think he may be back. Can't say for sure. He had an S5, really? That's what I heard, So, Kyan Mockery with 1.6 million chips pays 200,000 every five hands. So he's going to get, get busy. Uh, Jimmy, I said ace queen switch it? <laughs> yeah, there's five suited. Yeah. yeah, and then he said ace five as a joke. No, no, no. Oh, so he's lying. Yeah. Oh, my God. Okay. Oh, my God. So what did you have? What did you have? Ace five. Nice. I didn't lie. Wow. You actually, what did I have? I told you. Yeah. I'm not, no okay, no, 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 I'm not saying uh, anything. Yeah. Man, I got ace queen switch it. You're crazy, guys. I got ace queen. He said ace five. We could check it, but that's what I heard. <laughs> hey, you want to bet with me? You want to bet money? I mean, we won like uh, one hundred thousand. Oh, how much you want to bet? Just say what I heard. I will check it later. We'll no, no, no. We'll How much you want to bet? Five hundred. Five hundred. Not bluff. I don't know. Yeah, you can win five hundred. Jimmy. To bet, I got S five. You win. You, you win five hundred. Thank you. If I have S queen, <laughs> I win five hundred. I, I will win five hundred. It's a good deal. Jimmy's getting got, chatty. I got S five, guys. I got S five. <laughs> I got S queen. Oh my god. So You're here comes Kyan Mockery full on steel. King do suit on the button. Not gonna work. But honestly, I got S5. But I could have S5. Queen Jack from Jerison. I promise you. I feel like this hand I will look at it back could go either way. <laughs> Might be more likely to call. It's pretty playable. You're keeping some dominated hands still. You could also just shove in the short stack. Yeah, I think yeah, we'll back shoving from Marjorison versus the, the open is going to be okay. This hand, though, it's just like it plays very nicely. It's very easy to make top pairs and decent <laughs> draws. I will look with my own eyes, then I can see. Yeah, yeah, it's better you look yourself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just, I just know what I heard. I don't know what you yeah, heard. That's crazy. I think Kyan will want to be betting a lot on this flop. 
A lot of the ASAX from Margerson will be all in pre-flop. So it's, it's a pretty good board to continue on. And doesn't need to go big, just goes 100,000, just trying to fold out something like jack five of clubs and pick up the 500 or so thousand in the middle. Not going to happen this time. Margerson continues with the gut shot. And makes a pair. Ace. Oh, no. Just a pair. But wait, wait, wait. Yes. Ace, king, yeah. queen, ten. No, that's mm, also a pair. But... No, not a pair. Okay. But Mockery does have a straight draw. A straight draw. Straight yes. draw. There we go. Could see some fireworks as well, because with the small sizing on the flop, Mockery's going to keep Margerison's something like jack six still in the pot. Something like eight six suited maybe still in the pot. Maybe some ten five and ten seven. These pairs are going to stick around because of the 100,000 chip sizing. So when he picks up the straight draw, he's going to try and fold out a six, fold out a ten. Obviously has outs to improve himself. Obviously is still repping a lot of aces in his range, more so than Scott Majerus and Flats in the big blind. So I like this double barrel. Unfortunately, Maria, it looks like Scott's kind of at a point in his range where he can continue again. Yes, and so this bet on the turn is not going to work. Depends on what comes on the river. Certainly, you know, if the 10 pairs or perhaps, you know, the queen, then Mockery will unfortunately have to shut down based on some of the type of hands that Margerison will have called two barrels with. I think on an eight, there's every chance we might see him fire it off. Yeah, okay, I mean, Jack X of hearts, check. No, giving yeah. up. Jack's good, uh, Queen's good. That's gonna be the last hand of the level. Let's check in on the other table we before we head to break. Hey, we, the final table, 900. I'm told there is a hand in play. And it's Ben Dinelli who has just moved to this table versus Yarosh. Yarosh with 16 million in chips. That's going to be about 150 big blinds. And Bendinelli, the favorite and ahead, is going to bet this pair of jacks. Garrosh is open-ended. Yeah, Bendinelli actually called that Sorry, bet calling. From, Thank you. Yeah, and five on the river doesn't give Yarosh what he was looking for, but will he continue as the aggressor? Bendinelli's checked. Garrosh could put Ben Nelly in a spot. It's one of those where you river a pair, but you know it's never good. Maybe it's it's so never good, I didn't even notice he rivered That a it pair. was a pair. Yeah. A worthless pair. <laughs> Especially with no backdoor flush or anything, but he does show it down. More so a, a give up than a, a showdown to win. Yeah. And Ben yeah. Nelly's ace jack will take it. Yes? Yeah. You win this hand? No, but the leg, the leg. Ben is saying he would have called anyway. Oh, that's what they I all see, say I after see. it goes check, yeah, I check. Like, I don't. I go, <laughs> no way I was calling. <laughs> I didn't even have a top pair. Like, it's, it's a a second pair, what do you think I'm going to call? Okay. You spend like three times, then you yeah. take. All right, well, that's two levels done. And we minutes. have gotten rid of six minutes. of the ten uh, players we are aiming to lose today. Ten players left, two tables of five. This break's going to end up being about 15 minutes long. Spraggy, we're going to have you back after the break. Love to hear it. Excellent. There's all ten chip counts. No more feature tables, secondary feature table. Two incredibly short stacks. Valentin, Marius, Cristeo, only five big blinds. Kahan, Mockery, only eight big blinds. Yerosh and Margerison are crushing. Plenty of play for all the folks in the middle. Still aiming to lose four more players today. We're taking a 15 minute break, but when we return, more from EPT Barcelona. Back after this.
Lines are up to 50 and 100,000 with a 10,000 ante. Sarwell folds under the gun. Martin Schleich picks up Queens. Martin's been pretty quiet at this table, which is tough to say when you're at the table with Eugene, the quiet storm, Kachalov. He's about to speak up, though, I'm thinking. He's going to raise it to 225. Well, Mestre with King-10 suited in the small blind. Mestre's got suited Broadway cards, but he's out of position and doesn't have a ton of chips. I'm all in. He shoves. Not sure I like this shove at all against a fairly tight early position razor. Gamilla with ace five in the big blind will fold. And Schleich call. makes the call reluctantly. I think this is a serious misstep by Mestra. Maybe he's just tilting after that last encounter with Eugene. At least he's got an overcard. Martin's the favorite, but there's a lot of funky stuff that can happen with King-10 suited. Safe flop for Queens. A king is all he's got to dodge. The turn. Is another three that takes away the heart draw. A king and only a king will eliminate Martin Schleich. It's an ace. So Schleich gets the double up, and Mesher will be left with just 725,000. Martin Schleich looks like he could explode at any second. Maybe with maniacal laughter, maybe with tears. I'm not sure. Action on Tomeo Gamilla. 6-5 off, he'll mark. Saar Wilf has ace three, and he's raising. Even six-handed, I'm not a huge fan of opening early with ace tray. Martin Schleich has ace king. Schleich, who just doubled up with Queens, has woken up with another monster. He will three bet to 575,000. Gets rid of Kachalov on the button and both the blinds. Certainly can't go wrong with a three bet. I mean, unless it somehow goes wrong. Well, Saar Wilf is being stubborn. He will make the call. He'll have to play the flop out of position. Hate the call. Ace Trey plays very poorly. Check. And he checks in the dark. Always a winning strategy. Well, there is an ace on the flop. This could get Saar Wilf into trouble. Martin Schleich elects to check behind. The pot's small. Well, the spades on the turn. Wolf checks a second time. No more free cards. There's the delayed continuation bet from Martin Schleich. 425,000, actually less than the size of his pre-flop three bet. He looks so proud of himself, too. Way to go, Marty. Wolf makes the call. Five on the river, pairs the board. And that's why Ace Trey is pants, because at this point you can't really fold. Well, now Wilf is going to lead at it. 700,000. This bet is quite small and is a fairly obvious blocker bet. I think a lot of the pros are going to value raise so hard here that Sar Wilf would probably go blind. Let's see what Marty McSchleich is going to do. He sure doesn't look happy about this. And that's something that we forget sometimes as we get jaded. This is a lot of money to some of these people. Martin's day job is in customer service. My guess is that this is a lot of money to him. He makes the crying call. Sarwolf shows the ace. Martin shows ace king. Will feels he's been slow rolled. Well, Martin's just very nervous, I think. God bless him. Oh, look at him. I heart him. And the blinds are up to 60 and 120,000. Tomeo Gamilla has ace king. He's got a legit hand for once. We'll have to see if he gets any action with it. He starts the hand with 3.1 million. And he raises it to 255,000. Schleich's got queens. Martin Schleich is definitely very deliberate and a little nervous, I'm guessing. But getting more money in now is definitely the play here. He is counting out a three bet. He re-raises to 675,000. Gets a fold from Kachalov and from Kostic. Ace nine of diamonds for Raul Mestre in the big blind. He'll pass. Looks like Mestre's learned that a Marty Schleich three bet means business. This hand sort of plays itself, but Ace King isn't doing very well against the Schleich three bet range we've seen so far. Gamilla elects to shove. 
my call. And Schleich makes the reluctant call one more time. Camilla's a little worse off than usual since Mestra folded an ace. Rather than being a flip, Schleich is 6-4 to four favorite. Crowd doesn't know what to think. Well, Camilla came into this final table as the chip leader. And now he's on the verge of elimination. Well, there's no ace or king on that flop. Couple of backdoor draws, but that's it. Mary's partner draped in the flag. Leo Margette's watching on nervously as well. Not the only one looking on nervously. The board pairs on the turn. Gamilla still needs an ace or a king. He has five outs. Martin Schleig is one card away from making this crowd very unhappy. It's a nine on the river. Tomeo Gamilla goes out in fifth place. He learned himself 185,000 euros, but he will be bitterly disappointed. He had a hammer lock on the chip lead entering this final table. Now out in disappointing fifth. Eugene Kachilov on the button here with ace 10. The button acting first in three-handed play. He'll raise it to 250,000. Dragon calls more often than a bad one-night stand. And he's not going to change the habit of a lifetime. This is a common mistake when things get short-handed. People adjust their ranges too much, and then they start playing passively. So Schleich makes the call as well. All three players will go to the flop. Can't blame Martin for defending. I guess he was getting like 5-1. to one. On the flop is ace high not a bad flop for eugene especially considering what the hands are check check he makes a continuation bet of four hundred thousand. costage wisely folds schleich will probably stick around sure enough he calls at this point when martin calls eugene knows he's got something Eight of clubs on the turn. Martin picks up the dummy end of a gut shot. He checks a second time. Eugene would do well to continue continuing. He will fire a second time. 800,000. Good barreling by Eugene. That eight likely didn't hurt him, and we already know Martin's got some kind of hand. Also, at this point, Eugene may be keen to the fact that even if Martin's got him pipped, he's probably not going to raise, so better to be the better. Schleich calls. And the river card is a 10. Now, while it gives Kachilov two pairs, Schleich's just rivered a straight. Very lucky river for Martin. It goes check, check. Good check behind by Eugene on a terrible river card. Eugene looks legitimately steamed for once. Can't say I blame him. And Schleich narrows Eugene's chip lead to just a million. Not only is this anyone's title, but this could go on for a long time. It's already almost midnight here in Barcelona, which means all the good parties are just getting started. This guy knows what I'm talking about. Lines are up to 18, 160,000. Kostic has a seven on the button. He's raising to 360. Schleich, three betting with six five. Wow, look at your boy Marty Schleich, three betting life for once. I know that's just how he looks all the time, but Martin Schleich looks so uncomfortable at the table. I don't know that I could ever fold to him ever. He's made it 950,000 total. And with Eugene folding the big blind, Kostic will make the call in position. Seriously, though, with the hands he's three bet so far, I probably muck a seven and my button. Four, six, eight with two diamonds. Schleich actually has the best hand. Both flop a gut shot. Both hold one of the other's blockers. Schleich's the only one with a pair. Wonderful spot for a C bet because you can value bet and semi bluff at the same time. into a pot of two million. He bets 675,000. Again, I don't really think Kostic has any business being in this hand with the kinds of hands Schleich has been showing down. The worst we've seen is ace nine, and he's not even beating that. Maybe he's floating to try to steal this pot later. He does make the call. The turn card is the queen of hearts, which changes nothing. I think Martin may have missed a bet there, but I guess that queen can be a little scary. On the other hand, if he's trying to induce a bluff from Dragon, 
Looks like he might be a genius. Carl Stitch bets just over one and a half million. It's gut check time, Marty McSchleich. Are you chicken? I'm all in. He shoves! And boom goes the dynamite. I don't see how there's any way Dragon can call. Spanier got caught with his hand in the tapas jar. Oh, Carl Stitch will finally fold, arguably two streets too late. No argument here. And look at Martin Schleich go. He's put some distance between himself and the other two players. There's a dominating chip lead now at the final table, playing a stack of 12 million. Eugene in the big blind on this hand. Kostic first to speak on the button. 8-6 off suit. And there's a raise to 500,000. Martin Schleich has pocket nines in the small blind. Very easy three bet. Instead he just flats. And Eugene shoves from the big blind with sevens. Wow, Martin may have trapped Eugene by just calling there. Kostic gets out of the way. And Schleich calls. Pretty inconceivable that someone would flatten that spot with better than two sevens, but that's how Eugene's tournament has been going of late. It looks like he's ready for the torture to be over. Hey, if I'd already won two million this year, I probably wouldn't be sweating it either. He's four to one underdog. But there's a seven in the door. Oh, there's a nine on the flop as well. That is just absolute brutality for Eugene Katsalov. <laughs> Unbelievable. Hope there's something strong in there, buddy. So Eugene Kachlov is drawing to one out. Only the seven of hearts can save him. Otherwise, he can say bye bye to that triple crown for now. It's a deuce on the river. So Eugene Kachlov finishes in third place. Marsh like can hardly believe it. A few German supporters now on the rail. Hoping their boy can seal the deal here in Barcelona. Another big cash for Eugene Kachilov in 2011. Blinds are 125,000 and 250,000. No ante and heads up play on the EPT. Schleich has aces on the button. Not a bad start. Understandably, he raises, makes it 525. Kostic with a big hand, King Jack suited. We've got a bit of a cooler heads up already. Both these guys likely to think he has the best hand, but only one of them knows he does. It's a three bet. It's just over 1.5 million. Why not get some more money in there? 1,550,000 to call. Schleich is reaching for chips. And he is going to four bet. Re-raising to 3.4 million. Are we going to see an all-in on our first hand? I think it should be pretty clear to Kostic that his hand's not ahead. At the very least, he should not flat. When you miss the flop, which you in all likelihood will with any hand, you've only got King High and you're out of position. He can't hear you. He's flattered. <laughs> he is in bad, bad shape. There's already 6.8 million in the middle. It's a low flop. Only one diamond. Kostic only with king high. You may have to check fold this flop. If you're Martin Schleich, why not keep betting for value? Schleich does bet 1.5 million. I see no reason whatsoever for Dragon Kostic to stay in this hand. No pair, no draw, and pretty clear signs that a float ain't going to work. He's counting out chips. He still can't hear you, Joe, and he's called again. He's fired 1.5 million more into the abyss. Pot's nearly 10 million. And the turn brings an ace. Kostic now drawing it dead. He checks again. On in. Schleich shoves. Oh, Martin, that shove is baffling. Kostic gives up the hand. 
There was literally nothing out there to be afraid of, not even a flush draw. <laughs> the crowd seems to think Marty was bluffing there, which actually would be far less baffling. I think if Martin checks there, he gives Dragon the chance to catch up, maybe even take a wild stab at the river. Awesome singing from the Germans. Ace nine now for Schleich. You know he just met those guys tonight. He raises to 525. And Costa shoves with ace seven. Hand plays itself. We know this is a call. I think Martin knows this is a call. But remember, this is life-changing money at stake for Martin Schleich. I call. He's made the call. He he and we're on the verge of crowning a new champion on the European Poker Tour. If Martin Schleich's ace nine holds, he will take down the title. And he will win that first prize of 850,000 euros. Kostic needs a seven for the double up. There is a 16% chance of a split. Queen deuce five on the flop. It's looking good for Schleich. The crowd want it to be over on the turn, but it's the king of clubs. Dragon Kostic is not out yet. He can hit a club for a flush, a five or a deuce will chop it. Is this Martin Schleich's moment of victory? It is. He has taken down the Barcelona leg of season eight of the European Poker Tour. Still no Spanish winner on the EPT. It's Martin Schleich from Germany who will lift the trophy and collect 850,000 euros. Dragan Kostic is the runner up. He'll collect 532,000. Welcome back to day five of the main event coverage here from the European Poker Tour in beautiful Barcelona. This is the penultimate day. Players have played a long, grueling time to get to this point in the tournament where there are 10 players remaining. Of course, you see all 10 players reflected in this chip count. Patrick Yarosh, 136 big lines, top dog so far. Scott Margerison, though not too far behind. A lot of players remaining in the middle with playable stacks, but the two shortest stacks remaining, Mockery and Cristea, they have got a lot of work to do, especially with that big pay jump coming up when we reach nine players and combine to one table. I'm Maria Ho, and I'm joined by the one, the only, very charming, Spraggy. Spraggy, this is the time where you be charming for everybody. There we are, turn it on. <laughs> I'm, I'm back off my break. Time to uh, ramp it up. Hello, everybody, welcome back. While we are uh, digesting our cheese pasta from the break, uh, <laughs> we will talk a little bit about, you know, what these players are going to be playing for. And, of course, everybody knows, biggest EPT main event ever, 2294 entries, 10 players left. First place, 1.7 million euros. That's a lot of money. And second place, becoming a millionaire as well, just over a million for, for the runner up. So it's a, it's a big prize pool right here. I have to apologize, by the way. Right, blinds are at 60,000 and 120,000 with 120k <laughs> big blind ante. Now, now yeah. we're still friends. <laughs> so here is Kyan Mockery. It's he who will have to be getting busy. Has just eight big blinds at this feature table in a five-handed poker game as well. So the blinds are going to come thick and fast for him. Yeah, things definitely have not gone Magri's way today. But he still seems to be in good spirits, you know, really talkative table. Everybody having a good time. I would have a good time if I knew I was guaranteed over 100k euros, you know? Yeah, it, it, it's easy to have a little bit of a smile on your face. Kyan, uh, Kyan and I have a, a history which makes it very tough for me to root for him. <laughs> and he knows why we played... Uh, Played a pot in Monte Carlo, where he shoved King Queen for a lot against my queens, and got there. Oh! And if that wasn't bad enough, he replies to my Twitter every time, pretending that it was I who played the hand of King Queen against his queens. 
and he keeps saying how bad I am for reshoving, and everyone's like, I agree. Oh my gosh. He's such a wind-up merchant, so I like Kyan, he's a nice guy, but there's a, there's a little anti-sweat going on here for me. <laughs> Blind versus blind with Margerison versus Guerrero. King nine five rainbow. Yeah, Guerrero with that gut shot straight draw. Scott Margerison still with the best hand, but no backdoor flush draw. The rainbow board without his suit, he'll be a little bit less happy. Starts with a check. And Guerrero pretty incentivized to bet here. Obviously has the seven high, can improve, <laughs> and benefits from folding out exactly the sort of hand that Scott Margerison has here. Yeah, definitely a bit surprising to see Guerrero check. And now, you know, Margerison, who had the best hand already, but now definitely makes it a little easier to play when you hit that queen. Yeah, and I think from Margerison's perspective, he might be expecting a king to bet the flop a lot of the time. So, queen obviously is going to be the best hand quite frequently. And I think if you're Guerrero and you choose to check back, there might be a consideration to bluff some of these later streaks, but knuckles it back again, off to a river. There's still very strong players in this. Yeah, for sure. More or less only. Yeah, yeah. I think weirdly with the double check back, Guerrero kind of indicating he has some sort of showdown value. So I wouldn't be surprised to see Scott bet his hand, try and target a five or, or even ace high. Better than me, obviously. Huh? Better than me. Probably also but maybe I spin it back. Yeah. I'll do yeah, Mark Jarrison had a lot of things go right today for him and certainly, you know, being able to make hands but trying to extract value when you can is also really oh, important to continuing nothing. to chip up. I want you to overbet, overbet the turn. <laughs> I think that's the most pain I've ever I was seen say. someone fold seven high, <laughs> screeching at the river. Yeah, Guerrero certainly not on the quiet side. Not today, not yesterday. <coughs> But I always wanted to have a boat, though. Huh? I always wanted to have a boat. A boat? Yeah. yeah you it doesn't have yourself. to be a big one or something. Uh -huh. Just a small boat. Yeah, get yourself a boat, man. Yeah. You that's should cool. get yourself that's a cool, boat. That's cool, right? Yeah. Some people in chat Holland asking yeah. how many players <laughs> started <laughs> the ride, day today. Yeah. We started with 16 like players. Today, we ended play. We had a like hard stop yeah, at yeah, 16 boat. yesterday. And so yeah, we have lost cool. six players so far, and we're Thank gonna you. combine when we get down <laughs> to nine, but the official <laughs> final table will be at eight, and the day will end when we reach six players. And just another indication of the payouts there, where the players are talking about buying a boat phase <laughs> of the tournament. Doesn't have to be a big one. Yeah. Doesn't have to be a big one. Sure. But we're in yacht purchasing territory. But, but a used yacht. Yeah, or a, a, a perhaps Maybe. some sort of rowboat or yeah. motorboat dinghies <laughs> powered by some sort of fuel. I mean, you can at least rent a yacht for, for this amount of money. That's for sure. For the day. Still going to be a lovely excursion. Did you get a chance to go out on the catamaran? No, I didn't. There were uh, a wonderful team at Pokestars Travel had organized three catamaran trips for players. But uh, I too didn't go out. I'm a little. I'll be honest with you, Maria. I'm a little bit afraid of the the open sea. Are you? I just. It's it's a lot to sort of when you know you see people jumping off boats and that and going in the like open sea and in the water and that. That's you just, not going to be you. You don't know what's down there, do you? Okay, so you're not afraid oh, of yeah. drowning per se. You're afraid of what lies underneath. What lies beneath? Mm. Maybe a little bit of drowning as well, though. Because <laughs> it's just. Here's the thing. On land, you're safe. We're, we're a land-based species, right? You put us out in the open water, we don't need to be out there. So not even just with perhaps a life vest, it's, it doesn't feel safe to you? It's not something no, that you would do? I think I just imagine something like uh, biting my feet or like just a little nibble on my toes or something like that. That would just freak you out. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Scott Margerison freaks me out as well. Look at it. It's just a tough player. Just three bet and king seven of diamonds on the button. Beautiful little hand for a three bet. Pinto folds the sixes. It was 50-50. Scott just takes the whole lot. 
He's a dangerous player at the feature table. Almost as dangerous as uh, a trip out into the mad. As a, a shark. I mean, I feel like there's got to be some type of bet we can involve you in, Spraggy, that will help you get over this fear of open water. Surely there's an amount of money that will get you out there, well, that will get you scuba diving in no yeah, time. Nice, Stapes yeah. and I are going to Mallorca after this trip for a few days, and I know that he's average, booked average, uh, average, a boat trip. Seven, seven minutes. And I know he's going to be the sort who's jumping off the side. He's like, come on, Sprangy. Oh, 100%. And I'll just be like, eh, I'm okay. Up here. I, would probably have called. I mean, the right good circumstance. Player. Good player. I, I think I could see you in there Who knows? having a good time. I'd like to think that I've made it to the final uh, right 10 because there. Margerison knocked me out of this event. So, you know, some of my chips are in that stack right now. Congratulations, Maria. <laughs> well, well done. I, I didn't <laughs> cash for any amount of money, but I am still there now, in spirit. What if I told you that everybody's chips are still in play? Still in play, but not in Not the guy who knocked you out. Right. Yeah. Okay, not the guy who knocked you right. out. Sure, sure. I'll allow it. And how dare you take this away from Sorry. me? Sorry. <laughs> we'll take the, the small wins here in Barcelona. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, at least you it's finish in the money, money Spraggy. Like, some of us <laughs> were clinging on to any <laughs> semblance of a profitable <laughs> trip. Yeah, and was and uh, so that's, that's what I'm going to go with. But that was banished, you know? That was for seven years. Each ah, player gives you, like... Uh, Frustrating uh, times for uh, high yeah, mockery yeah. here. Seven deuce off in the big blind when you need it the least. Heading out to the only other table in play, considering there's 10 players left. Looks like there's an all-in for Cristea, ace five of clubs. And he's so short that Ben Dinelli is pretty much priced in from the big blind with the 8-3. Live cards, though, of course. Cristea short and 65% to double up. Kyan Mockery will have one eye on this pot for the for the ladder to nine. Yeah, and you know it's it's a problem obviously when you lose fold equity and you get so short that you're gonna pretty much have any two calling. And this is the spot Christe has found himself in. Good start. Trying to fade the eight or the three with two cards to come. Mm. Deuce of clubs on the turn. Still safe for the all-in player, Cristea. And the seven of diamonds means a double up. And most players are not going to be happy about that because of the pay jump, but survival for now. For Cristea. It's so sick if you turn it over like Ace. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so Cristea moving over the 1 million chip mark there, I think, and Kyan Mockery on the feature table with 760,000. So he's shortest stack in the tournament and next for the elimination. No, no, it's correct. No, no, it's correct. I moved it for you. We'll continue to follow the action here on the secondary <coughs> feature. You're not, you're not, uh, Jaros, you're not. Okay. Yarosh really in a commanding position, chip leader at the table, but also all, all the remaining go? players. So when they There's do combine the to nine, if he's able to Is maintain the, the chip lead, will be in a really good spot to put a lot of ICM pressure on all of the other yeah, players. Yeah, no, 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 no. Sorry. <laughs> See, I told you, this card. But I only have... Oh, this oh, here. Ah, yeah, that's what I found. Like, how can I... This is qualifier, who qualified for 55 euros, it's Braggy. Make the game. It's not bad, is it? Not bad. That's a 55 euro well spent. <clears throat> I didn't fire any satellites uh, for this trip. I did fire some for UK IPT Nottingham, where Scott, Ma Scott Margerison won the high roller recently, just a few weeks ago. So he's on a on a pretty nice streak at the moment. 
Yarosh with the 10-9 suited under the gun makes it 240 to go. And Yaros, of course, just loving life right now. 16 million is an outrageous amount of chips at this stage. Stay with the Queen Nine of Diamonds, kind of an awkward spot off the short stack. It's kind of a nice looking hand, but do you really want to be all in? You know Yarosh is opening wide. Maybe we can just take a flop here for 120,000. Yeah, I really like the option of just trying to see three, but uh, just going to make the fold. 500. Bit more. I'm on the big blind now? Yes. Thank you very much. What happened here? Something important? Something important happened? I don't know. Of course, you see all the players looking back to see what's going on on the feature. They know that all they need to do is lose one more player, and then they will combine, and of course, keeping an eye for the pay jump. Knowing Mockery short, looks like Mockery is all in here. King three of diamonds on the button. Not going to find a much better spot to get it in the chips with that stack size. Yeah, and obviously has a similar stack. So we just saw a call off from 8-3 off. So, oh, Scott Margerison with pocket five, mm -hmm. so in the big blind. Easiest call he'll ever make. Yeah, and so, I'll fuck, fuck them I. you know, Mockery leaving that extra 60K behind just in case something happens over on the secondary feature. But those chips will end up going in the middle shortly. Pre-time pre banking. All of those in the middle. What's the total? You know, when Makri started the day, this certainly was not a position that he probably saw himself in. But unfortunately, just one big bluff against Margerison actually didn't get through when Margerison had aces. Made a good call on a pretty scary board where Mockery had some stray blockers. And now he might be eliminated at the hands of Scott Margerison if he can't find a king or a couple of flusher straight cards to help him out here. Yeah, big danger for Kyan. Not a nice spot to bust, 10th place. But he has some hope. And he also has Margerison wishing him luck, which he clearly doesn't mean, so. Never sincere. Never. Enjoy the run out. Why so, do people like even that. say that? I'm done with good lucks. I'm all about goodbyes. <laughs> okay, but really, though, Spraggy, you said you were kind of anti sweating mockery, so yes. you don't wish him luck either. How about that, then? <laughs> Ace, king, deuce, king on the flop for Mockery. Not over yet. He can breathe a little easier. Two cards to come, two outs for Margerison. Classic Mockery gets it in with a king high and gets there. I know that feeling. <laughs> Turns a jack of diamonds. Oh, oh you have diamonds. Oh, huh. Yeah, Mockery was kind of hoping he was only down to one out, but uh, no, still two outs for the fives. Four of clubs on the river, safe, and a nice double for Mockery. Really needed it. Found the three outer straight away on the flop. I mean, I'm honest. Everyone Scott, by the way. Scott, thanks, by the way. Oh, for the time? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, of course. Oh, I thought he was needling him. Thanks for like, the thanks double for the, up. Yeah, yeah thanks, for, thanks double for the double up. Or yeah. thanks for wishing me luck. Why? So that's such a huge pop Why for Kyan. Oh, yeah. Nothing personal. Oh. I like it. I like yes, if I win this hand, I'm sorry to say it, guys. If I win this hand, you're all fucked. I'm, just I'm sorry. <laughs> I love this guy. I love this guy. Yeah. Mokri. I mean, everyone, will, everyone wants to eat people. <laughs> Watching to burst, yeah. Funny. I want to you. I want you to bust and win on the side event. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, seriously, guys. Whatever happens today, you all check in. Yeah. All of you. I mean, all of you.
You can go to your Florence or Morens or something. <laughs> check in by the beach. <laughs> by the beach. <laughs> beach. Hey, Jimmy, first, first ride home, yeah? Flight. I mean, no way. I can see how uh, making a for, uh, final 10 of <laughs> the biggest EPT in history is a real I'm bonding experience for these players. You know, they're all going to really? be besties. <laughs> they're going to go on trips to Mallorca after this. Maybe they could join us. Um, it is true, though. I remember playing a final table, first one I ever played. And I still, whenever I see the people who I shared that with at events or live stops, kind of a little nod, a little, I was there, we were there. Obviously, for people who make more than one final table in their life, it might be a little bit different. But for <laughs> but for peasants like me, who are you know, dining out on one final table I made 10 years ago, they probably don't feel the same bond. I'm like, you remember? And they're like, what? You KPT Galway, 1K main event. And I'm like, ah, I don't. Doesn't register. We should go look at 1.86? 1.7? You, no. you got like yep. 800 before? No. I had 700, I got the hand very short. So Kyan, as he says, they're still short 14 big blinds, but crucially, Maria, a, a, a bit of breathing room between the other short stacks on the on the second feature table here um, for that all-important pay jump. So a massive double up, more than just the chips. Those chips are worth a lot of money at this stage. You need to check someone. You go in You just check someone and go in. folding the big blind with an ASX. Oh, wow, really? Yeah, we can start showing, guys. Against Costas, oh, under the gun, over. Yeah. 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 We, 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 we can... No, 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 no. You're... No, I was kidding, yeah. sorry, sorry. We can just tell yeah, each other. Not, hands. Oh, no. God, do that. I, I, I turn it out. Bro. He, he wants to turn something. Is that okay? Yeah, I, I won't do that anymore, yeah. Okay. I'm back. I, oh. I'm back. <laughs> hey! Yeah, sorry, uh, How are you? I mean, it's sorry, not. Sorry, yeah. sorry. I apologize. No, I... Yeah, merci. I apologize. I left it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, I think you want to turn, right. so I was kidding. Oh, if, if we can tell each other the hands. He get a walk? No, he... Okay? I don't no, mind. You're right. Is it okay for you? But he wants to turn. He does walk? Okay. I, I do like that, but very slowly. And he <laughs> <laughs> looks like... If we want to know. That was we Manesh coming up to the feature table. No, 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 no. no. Made yeah. a deep yeah. run yeah. himself. Yeah, actually, Jimmy, I forgot the angle shoot there, yeah. Man, oh, I, no, got, no, I got he, a screen. He had a screen. Hey, I got a screen. He did, he he did, did. have it. Oh, okay. I got a screen. Hey, oh. apologize to me, man. Oh, I, <laughs> I thought they had security oh, no, all around this. They just, they just let apologize. anybody up there. Yeah, I miss her. I kiss you. I kiss yeah. you. Oh, okay. I kiss you. It's actually his fault. Security, security very <laughs> lax around here. We got stapes wandering into the booth. <laughs> How could they not protect the trophy? <laughs> Where's my hug? <hawk? laughs> it's coming. It's coming. I apologize, Jimmy. <laughs> You develop me, maybe I'll uh, give you uh, a <laughs> I already doubled you up. <laughs> it's terrible. Like, you double up someone and you but go... Uh, one question. Is the final table an eight or nine? Nine. Oh. So, so yeah, everyone wants... I want to be in the picture, man. I, I gotta make you guys... Do we do a picture at nine? I don't... I'm not really sure. Somebody might need to tell him that uh, he really wants to make the final table of eight because... That will officially be the final GTO, table, hey, and GTO. there will be a picture for that. But for nine, the unofficial, I don't know about that one. Super pro GTO. Decent payday, but no feature table. Final yeah, table photograph, what's the you point? Should, you should have right, seen right? table yesterday. Was it? Yeah, I mean, yeah, you really just yeah, want to finish 10th oh, or, like, or make it to 8th. Like the, the photo bubble. Nothing else. The biggest, the biggest bubble in poker. Hey, when you bluffed me with profile, it was very funny, yeah? <laughs> now you oh, I didn't say anything, yeah. And now it's good for you. Look at me. Like that, yeah. Look at my chips. Yeah, it's got to be tough to be in Pinto spot when you have Mar Jarrison to your direct left and you guys are shorthanded. And there's so much ICM pressure because you will need to tighten up your opens. Yeah, very uncomfortable seat. And uh, a little bit of uncomfortability here for Guerrero as well because he's opening into Cayenne's big blind. Cayenne, of course, starts the hand with about 12 or 14 bigs. So we do see him raise to 250,000. Some players here are actually going to take a slightly larger size so that Mokri... Uh, Finds it a little tougher uh, defending things like 6-7 or 8-5 suited or, or, you know, these, like, easy calls for a min-raise. Um, and when you're short, you want to take a lot of calls um, with these sorts of hands because it's easier to realize your equity when you, you're short stacked. But we do see Guerrero just go for the 
just slightly greater than min. It does give Kayan a good price, but uh, Jack for offsuit is just about as bad as it gets and lets All it right. go. This is my round. <laughs> but certainly something to consider for Guerrero as to how I he's going to try and steal that I, blind, I what price like he wants to yeah. offer yeah. Kayan's short stack. It's because Jack's hat was on the floor. Oh. Jack's hat's on my chair. Oh, oh shit. Tell my friends to push it down. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe your coins were not even. Your chips were not even. I'm joking. Yeah. I was due one, Scott. Give me one, bro. Yeah, I know. Don't, don't be like that. Now, now you're just being. <laughs> yeah, now you're just a bad person. <coughs> Sorry. You don't want to be that guy. You can see, you know, more players and more <laughs> friends start to show up on the rail. Okay. This Seriously. definitely being a pretty change. crucial I know, I know, uh, moment <laughs> in the day. Again, we stop at six uh, players, but they will combine one to one table four. with one more elimination. Thank you. 1.460, yes. What would you consider the stage to be at where you're, like, actually wanting your friends to show up? Is this a little too early, Spraggy? Or, or because you pretty much never make final tables. It's like, you need all the fanfare you could get. Yeah. Well, I was a little shocked. I was day three and, you know, there was, there was nobody even out in the outer tables. Um, I don't <laughs> know. I, I, I think it depends on, I think some players probably don't want a rail at all, but um, obviously very difficult to tell loved ones and friends, hey, uh, like, you know, stay away. Um, but now, as you said, this is kind of the time where it matters the most. These are very crucial hands that are being played. Obviously the natural thing to do is to rail the final table. Um, should should the players get there, but uh, it's a, it is a lovely rail. It's a nice set, and so there's a lot of space. There's a lot of distance from the the table as well. So I, I'd be quite happy having a rail on the final table if if a boy could dream. <laughs> you see Mockery shoving over Costas open. Mockery ahead of the king queen. And, and, you know, with that stack, yeah. still has a bit of fold equity no. to hands oh, you want, that, you, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. are good enough to raise with, but will fold to that jam, Jack-10 being one of them. I don't think I've oh, ever I don't you show between railed each a friend yeah. on a final table. You show the cards between each other? Uh, I'm not sure that in Jack's. Okay, okay, okay. Really? No, Maybe that speaks volumes to <laughs> either me being a bad friend or my friends okay, being yeah, bad yeah, at yeah, poker yeah, or indeed yeah. me having no friends. <laughs> Okay. You don't no, I mean, yeah, we all know that you have uh, friends, Spraggy, but it just kind of sounds like it, it's not that important to you when uh, they make, you know, momentous occasions and life-changing money <laughs> is on the line that, you know, you just don't feel the need to be there. I'm also friends with people like Joe Stapleton. <laughs> so Joe Stapleton and Final Tables, not a common mix. I learned from you, buddy. And when Joe does make a final table, it's like... You would have to fly at least 12 hours to get there. It's, you know, he doesn't play a lot in Europe. He plays a lot in the States. You would have to fly somewhere than be in the car for six hours yeah. to get to some of these stops. Some of the stops that he goes to. But, I mean, also recently he was playing a, like a 40-pound tournament at Grosvenor, Manchester or, so, or something oh, along those lines. Oh, you couldn't be lines. bothered to show up to um, that one? <laughs> well, shockingly, no, Maria. I'm not going to rail Joe playing first place for 150 pounds in a Kit Kat. I don't know. He ca he called you one of his best friends, Braggy. I, I I feel like that'll cut pretty deep. Guerrero with the raise now. Mockery moves out of the way. Pinto, you've got to imagine doing similar small blind. And I believe that is a Scott Margerison big blind. There he is. And there he is with the A7 suited. Nice hand to defend with. You know, five-handed, certainly, you're going to be ahead of the opener's range. It's a fair bit of time with the A7 as well. Or, you know, just flop the world and... Easy game. So far, so good. And Guerrero will not like this texture versus the big blind. Versus anybody with the ace-queen. No spades in his hand. Just wonder whether Scott might Within consider walls, if he gets no. any leads on a board like this. And indeed, it looks Next like stick. we do get some leads. And this is going to be a product of the, this texture being better for hands that call in the big blind um, than the opening range of Guerrero. Obviously, Margerson's going to have 
Lots of straights. That's a 4 5 offsuit that his opponent isn't. It's a 9 5 suited that his opponent isn't. So he does get to implement a lead into his strategy. And a 7 suited, hand with lots of equity, chooses to lead it and takes it down. Yeah, Guerrero not even going to come along with the two overs with no spade. Just doesn't feel like he's going to get to showdown easily or cheaply with that board. And crucially on this eight high board as well, it's about how Guerrero's offsuit combos that open are going to interact with it. And he probably starts at the tens rather than the nines. So uh, we probably get a few leads on the eight highs more than the nine highs, just as an additional nerdy <laughs> fact. <laughs> We love it. We want people to nerd out here. Cristea all in for 450,000 with the King seven up against Yarosh's ace six of clubs. Yeah. King Jack four. So Cristea pairs the king. Thank you. Those kings are hot for our short Bad stacks. Bad news, guys. <laughs> Bad news. Yarosh. Mockery now, Christea. Yeah, Yarosh looking for three of the aces oh, left. No. Oh, right away on the turn. That's brutal. <laughs> Still one card to come for Christea. Yeah, three outs left. And it doesn't come on the river. And that means Christea, our qualifier, is going to be our 10th place finisher, but a heck of a run finishing and cashing for over 117,000 euros from 55 euros. Not a bad payday. Yeah, an incredible return on his investment, but a rough final hand. You'd almost rather just lose straight away. That little bit of false hope with the king on the flop. And Cristea out for 117,140 euro. And that means that the players will be combining from two tables down to one. And we're going to get to see if they do get a photo in at, at the nine, unofficial. I hope so. <laughs> It'll be good to know for future reference, you know, for you. For my eventual run in 2035. No, you're on an EPT main cashing streak, so London's next, right? You'll probably make the money there. And Fingers crossed, London coming up, yep. <laughs> Excited to be back in uh, in the UK for an EPT. It's been a long time. What is? Yeah, and as they combine, we will take a look at the remaining nine players and their chip counts. Patrick Yarosh eliminating our 10th place finisher. Still the chip leader with 137 big lines. Scott Margerison still holding on to that second spot. Then we've got Pinta, Costa, Guerrero, Fischl, Kowalski, and Ben Dinelli, all with extremely playable stacks above 40 bigs. Kahan Mockery still on the short stack. And we will take a short break. We'll watch James and Joe catch up a little bit. I started to think, you know, what kind of person would want to live in limbo? You know, a person who doesn't really, hasn't committed to living yet and hasn't committed to dying yet and is looking for a way to sort of exist in between. Why cards? Why blackjack? Why poker? Why gambling? Because what attracted you to that particular world? Because it's just numbers. You know, the person who sits in front of a slot machine for eight to ten hours a day is not that different from the person who sits at a card table. Obviously, the person at a card table is much more proactive. With slots today, you don't even have to pull the lever anymore. Yeah. And you don't even have to collect your coins anymore. Yeah. So you just sit there and watch this these these colors flash by. Um, whereas with blackjack and poker, you actually have to play. But when it comes down to it, it's still a number system. And if you're really playing by the numbers, uh, like a top poker player, every so often, there'll come a moment where 
your intuition and your skill come to play, but mostly it's your number crunching ability that's coming to play. You know, you're going through the odds. His percentage of getting what he wants is such, I suspect, my percentage is such. Uh, do I stay or do I go? And um, and uh, so that, that aspect of it, the sort of numbness, the re repetition, the hour after hour sort of sedation is what drew me to, uh, I was saying, you know, what kind of pe person enjoys this sort of level of sedation? You know, they're not getting paid for it. Uh, I used to go to the, uh, the club rooms down in Gardena, and it was always the same crowd. And, you know, they would just spend hour after hour there, and it was a kind of warm sort of passing of the time uh and uh occasionally somebody would make money but you didn't really feel that it was uh, they were all there to go home rich they're all there to be there and so uh, that's what sort of intrigued me and i started to think you know what kind of person would want to live in limbo you know, a person who doesn't really, hasn't committed to living yet and hasn't committed to dying yet and is looking for a way to sort of exist in between. And uh, and so that's why I started coming up with this idea of a man who has so much guilt beyond which society demands of him. He's paid his debt to society, but he hasn't paid his debt to himself. So he's just waiting, and uh, he's waiting around to see whether this is going to be life or death. And it's like the minister in First Reformed, the first thing he writes is, I've decided to keep a journal for a year. Well, what's going to happen to him after a year? Well, he's going to have to make a decision whether he wants to live or die. Um, and it's the same thing with this character. Uh, he's spending this time in these wrapped rooms waiting for something to happen that will give his life a direction. And uh, in this case, it's a, a young man who walks up to him and gives him a sense of direction, a sense that if I can turn this kid around, maybe I can forgive myself. Nikita Bajakowski. Congratulations. You are the EPT Barcelona Super High Roller Champion. This movie probably would not have existed if it were not for Joe Stapleton. And I know that sounds, I can say that with. Clip that. <laughs> risen up the ranks and having met Joe Stapleton. What a perfect collision of events in the universe that you should get involved in the production of a movie that features the game of poker, knowing someone who works <laughs> in the poker industry and gifting Joe with this amazing opportunity. Oh, I, it's amazing. No, I actually, this this movie probably would not have existed if we're, we're not for Joe Stapleton. And I know that sounds, I can say that with... Clip that. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. No, because I originally met Paul on a different movie, um, and he's spoken about it publicly, called Nine Men From Now, which is almost like a modern Sicario Western. I was totally obsessed um, but it was a lot bigger, it was twice the budget. And Paul was so smart. He knew that that movie was taking forever to try to set up. And 
in the meantime, wrote a smaller film that just, you know, budget wise worked and it was more contained. And he just, he gave it to Oscar. Um, and just while this other movie was kind of like, it was very clear it was not happening. Um, Paul's manager was kind of like, oh, like, have you read this other project that Paul wants to do? And it, you know, nobody's a touched but Oscar Isaac and I was like yes what, what's it about and he's like well it's kind of in the poker world and I'm like oh well I am <laughs> tied to that in a way and I've I've been around that world because of one of my closest friends and I actually read the script in Vegas um like the summer of 2019 and actually Joe was my business partner I immediately gave it to and I was like this is actually better I like this film better and then I immediately sent it to Joe and I was like uh, you're never going to believe this. I'm dying to work with Paul Schrader and, you know, here's this new script and, you know, it, the poker is heavily featured. And am I right in thinking, Joe, the sequence of events was that having read the script, you felt compelled to write a series of notes, not realizing that Lauren was then going to send those notes uncensored, unfiltered to the desk of Paul Schrader. Yes, and I've I've told that story many times. Um, basically, that I just thought I was writing them up as a favor to Lauren that one day she could look really cool on set and be like, "Hey, don't this is how they really do it." And she just hit forward to Paul, and all these kind of harsh notes got sent him. But what I've never got actually asked Lauren is, Lauren, did you take a calculated risk in sending that, or did you just be like, "Ah, I'm like this is the best way to deliver it to him." Like, what was your thought process? in in doing it that way well you know it's i knew that kind of what is special about paul's movies is you know there's they're very similar storylines but they're set in different worlds and you know there was enough poker in there where i knew that if we got it wrong and that would just be so embarrassing paul needed to hear i mean paul's a genius and oh can i say Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and he, you know, what he was, what he kind of knew on his own was impressive. Um, but also, I I feel like it would be a major disservice to the film if I went through and, and made this and did not step in. And I just was incredibly lucky that I had Joe, uh, you know, that I trusted Joe. But I, you know, I don't think he... I didn't really care at a certain point what Paul was going to say because he needed to see that, you know, there was a, another layer of vetting that we needed to do with all the poker content. And obviously, I, you know, knowing Joe so well, I never had any doubts about putting Joe on the phone in the room with Paul. And what I was like, the most pleasant thing was that Paul ended up I, Paul likes Joe more than he likes me, more than he likes most people. <laughs> Paul, <laughs> he like ended up because they were like had their own little bromance. And I was like, this is awesome. You know, there were times on set if Joe disappeared for a moment, he would like instantly, you know, it would be in the thing like poker Joe, poker Joe, because there were multiple Joes on set. We need poker Joe. I mean, so it was like the coolest thing was to see Paul leaning on Joe and, and knowing that that was, a, you know, the most invaluable resource. Poker Joe back in the booth. Hello, my babies, and welcome once again to EPT 2022 from the beautiful city of Barcelona on the water. Live coverage of day five, the penultimate day of the main event continues from Casino Barcelona. We've just had our redraw, the final redraw of the tournament, the final nine players at the last table of the event. EPT final tables officially begin at eight because it's an eight-handed tournament. Joe Stapleton, Benjamin Sprague. Hello. You all right? And Maria Ho. Hi, guys. <laughs> <laughs> We're with y'all until we get down to the final six players. I did say if we got to the final six players that uh, things would maybe continue on a little bit more. I think at this point we've gone long enough if we get to six we're probably going to call it quits for the day can't say for sure though it'll be a game time decision because we just don't know when that's going to happen those are the players in seat order Thank you. 
everyone heartily congratulating themselves, hanging out. Time to fill in that rail. Gahan, one of the shorter stacks at this point, just 16 big blinds for that fella. Costa in his friendly rail, we'll call it. Kowalski also representing Brazil. People in good spirits already. We are finally there. We've been touting these payouts all week, showing the top 10. The, the 10th place payout's already been made. This is what the remaining players are guaranteed. These players are each gonna go home with one of these, barring a deal, which is entirely possible, given the top heavy nature of this prize pool. Tomorrow, we will be handing someone, barring a deal, a million dollars and a million euros. Okay, not both of those things. A million dollars, AKA a million euros for second place. 1.7 million euros for first place. Sprague, I heard you talking about uh, the one and only live final table you've made. Yes, sir. BKPT. What was uh, the top prize there? 250,000 euros or yeah. seventh-ish place money. That just gives you some perspective of uh, how outrageously large this EPT main event is, Joe. Obviously pretty, the biggest ever, but these numbers are mind-blowing. Pretty sick. Absolutely mind-blowing numbers. The biggest EPT main event of all time. 2,294 players whittled down whittled down to the final nine. Thank you. This is how we got down to nine. Bad news, guys. Bad news. Bad news. Valentin Cristea all in with king seven. No. Patrick Yarosh with a six. Cristea hit a king on the flop. But that ace on the turn sent him home in 10th place. Year of Romania made it, bro. continues. That was good for about 117,000 euros. Disappointing it. for Cristea, but jumping for joy for the other nine players. <laughs> Plenty of commotion still happening. Yeah, I would say, Joe, looking at these final nine, I haven't really seen Paul Fischel too much. You know, he hasn't really been heavily featured in the days leading up to this. And so I have very little to go on in terms of, you know, his path to this final nine and how he plays. I mean, we've seen a lot of pretty much everybody else that's left. And we all know that uh, not only are they a pretty talkative bunch, but they definitely know what they're doing at the poker table. Paul mentioned offhandedly at one of the secondary feature table hands that he was running hot today. Seemed to be running pretty good in his all-in situations. You gotta run hot to get to this point. Everyone here is running significantly higher than expectation. That's obviously not to say that they're not playing well and crushing, but you've got to be winning your all-ins if you want to see at this final nine. Oh, this is a very bad seat. You're fucked. Really? Yeah. You were here. I, I, I was there. No, better. Okay, Han. Shortest stack at the yeah, table. Jimmy Guerrero in black. <laughs> Patrick Yarosh in white. Chip leader, 137 big blinds. Maybe you play bad? Uh, yeah, no, I'm joking. Also, I'm joking. also. <laughs> I'm not Scott Margerison. Okay, you're not in a lucky seat either. Giuliano <laughs> Bendinelli. <laughs> because you, you're a, yeah. uh, okay, oh, okay, man. Michael Pinto <laughs> in the blue shirt. You're all fucked anyway. <laughs> and we recently discussing Paul Fischel. Would you say that's an orange shirt or a peach shirt? Peach for me. Definitely peach. peach. Okay, great. Okay, but small samba. We wow, I, you guys you took my side over Jen Shahadi about that? something. <laughs> I'll write this in my journal. Oh, shit. Yeah, ooh. You started doing that. I have no idea. You're all fucked now. And the trophy. 
which probably doesn't mean quite as much as 1.7 million euros, but not insignificant. Not insignificant. Not insignificant at all, Joe. EPT Barcelona main event, one of the most prestigious tournaments in the world, probably. And of course, arguably the pinnacle of the European poker tour. Poker Pap says salmon shirt. Salmon, I can go for salmon. Ooh. What do you? I think salmon is probably better than peach. Yeah. Yes or no? Uh -oh. Not ready to commit that okay. far just yet. No. Personally, I can't speak for Maria, nor would I, you know, want to put words in your mouth. But uh, salmon, I like it. Peach, I'm still there at the moment. It's one time I went on a date with uh, someone who was. Yes. I won't say what she was, but uh, we were. We, the conversation ran so dry that we started discussing our favorite nuts. He said that you are nice. Right. And she was like, I like walnuts. It's the pea for me. I like the peanuts, and she goes, uh, I also like almonds. And you said, I was like, excuse, excuse me? me? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Excuse me? Excuse me? And she said, you know, almonds. And I'm like, what do you mean? She goes, you well. said, no, I don't know. And she Perhaps goes, well, you, could... well, you pronounce salmon, S-A-L-M-O-N, is salmon. So isn't it almonds? <laughs> and she, she was not. Stop. She was not being funny. And she was not being funny. that is when you were like, check, please. Uh, no, I had to take a bunch of pictures of her at dinner with the food <laughs> that I was paying for, and then and, uh, I ordered the check. Right Mockery opening from the cutoff. Ace eight off. It's amazing how I always hear about you buying other people's dinner, but not, <laughs> never, never mind. Never that's us. Not, never us. I don't. I can, I can go I for dinner with you and talk happening. about nuts if you like. Spraggy. You buy me a meal. You're going to get a dinner for sure in the next week. I wouldn't believe him. He told me this months ago. He told me the same thing. I'm going to be in the same resort. It's probably all inclusive, though, so maybe not. Maybe I won't be buying you dinner. That was his. That was his layup, <laughs> in the real. Right. I'll buy you dinner every night in Mallorca, at the all-inclusive resort. By the way, my girlfriend booked us uh, like a catamaran for the day. The four of us, king high flop. Everybody misses, and I, I sent Spraggy like the total price of it. Ever since, all he's done is moan. Well, well we I also, also don't like the water. Yes, yeah, Spraggy and I, and I talked about it, and he's not going to pay to do something that he's deathly afraid of. Why would anybody ever do that? Yeah, it's like... Why it's, would anyone be happy about that? Could I pay 500 euro to put my hand in, like, a basket of snakes or what? <laughs> like, what's, what's next for you, you sicko? <laughs> oh, fantastic. Fantastic. Mockery continuing out of a pretty short stack. Think, guys, cool to six? Just let him have it. He's fought hard to be here. You don't have to fight every single pot you can just you can let this one go hey all right even with the gut shot there's some a uh, little bit of folding there at the bottom end i think with the unders to the board and mockery much needed this guy on uh, youtube who wrote my girlfriend yeah right i'm banning you not because i'm a fan of just because it's, it's not a very clever joke I mean, Lack of wit. You bad. Thomas Kalina asks, where is Yarosh at the table? Thank you for your question. Um, ju when you say that you're banned, yeah. is that gentleman in a timeout? Nope. Or forever? Forever banned. See, I thought it'd be like Willy Wonka. You know when Willy Wonka, when he flushes, you think the, the, kids die? He flushes the kids down yeah. the thing, and then he's like, ah, that'd be all right. But the people that get banned here are not. They're, that's forever banishment? Yeah, it's mostly forever. Fair. You know, there's no middle ground with Stapes. It's just... All or nothing. <laughs> exactly. The Joe Stapleton story. I'm trying to um, shape the community. I see it, though. Yeah. Yeah. Tough w love. With an axe. Yeah, yeah. Rather than a sandpaper. I'm, I think it was more for like a King Joffrey. You just don't even know. Even if I laugh, I might be like off with your head. And it's very dependent on your mood. Cur oh, very, when I've eaten last yeah. is a yeah. huge factor. Yes, some of us have learned that the hard way. Luckily, by the looks of me, I've almost always eaten recently. You look good. <laughs> Thank you, buddy. Yeah, you I still mean owe me for that catamaran, though, whether you go or not. <laughs> Stapes, you don't wear white if you don't think you look good. Come on. White is not a flattering co color for most. It takes a lot of confidence for a man to wear white. Okay. You too, Scrags. I'm wearing white today, Maria. Yeah. Both is that, is that a good sign? Oh, for both of you Maria's guys. Maria's wearing horizontal stripes. 
Bendinelli raising out of the gun, pocket tens. Margerison defending, full set mining from the big blind. And a set for no one, but Bendinelli has to like this flop a little bit with the Everybody over pair. Yeah, and of course Margerison is going to have some pretty reasonable connections to this board defending the big blind. Very easy uh, to have some straight draws or flush draws or pairs, pairs with either or of those. The threes is a little bit miserable. Bendinelli, of course, really happy with his tens and I think will be looking to invest, of course. His hand does benefit from protection on the flop as well. Wow, checks back here on the nine high board. Yeah, that feels like a little bit of a conservative play, perhaps just being mindful of ICM and knowing Margerison on the big stack could put him in a lot of tough spots. Just want to have pot control with a really great hand that can show down, but... Yeah, I think I'd, I personally think I'd be more likely to check back aces and kings um, because they require less protection if I, if I wanted to have some checks. But I'm not sure. It's also... Uh, ooh. Sometimes it works the other way depending on stack depth, but this is a, an intriguing river. Yeah, sure is. Set for Bendinelli, which is by far the best hand, but not really a board where you wanted to make a set. No, I think, um, you know, Bendinelli will be happy that his hand is best the majority of the time. Uh, and this card, of course, does bring in that 7x at the bottom and queen x at the top uh, for the straight. Margerison choosing not to turn his threes into a bluff. And that's probably a green light for Bendinelli to go for some sort of value bet. But as Maria alluded to, value betting in thin spots against someone who has all of the chips at a final table, it can be a little bit scary. Because getting check raised at this river by someone who might be capable of putting you in some rough predicaments, you know, that's not ideal. But I think the hand is just too strong. We do see Bendinelli go for the bet here at the river. Just less than half pop. And we will absolutely never see a call here, right? We're not going to see a call, I don't think. Um, judging by Scott Majerson's body language, we're just going to see a not fall. See and, a and there it is. Either. <laughs> But yeah, certainly a hand there, and one of our first major hands at the final table that has definitely been influenced by the fact that we're playing on a final table T -team, T -team. Um, with the payouts that we saw at the top yeah. there, Joe. So you're going to see a lot of deviation from regular strategy that you might have seen over the last three right. or four days. Right. Yeah, there's only been a few times that ICM has been invoked <laughs> over the last 24 hours or so. It started a little bit yesterday, but now we are in... We are Elbow deep in ICM bill. This is where it's had its fiercest in the in the nine-handed uh, yeah. setup that we have here. When there's a, a pay jump oh, for every it? elimination. Yeah. Insta stories, selfies. They had a good time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No stress. A little bit dead. Just a little. Or maybe, dead. maybe your girlfriend is a little bit stressed. Victoria Savina maybe, asks, maybe how can you check two times? So uh, probably yeah, by yeah, checking. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> on the flop, <laughs> another card. Yeah, then another card comes and then you check, check again. Check again. Yeah, so that's how you check two times. Thank you for your question. Why? You know he's that type of a person. This is how he is. Jimmy is a great guy. Costa. Very nice drink. Jack ten of diamonds. Without my cards. <laughs> I do sweat. There, there I do happened sweat. situation. Like three guys, one, one is on the time bank, and they're just talking and looking somewhere else. Don't no, no, care no. that they have a card. Yeah, the Classic <laughs> internet comment here. All of you are losers. <laughs> <laughs> on three tables, I saw guys. Thank you for your comment. You're banned. Kowalski with the two sevens. James reminded me that we did a fun interview with Kowalski after... He won a W Coop title in 2020, and James was giving him a hard time for having a dog guitar instead of a cat guitar. And the dude was like, you mean this dog? And there it was. And just lifted up the little pooch onto screen. And it even melted James's ice-cold heart. Oh. Yeah. Because an interesting hand brewing here. Jack-10 suited for Costa with a raise. Kowalski, Kowalski with the dog guitar calls the button. And Scott Margerison, another very accomplished online player and live player with Jack Ten suited in the small blind and crucially all of the chips covers both of his opponents. 
He's coming in for a call as well, which does offer the big blind a very good price. <coughs> Not sure how we feel about this ace five offsuit though. Ooh, yeah, store brand sourdough. Woof. Artisanal or nothing. I feel like A6 offsuit I'm throwing away definitely. It's just yeah. not really the sort of hand you want to go four ways with, especially at a final table. Very easily dominated. Hard suited, though, right? Maybe? Suited, we're in, I think. Yeah, yeah. suited, you've got to be in. Artisanal. Very in. Important. Store brand. Out. Seven, nine, ten, or ten, wow. nine, seven, as good commentators would call it. Top pair for both Margerison and Costa. A set of sevens for Kowalski. I mean, does it get much better than this? I mean, it's a it's a huge board and a very very interesting dynamic of top pair with a straight draw against the set. Three players, three stacks. Some greater than the others. Some looking to hang on. Some looking to apply pressure. Kowalski, of course. Pretty delighted with the flop and has the button. He's in position. Will be last to act as he is now. Yeah, considering you're up against two other opponents, and you definitely feel like at least one of them will have connected in a meaningful way to this board. You definitely want to size in a way where you can go three streets and get all the chips in on the river with a good run out. I do want to remind people that uh, Barcelona is the birthplace of the sevens meme. Andre Letal calling for the seven. Christian Ruth. Uh, the seven so is coming with the other seven. Last year's the year of the six. And we, we go to the dinner, we do the games, the flipping, it's the seven is always coming. It's like he's in the booth with us. Right, yeah. What's up, Vatten Loss? Mark Jarrison going nowhere with top pair. And actually, now back to Costa. Interestingly, I think Jack-10... Do you ever just fold now? No, I was just going to say, I think having this hand is almost better than having something like King-10 at this point, because you can improve okay, against the hands yes. that you might be up against. Sure. And also with that backdoor diamond, it, yeah. it's just too much for him to stick around. Okay, Very you're absolutely right. Okay. to be in this situation with Jack-10 and diamonds. And that oh, wow. is the... Great. Oh, I was confused by the two zero percents. That's because they're chopping now. With yep. straight to the jack. Five in a line for Costa and Margerison. This is where Kowalski being on the button might come in handy for him because it's going to allow him to potentially take a free card and try and pair the board. I think with two people calling, it might be a little bit thin to try and target two worse hands. It's reasonable to assume that someone made a straight um, after two calls on the flop. But he does have the benefit, as I say, of closing the action. So maybe he takes this to a free river. And if you're Kowalski, you know when you're up against two opponents here, the likelihood someone just made a straight is, like, astronomical, right? Yeah, and of course now the, the no river does not board. pair. So Jack-10, both are Jack-10s with the best of it. And Kowalski, as you mentioned, Joe, is going to be... It's not unreasonable to expect uh, plenty of straights in both your opponent's range, not just Jack-10, but also Queen-Jack is going to play for a call on the flop. You might even see, of course, King-Jack sticking around with that double gut shot and two sure. over. So a Jack is not some absurdly uh, unlikely hand. Now, Jarrison checks his straight on the river over to Costa. Yeah, and definitely important to note that, you know, even on the turn, Jack-10 wasn't the nuts. Queen Jack was, and now on this river, King Jack is. So, you know, even though both players have the straight with the Jack in hand, it's not something that they're going to go crazy with. It's just you're going to get value. You'll, you know, as Mar Jarrison, you'll, you'll call this bet out of Costa, but you're definitely aware that you don't have the nuts, and with all the ICM, you're not really trying to go for a raise with, yeah, I think that's a really interesting point. Maybe why we see Margerson start with a check on the flop because he doesn't necessarily want to bet into two opponents and give them both a chance to, you know, potentially raise. I think we just see him chucking a call uh, and and chop this one up between the two of them. Of course, both profiting a little wow. bit from Kowalski's uh, unfortunate set of sevens, which oh, wow. pretty quickly moves out of the way. Straight ties with straight. This pot ends in a chop, and you know what they say. 
everyone, everyone loves, loves a chop pop. pop. What? What? You gave up on it. I didn't want to be a part Maria of that, and then you gave up on it. You don't. You normally never. Okay. So, uh, I. I no. 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 Don't even try to put this on me, Stapes. Normally, you don't have a big pause between, and you know what they say. We just go into it. Stitch up. There's always. It was a stitch a up. There's always a beat. I I'm sorry. You know what? It's okay. It's and then okay. Scraggy came in late. I'm gonna... so what? Whoa! <laughs> How quickly did Maria turn then? Do you see that? And then, as soon as she I knew there was heat on her, then she's like, oh, by the way, Scraggy came part in. Of, like, part of us I was thrown off is because there was a bunch of people lulling at the graphics department as if they had made a mistake because it said 0% and 0%. That's it. Because neither one of them was going to win the pot. It said split 100%. Wow. And I was throwing, because I'm very protective of the graphics department who do an amazing job. But not protective, of, not protective of your co commentators, it seems. Maria's already a Guys, famous. I have to take a break now because I just, this is unbelievable. I'm going to, I am going to take the blame for that. Thank you. I'm going to take the blame for that. I'm sorry. Finally. I'd like to apologize to the audience at home for our behavior during that jingle. This is what happens when James leaves. That's true. This would have never happened on his watch. I was too busy banning people for writing <laughs> lol GFX. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Can't see the flag, yeah. Sometimes you have to have a bad Chop Pot song to appreciate the good Chop Pot songs. If you want the rainbow, you've got to put up with the rain. <laughs> wow, nice. I mean, I'm, I, I have no more comments about this. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm trying not to get riled up. I'm going to let you order an appetizer when we go to dinner now. <laughs> you owe me a stop. You know with interest you already <laughs> owe me an appetizer. Don't pretend like you're throwing it in now as if... Oh my goodness! If we get done tonight with the ability to have a dinner somewhere, would you? Would, does tonight work for you? Absolutely, okay. I would love that. And here comes Scott Marjorison with a, another three bet on the button with that suited king. We let's, saw him with the king seven suited earlier. Let's talk about this dynamic for a second, Yarosh and Marjorison. This is a bubble. Yep. Is this an opportunity? for Marjerison and Yarish to take turns clotheslining people and a little bit. three yeah. batting light. and You know, like in the Royal yeah. Rumble when there's like an yes. uneasy alliance between two players who kind of stare. Like tacit at, stare yeah, yeah, they stare at each other's way, but they beat everybody else up. Yeah. I think that's by and large what you're going to see with a final table dynamic like cool. this. That if it isn't Yarosh's turn to go, then it's going to be Marjerison's turn to go. Because they have Yarosh with 16 and a half, Scott Madras with just over 13. So they're going to be doing most of the, the beating up of the other players whilst these pay jumps are in play. And certainly whilst Kai and Mokri's 20 big blind stack uh, is in play, everybody else is chilling. No collision, yeah? Thank you. We need to create teams. Who wants to be on my team? When you're small blind, you fall. Nobody wants to be on my team. Okay, you guys are. I do have two Brazilian players at the table. And although I avoid nationalistic stereotypes at this point, the Brazilian rail is legendary and it's starting to grow. They may camp out there overnight just to have good position for tomorrow. I like a nice, loud, rowdy rail. Do you think they just bring the flag everywhere, or do they just, you know, they always have one on hand. It would be a great cottage industry to just open a Brazilian flag store in every city around the world. Every poker store, yeah, right. stock, just in case they make uh, some FTs. Oh, how much? For, it's $1,000. Well, at this point, of course, we, we, need, we need a flag. Yeah, we need one. They must bring it. No, I believe you. Well, when you're dominating the poker world as hard as so many Brazilian players are the last few years, it's a pretty reasonable expectation to sneak one into the suitcase. Black guy. Fung. He's a nice guy. He likes you. He's a nice guy. He likes you as well. You look like you have a lot of fun. So this is going to be an indication of just how wide yeah. Scott Marjorison is willing to go. He's a little pause there with the 9 6 off. Does fold. Ben Dinelli with about 40 big blinds. 6 5 suited on the button. 
Might guys, be tempting. You guys get some JC Alvarado vibes <laughs> off of Michael Pinto? A little bit, but I thought we weren't That's supposed to do it. I'm not doing bad lookalike. I'm just okay, saying. I'm just doing a yeah. potential I miss, resemblance. I miss JC. Too. I miss JC too. I think he he was saying he has he has like a real job of sorts now. He's like a finance type. Not surprised. Guy. I'm like the only person in the poker industry that like doesn't have a future in the finance industry. Like everyone's gonna be like, it's fine trading. if poker doesn't work out. Yeah. I can trade. Yeah. I'm on crypto. <laughs> I have infinite options. Joe's just like, please do not shut down poker. I mean, what what business needs puns? <laughs> Marketing? <laughs> Maybe. No, you know, jingle don't, writing. Yeah, Maybe don't just book it Thomas Cook it and all that lot. 10 10 3, Fischl and Bendinelli. The classic button big blind matchup. Hardboard to connect with the 10 10 3. No straight draws, only backdoor flush draws. Just looking at what, what you're doing so here. I wouldn't be surprised to see Bendinelli just continuing with his entire range here. Especially when he has enough 10x on the button because he's going to be opening. 10-9 offsuit, jack-10 offsuit. It's a little bit different maybe if it's 7-7-3. Seven, seven, but he does go for the bet and gets a pretty swift fold. Chips headed his way. Yeah, Benton Alley official lower middle of the pack. Either scarves, sunglasses, or something, you know? Everybody, yeah. One person without sunglasses, this guy without sunglasses, this guy. Everybody, yeah. You look, uh, you know what you look like? You look like a beast. You just look like you're... If we could go back to the Chop Hot song for a second. I, go I knew it was going to be bad because, and I'm not saying it's your fault, but I saw Maria was starting before I was even going, and I was like, this is going to be terrible. I'm just going to call it now. Forfeit this one. I'll take the bullet. <laughs> and we'll hopefully get another shot. We, we go again next. Okay, so it's been a while since, you know, we've all been in the same room together. You're going to say the whole thing. You'll take a beat, and then we all start at the same time. But you kind of technically started off, and we're kind of like... You know what they in. say. There, yes. Boom. That was it. That was it. See? So, um, so I'm on it. That's what I did. That's all, that's all what I did. That's what I did. Uh, like so I said, I look, it's, uh, as the captain of the ship, it's, 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 it's my, exactly, it's my job to go down with the ship. We um, also have a recommendation in chat, Stapes, of a very nice restaurant in town that's also very expensive <laughs> for dinner tonight. Okay. So it's Saturday night. We you. probably aren't going to be able to get a reservation. In fact, I thank called already. You, Novo. Turns out they're totally booked. Biblio. Um, you know, perhaps this nice viewer in chat can also help us book a reservation there. Since we're, we're totally busy booked. Calm. What's it called? La Sarc. Yes, I called them. <laughs> booked. Oh, so, booked up, unfortunately. You know, it isn't booked because uh, Mrs. Sprague went and checked it out. Popeyes. Popeyes is open. Plenty of seating available now. Open seating. Popeyes. Barcelona. <laughs> so actually, after that pot uh, that Kowalski lost... Through no fault of his own, of course, with yeah. the set, laid it down. He is uh, our second shortest stack now. He is closest to Mockery with uh, 31 big blinds for Kowalski, 18 big blinds for Kyan Mockery. That is correct. But the good news for Kyan Mockery is, uh, as opposed to before the, the redraw here, we're nine-handed now. So he's got a little bit more breathing room. He gets to see more hands. Previously in the five-handed setup, boom, blinds are on you. Boom, blinds are on you. And everyone's got to play a little tighter, too, right? Right, so now everybody's got to play a little bit tighter. He has to play the blind, uh, big blind every uh, nine hands instead of five. So he's got a, he's, he's bought himself some time. Pocket nines for Yarosh. The boss at the table. Kowalski, queen jack suited. This is this an awkward one. Th uh, this is about what I was... I was yep. Like... From the early position, from the chip leader, with so many people to act behind, a 31 big blind sack is super awkward to play. I feel like this is just a fold. <laughs> I'm not sure. It definitely could be. I think, actually, in general, we do see him lay it down. Very nice call from Stapes. I think versus the earlier positions, you kind of want to play a very tight three-bet or fold strategy okay. in this setup. Um, 
And out of 31 big blinds, how many three bats do we really have in us? So we want to make it just like six big blinds and then either call off or fold. But obviously we're calling off like really tight, like aces, kings, queens. Maybe we get tens. Some, and then may, maybe we do get to flat some hands. Maybe we do get to flat hands like jacks and tens. Um, but it, it, the overall takeaway is we have to be very tight there. So queen jack suited going into the muck yeah, is not yeah, a, a yeah, big surprise. Position, yeah. I do think we'll see some players stick around with it. Kowalski very accomplished. So if he folds, I'm folding too. Yeah. If your guess ends up being the thing Kowalski does, you're like, okay, either you guessed correctly or... or it's likely right. Yeah. And if Kowalski does it, it's likely right. <laughs> so this one's going to be Yarosh versus Costa. And pretty decisive flop for Costa. And a, a defend out of the small blind feels like it's going to be a lot of aces, doesn't it? Yep, probably pretty uh, pretty reasonable expectation. Maybe some, maybe even some pairs quite high up as well. And by that I mean sevens, eights, tens, um, potentially jacks even, given the dynamic. Um, Yarosh does decide to continue. It's a good board for, for him to continue on in terms of him still having a lot of strong hands. Um, already we might see Yarosh get the cage out. And put Costa some, some oh, tough decisions. Oh, I always forget it. This is this is ICM cage we're talking about. Exactly, because even with a hand as strong as Ace Ten, normally <laughs> flops very well. It looks like Yarosh is sort of waving the flag a little bit, which uh, would be pretty delightful for Costa. He now appreciates that Yarosh's range is really wide. He's likely got the best of it. It's just trying to to steer this one into a showdown rather than play a, a, an abnormally big pot. Yeah. Kieran, we answered your question the other day. It's a no. Yeah. Kieran seems to think that uh, if you're playing a hand three-handed, mm -hmm. let's say uh, it's me and you and Maria in a hand, and I'm and you bet, and Maria's next act, and I'm not really sure, and Maria snap folds, that I should go along with Maria's read. Oh, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, because your cards. I mean, what if are you, different? <laughs> what if Maria just had seven three? We she don't just know. Has an auto right. decision. <laughs> And we said absolutely not like three days ago. And Kieran's like, because we just said, oh, if you are doing what Kowalski's doing. Right, no, but we're doing what Kowalski's doing from a strategic perspective of how he's going to play his overall reign. Knowing Kowalski's cards. Knowing Kowalski's cards. Correct. Jeez, Kieran, come on. That's like, yeah, if the person to the left of me folds, then I should fold. They got to read. But what, like, what if you just have read? like a really good hand? <laughs> Um, Yarosh is having a little think about this one. There's a one million chip bet at the river, and Yarosh uh, potentially looking to bluff catch. Now, what does he want to bluff catch against? He wants to bluff catch against Jack-10, Queen-Jack, Queen-10 suited. That's really the only way that Costa's going to be able to call in the small blind, call the flop, and then have a bluff at the river. One of these gut shots, maybe with the clubs, Queen-Jack, Jack-10, Queen-10 suited, 12 combinations. Maybe doesn't call like Queen Ten of Hearts at full weight. So he's looking at like maybe like eight or nine combinations of these Broadway bluffs. And then there's a bunch of aces, as Joe said. He's gonna Costa's gonna have ace ten, ace jack, ace queen, maybe even flat an ace king. Oh. So I think this is a little optimistic from the nines. Yarish. Get shown the ace. Good yeah. pop for Costa. Yarish pays him off and the Brazilians go wild. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I think that you're not gonna find too many hands that you are beating there with the nines. Especially because, you know, obviously these players are still going to try to win the pot when needed and have to bluff if they show up at the river, you know, on a missed draw. But sometimes I think people are going to be a little more willing to shut down at this stage of the tournament. Well, also important to consider as well that you might think, oh, the flush draw missed. I need to call in case he's bluffing a missed flush. But he's probably not calling too many 7-5 suited in the small blind. Maybe right. even not 7-8 suited, 8-9 suited in the small blind, given it's a final table. So a bit optimistic, perhaps. Costa won't mind it at all. An extra 1 million for him. Costa's rail won't mind it, and I won't mind them. Costa, by the way, uh, was a platinum pass winner for the PSPC. Part one. Part one. Very cool. Part two coming up in January. 
And we've had some Platinum Pass winners here in Barcelona yep. as well. There was one in the Mystery Bounty. There was a Platinum Pass added to that. For the women's sit and go. That's right. Platinum Pass there. Gianna took that one down. I know that this is going to sound like a lie. She said that the best thing about her winning that. Don't if it's so, if if it's that you meeting, were commentating it. Me. No, I don't want to hear. Was it. meeting me at the end. I'm not even joking. Really? Yeah. Wow, the star power, Joe. Thirty thousand dollar pass. Twenty five right. k buy in in the Bahamas, but meeting Joe Stapleton. I mean, just you know. I guess. I get it. It's difficult for me to see from that perspective. No, like, I, me I'd, too. I'd swap you for a game of Scrabble. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, but uh, the Sunday Storm ticket I want is way better than meeting Joe Stapleton. Yeah. yeah. They're like, would you like to go for dinner with Joe or we can put a, a, a big 22 bind in your account? I'd be like, use the name Spraggy. Well, we know I'm not paying for the dinner. Threes versus sevens. Ten, nine, four. Yes, Moose. The name Cahan Mockery does sound like Colin Mockery. I've been thinking it all week. Whose line is it anyway? Anybody? Remember yes. Colin Mockery? Yep. Nope. I've been trying to figure out a way to cram that in at some point. Guerrero checks. Bendinelli checks behind. Five ball on the turn. Three, four, five, seven, nine, ten. Carry the one. Nope. Nothing here. Guerrero checks. Yeah. Just wonder if Ben Danelli is thinking about protecting his hand a little bit with a bet. Twenty players. Does not. Sorry. Twenty. Check. Check. Twenty players in yeah. my, my second guess. Okay, on the river. His check. Team. Check the again. Boss. Are we just in both players but looking to showdown mode, Maria? There is like 20 of your yeah, friends. I mean, and they don't even, they don't I think so. But like oh. other guys. Oh. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Clickety like clackety. Should, like, I'm not really every, sure. Every just see each other's I mean, maps. it looks like Guerrero's reaching, <laughs> but if he bets. I just don't necessarily know if this river makes a ton of sense to bet on with sevens. I mean,. I'm not really it. sure what it is. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure what he thinks it is. I mean, <laughs> if we look at the sizing, it feels like it's a little bit of a blocker uh, bet. It doesn't feel like there. he's trying to turn uh, sevens into a bluff. But, you know, when your opponent, who's the preflop aggressor, checks flop and yeah. checks turn, and then this shows up on the river, it does feel like a weird spot to try to go for value. Especially on a king in particular, yeah. because I, I think we will still see, obviously, ace-king checking down, and, and maybe even hands like king-queen, king-jack, as well, versus big blind on the 10-9-4. On the um, the sevens does win, and it's going to win probably either way. Let's turn things back to the upcoming PSPC for a second. Mitch Hecht writes in on YouTube to say, I booked Atlantis already for the PCA. Ah, boy, do we have some news for you. <laughs> Well, it's not that far. No, How much is a cap I mean, to Bahama? Bahama? Well, that's... It varies. Maybe they have a very generous uh, policy for cancellations. Do you know that I've had some incredible cab rides in the Bahamas? Just things that you would... One time, a cab driver was taking us from the fish fry back to um, Atlantis. And one of my smarter friends realized, like, this is not the way back to Atlantis. He goes, no, no, don't worry about it. And uh, took, very, just so you know, at that point, I'm very worried. Quite about it. worried. <laughs> yes. And we drove to a random neighborhood uh, in Nassau and picked up his girlfriend. <laughs> he wanted to take his girlfriend out to dinner at Atlantis. Didn't have time to go and come back. No, he had plenty of time. He just didn't want to. Spend the fuel. Yeah. So we just, <laughs> two boats, one she just rode in the front seat. With I us. love it. I, I don't know. I don't know. At that That's point, a very I'm not practical mad. man. <laughs> I'm not mad at that point. No, you have to respect it. Do we have any Platinum Pass winners in the chat? Any of you guys locked up a Platinum Pass yet? Uh, Amazonian JB was in the chat yesterday. Two time. Two timer, yeah. Official King Jack. Super Fisher with a with a fish hook. It's like a fisherman, a king and a jack. Well, then it feels like since his last name is Fischl, we should just go with salmon officially for the color. You're of the right. Shirt. You're absolutely right. Love that for Fischl and salmon. There was probably something subconscious about him too that put him in that color. 
tomorrow he's in as like an oily trite type t-shirt. Just, you know, just some scales. It's official. <laughs> Six. Big ham for Guerrero. One of the biggest. Big, slick energy for Guerrero. One must imagine we'll see a re-raise incoming. I don't think there's anything about the particular chip dynamic that would stop Guerrero from wanting to reinvest. And you got to respect Guerrero for wearing a patch that says Guerrero. He's repping himself. Oh Paid himself 10 Gs <laughs> to wear that on TV. I've been wearing Spraggy merchandise all week. That's true, yeah. But yeah. only because I ran out of clothes when I was packing. And I, listen, I don't want to get into it. Best end again? <clears throat> no way, no way. But I do respect the Guerrero on the FD. <laughs> He's backing <laughs> himself. You want to give me pill, pill yesterday? You want to give me pills yesterday? Pills? Pills. Pills? Yeah? Cough uh, thing, yeah. <laughs> Ah. <laughs> if you have if you have other pills, <laughs> it sounds like <laughs> Italia Brasile. But you want pills? <laughs> I wanna win. I wanna peace. Win. Peace. What against some Brazilian guy? <laughs> then I go. Uh... Every time you call Mook, so don't do it. <laughs> yeah, bro, you don't might... do chips to him, bro. <laughs> But at least we, we, we weren't friends. Yeah, 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 we are friends. Oh. I'm joking. Merci. I'm joking. We are yeah. friends. <laughs> we are not friends. <laughs> Stop giving him pots. Uh, oh, nice <laughs> they are kind of all friends. This is, I have not seen something like this in a long time. It's nice, it's very jovial, uh, yeah. very pleasant atmosphere. Mockery with the ace eight. So crucially at this stage, Joe, when you're short, you really want to play a game where people are going to find it tougher to shove against you. So a hand like ace eight offsuit yeah. is much more valuable than seven eight suit. Because when you have an ace in your hand, I know that Joe Stapleton blockers aren't real school as nope. thought. No, 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 this is one of the situations that I, I, I'm totally on board. Yep, so it's nice to have an ace eight in your hand. So it's harder for your opponent to have an ace, the sort of hand that they're going to shove all in against you. Obviously, there are these shorter stack depths as well. Top pair is a lot more valuable than some sort of draw, because with a draw, you're going to want to see five and reinvest on flops and turns, potentially. So it's good when you're deeper. So this is a, a, a raise with the intention of calling a shove from the big blind? No, this is going to be a raise with the intention of folding ace eight offset. Okay. But when you have an ace, it's just less likely your opponent's going to have an ace that he, they're going to reshove against you. So you want to play a block a heavy opening range. So ace eight, well better seven eight suited, for example. The goat. The goat. I know you weren't here at the beginning of the day with Jimmy Guerrero uh, started with 15 big blinds, and I'm like, hand number two, shoved seven eight suited from plus two, right? And uh, got looked at by ace jack, flopped a straight. That'll do it. Uh, but we all, we all were like, huh, this is um, unorthodox. An aggressive style of yeah, uh, yeah of, of play. So Mockery up to 20 bigs after that steal. Yep, and closing the gap a little bit on Kowalski. Three and a half million for Kowalski, 2.4 for Mockery. Yarosh still yeah, sitting top of the pile at 14.7 million. Above average or under average? Huh? Above average or under? In cutoff? Yes. Uh, above. For me. <laughs> I don't know. Did you guys have um, like a comic strip in the states? We had something called Goofus and Gallant, and it was like uh, like a, it was almost like a morality tale. It was like Goofus always turns up late for dinner with dirty hands. Gallant is always sparkling clean and on so, time. Some good, good guy, bad guy kind yeah. of routine. And I feel like that's Twitch versus YouTube. Like Twitch is kind Twitch of reasonable. Is, Twitch is yeah. And then YouTube's just YouTube's complete just complete mind just, of its own. Yeah, just a like I used to th think Twitch was. You but thought no. Twitch was bad. Yeah. Take a look at these guys. Yeah, take a look at... Woof. You just got to, you know, let them do their thing. Someone on YouTube today actually said, ban female commentators. What? Well, well, Can just, you even... No, that's an absurd posi uh, position. Absurd. It's the sort of thing that should be scrawled on the wall of a bathroom. <laughs> yes. But that's the thing. It's anything goes until it doesn't. Yeah. So you're gonna get it, and then you get rid of it. Anyway, I, I just want to. I just wanted to compliment Twitch and say, "Hello, my babies." 
to Twitch. And uh, yeah, YouTube, just behave yourself out there. YouTube, we, I think we can get But there's there. also some great people on YouTube who are like being let down. You yeah. know? Do you know what it is, Joe? You know when you're at school? We've got a three bet to 800,000 from the nines here. Um, you know when you're at school and there's like two or three kids who are just messing about all the time and then the teacher goes, all right, all of you, you don't get a dinner. You don't get to go out and play after lunch now. No pizza party, yeah. Yeah, and it's like the good YouTube people are sitting there like that now because two or three people can't behave. And that's a shame. We don't want to have to do shame. it, but we will. Also, it's so much more fun when everyone's kind. Yeah, getting along, having a yeah. nice time. <laughs> Should we see which chat we can get to move quicker? Because we have them both on our... Yeah. We have them side by side right now on our screens. Twitch chat and YouTube chat. Which one of you can scroll your chat quicker right now? So just type anything? Type anything. Anything you like. Anything nice and reasonable. No bad things. But I want to see which, who's got the more power. Who's got more energy. You could just say um, Twitch or YouTube. Twitch or YouTube. Is that or, who's better? Or one or number. Let's go. It's a, it's a battle of the chats. Twitch is off. Look at Twitch. is off and running. Running. YouTube forgot their trainers for PE. They, there's no... Twitch has significantly won that. Huge. YouTube is all slowed down from pirating. What do they used to call it? Oh, YouTube's going now. Here we go. We've got a lot of first-time chatters as well. There we go. All right, thank you very much. Sorry about that, mods. <laughs> but here's a great thing, And Joe. we're good. Okay, and stop. Here's a great thing. When they check the analytics, they'll be like, wow, we've got a lot of unique uh, engagement. A lot of Joe engagement. Joe and Spraggy That's were on. That's right. <laughs> ah, there you go. See? Always working, buddy. Big hand shaping up here. Costa opened things up with Ace Jack. Yarosh, the chip leader. Maybe not going to have a ton of credibility. Gets one fold. Ben Dinelli in the big blind. Jack 10 suited. Don't really think you can play this after a raise and a three bat. Costa is one of the bigger stacks if Costa decides to continue. This could be a rather large hand. This is one of those difficult situations where you really, at least I find myself, maybe our audience home would agree, when you're on a final table and the guy with all the chips three bets you, you're just not believing him. You're like, no way. Like, he's going to be going after me, applying pressure. Costa does not take a stand, and Yarosh has the kings but can't get any action. <laughs> yeah, t no, I totally agree with Spraggy's point, but you just have to know when to pick your battles in this situation, you know, against a chip leader. Even if you don't quite believe them, it's like you surely can find maybe a better spot than being out of position with Ace Jack offsuit against a three bet. Nice bro. Here comes that Brazilian rail. Some fist bumps on the table. And also, Maria, you know, you've got to respect it. That's the whole point of ICM. Even right. if you know that the guy's going to go after you, the cost of being wrong is astronomical. That's the whole point of the model, uh, is that you have to respect the fact that if you're wrong, you, your chips that you lose are potentially worth, in this case, hundreds of thousands of euros. Right. You'll, you'll be richer if you respect it, but you can have a lot more fun when you don't. When you don't, yes. <laughs> in fact, uh, there was an interesting hand on the bubble of this main event where we had an all-in, four all-ins, of course, on the bubble. And one of them was ace-10 against nine-four. The guy who was all-in with ace-10 spoke to him, and he said, well, I knew the guy had nothing, so I called, which is fair enough. But this is kind of a situation where even if you know they have nothing, quote-unquote, putting it in with 60% or 65% when being wrong is nothing and being in the money is 8K, it's a big deal. So even if you know he has nothing, you just have to let him get away with it, right? I mean, but some people just go, I don't care. I know you got nothing. I call, run it out. Give Raggy. me my 65%. I mean, there, there's a very famous ICM spot that I was involved in. The satellite spot. The satellite spot. Maria, have you heard this one? Oh, I don't think so. She's, Maria will enjoy this story. So, oh, wait, I'm so sorry. I thought there was a fold in the big blind. We'll get to it after this. Top two pair for Kowalski. And Kowalski will enjoy this flop almost as much as we enjoy Joe's satellite punting. I'd imagine <laughs> there's going to be 
a continuation of Kowalski's aggression on the ace king queen. Good board for him as the opener in the cutoff, especially in a spot where he's opening pretty tight with his stack and the distribution and Marjerison to his left. So like he's very condensed around those good strong top cards. He bets and Pinto. Of course, folds. So I'm an ICM expert, as Braggy would tell you. <laughs> Running up Reno is the setting. Satellite for the main event. Satellite for the main event. Myself, Finton, better known as Easy Releases Online, and Joe are playing the satellite. Joe gets down to three-handed. There are two seats to the main event. And... Joe has a lot of chips as a guy short and then another guy has like slightly less jams on Joe blindly blind in a spot where neither of them like really want to play because the other guy is like short <laughs> right. Joe snaps and we're like oh my goodness like he has like he has it. Yes. Like, well, he should never really aces, call right? but he's called like, like I assume aces. it just must be aces yeah. right and Joe has pocket sixes <laughs> <laughs> the guy tables like ace queen or, or some hand oh like that gosh. and the board just runs out like deuce deuce three four four so Joe's hand comfortably holds, wins the flip, and this guy is like... Does he just lose it <laughs> this on guy, Joe? No, this guy's like destroyed. He's like, no, but, it's but like, I'm sitting there, and Spraggy and Finton are laughing hysterically. We're giggling, right? And like, then, trying to, they're like hands over their mouths, like doubled over. Like, I'm like, what, 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 what do you, what you guys But then we go over at? to Joe, and he was like, nice, that, that was fine, right? And me and, oh me and Finton are just like, what the? No, <laughs> not fine. <laughs> Uh, but the other guy was super happy. The short, yeah, the short stack guy was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think his firstborn child is called Stapes now, yeah. <laughs> right? Oh, my gosh. That's hilarious. The most hilarious part is that I thought one buy-in for a running up Reno yeah, main event was going to be enough. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was your first <laughs> one in the bag. I, I, I ran it up all, all day long to go broke to a guy who was on his 14th bullet. <laughs> For sure, going to defend fours in the big blind. A6 for Majerison. For sure, could get a full double with the right run out. This ain't it. Top pair for Majerison. Yeah, another one of those boards where it's very hard for anyone to connect. Ace, deuce, deuce. What do you think, uh, Maria? Any checks with A6? Are we going to take a bet with everything that we have, perhaps? I think you could definitely mix between the two. I think some players, you know, will just check back. But Marjerison may be feeling like Fischl will expect him to continue as a, a, a with his entire range, pretty much. So it maybe feels a little bluffier to just bet versus check back almost? It definitely feels like we're more likely to have it when we check back, right? Yeah. It's like if Marjerison gets here with 10-8 suited, he probably just bets the flop. So maybe, I think I agree with you. I think just bet everything. And that's why we see Fischl stick around with the fours, right? Because Marjerison betting everything, fours probably has to call one, has this interesting back deal, backdoor wheel to the straight situation as well. So again, if Marjerison does choose to, to bet again, which he does not, I think fours would be a better call than sevens or eights, right? Yeah. You, like, you need to be able to improve. Fours do not improve. And I think if I'm Fischl, I'm kind of quietly confident that I'm beating a jack-10, a queen-10, a king-10 type hand. Eight, eight, nine type hand. Mm -hmm. um, we see Fischl reaching for some sort of blocker sizing, I would imagine. Yeah. Just so that he doesn't have to check and face a million. Now, Jarrison quickly makes the call and shows him the bad news, and the rich get richer. That's really just a bet designed to allow him to show down his hand, right? Because it's okay if he thinks that he's winning a lot. But it's very awkward, like I say, if he checks and he just faces a pot-sized bet or even something a little bit smaller. It's a little bit uncomfortable to go for a check call. What is the next one? Uh, I'm going to have to write some fish puns for tomorrow if Paul makes it. It's the only time I get to use them. We're not allowed to call people fish. 
I'm surprised that you don't really have a list today of more um, smoothie options. Oh, I'm so glad you asked, Maria. Oh, goodness. Maria. Okay, I mean, Why have you done this to be fair, I actually do like some of them, so I don't mind it. I don't mind it. Did you hear it. the first? Uh, look, no, no, Buchan, he's opened a chain of uh, smoothies uh, stores in, yep. in Amsterdam, all over. And so I had some poker-themed smoothie ideas for him. Have you, have you heard the original list? Go ahead. Triple Barrel That's Berry. Okay. Fine. <laughs> Blinds and antioxidants. <laughs> see, okay. see? All right. That was one of my faves. Pocket jackfruit juice. Sure. There's no right way to drink it. <laughs> okay. It's always coming seven different fruits and vegetables. <laughs> the pea nut flush. Okay. What about like... They're not all winners. What know? about like straight through you? Because whenever I drink a smoothie, <laughs> let me tell you it's, where I'm headed next. It's kind of like the backdoor banana blast. Yeah. That's, that was my closer. But then I came up with some, some other items, maybe not smoothies, but other things you might find in a health food store. Ready to flush? Like, Go a, ahead. like an acai bowl. Okay. So now we're just like into, yeah, health, yeah, health foods. Queens and greens. Mm hmm. How about stalling on the bubble tea? That's very big at the moment, bubble Huge. tea. Huge. Huge. So is stalling on the bubble. Mm hmm. So it's a nice synergy. A nice synergy between the two. Costa defended the big blind with King Deuce suited against Pinto's open from the button with Ace Eight of Hearts. Probably just gonna go check bet fold. You I'm guys are so cute one. for thinking that bubble tea is the just like pay. now a thing. Do you understand as a Taiwanese person? Um, <laughs> we've ha had bubble tea since I was in the womb. This has been around, but you guys are just now starting we just to. We're about it. We're catching up. Yeah. yeah. Is everybody waiting for That's... me to bust? But it's. it's... I need to How's take you guys happen? to some legit, <laughs> some legit bubble tea. Do you know, I don't think I've ever had bubble tea. I'll make it painful for you Lots guys. of tea. Obviously. I wasn't done. I wasn't done. I beg to differ, my friend. Gut shot strawberry. Sitting mango. Eh. Triple O range merge. <laughs> that is the reachiest reach. That is such you've yet, a reach. yet to have. Okay, how about this one? This one is uh, its a protein shake. It's three-way action. I like it. I'm trying to think. Oh, the best I have at the moment is like P.O. Super. <laughs> <laughs> I, th I have one more. It's uh, <laughs> a, a bad beat grass shot. A six of clubs for Yarosh. <laughs> He'll come in for Rays and Kowalski with a king-queen offsuit. Very same dynamic that we saw. Kowalski fold. Oh. Queen Jack of Diamonds at the top of the feature table. Final table. Final table. And so let's see how he proceeds with King Queen offsuit. I do think that I would occasionally expect a, a three bet fold versus uh, the EP with our blockers. Kowalski taking again the tighter option in this situation versus Yarosh. Now, this may well be one of the first times we see our big stacks clash. It's Yarosh with the chip lead, 15 million. Scott Margerison second in chips with 14 million and not the sort of player to back down from a, a confrontation. We are over 100 big blinds deep. And Margerison with a king-queen offsuit. Now, I do think the deeper you are, Maria, that you want to have some sort of suitedness for playability purposes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we already saw Margerison pass up another spot to get involved with Yarosh, and both times he was in position, which you know, would definitely sometimes tend to lead someone to maybe wanting to get more involved than not. But again, still very understandable that Margerison feels like, you know, there are seven other players at this table that I can choose to get involved in and feel very comfortable about it. And Yarosh is just that one that, you know, doesn't feel necessary at the moment and doesn't have the right hand combination in his opinion. Thank you very much. And it is Yarosh who uh, avoids any trouble and picks up the chips. You made stacks? Oh, you made? No, not really. Yeah, I mean, it's true. But it's not for everyone. Who has played for 2 million for 2 million? A little bit. I think that I always... I feel like some of the energy is waning. 
I'm a, like 15 at the table? Yeah. Well, not I mean, mine. No, it, no, no. I just had a backdoor banana blast. I'm fine. Is that Jan from Guerrero an indication? Yeah. I feel like the final table potentially waning, but the energy in the room building? Yes. Like yeah, the yeah. rail yes. is yes, starting yes, to yes. assemble? Correct. Obviously, we're down to nine. These guys have been playing fifth day straight. And once you get to nine, you know, after all this play, you're kind of in like focus mode, I guess, more so. I think we're going to see less chatter. It's been pretty jovial so far. But um, the energy in the room certainly is on the up and up, I think. And it's like this rail starts coming. It's quite, uh, quite nice to see. And to be fair, like Mockery was driving a fair bit of the conversation and the jovial chit chat. And now he's, you know, the shortest staff. When you're it's short, it's really quiet. hard yeah. to, to do that. Yeah. Get Mockery to double up and he'll be all, all about it. And again, I think Guerrero I just tuckered himself out. <laughs> Yarosh, Queen Nine under the gun, and Kings for Costa. Get your flags ready. Wowie, zowie. We're deep here as well. 70 big blinds to start the hand. Costa is currently third in chips. Goes for the re raise to 800,000. I think the nice spot, of course, you know, being in Yarosh's position is that you can expect some of these middling stacks to play fairly honest against you in terms of, you know, their three bets. Most people will not be taking this three bet uh, spot as a bluff. And so you can pretty much define their range more to the value end of things. And so, you know, if he maybe had a slightly better combination, you know, a higher kind of Broadway suited combination, he might continue. But Queen Nine of Clubs. Here we go. <laughs> Vamo, indeed. <laughs> yeah, but I agree, Maria. I mean, we've seen it a couple times, right? <laughs> People staying out of the way of Yarosh's big stack. Some bit of t-shirt. Jaros, please, no. Please. Let him live, Yarosh. You can call me Patricio. What? Him naked? <laughs> we are kind of friends. Now you can call me Patricio. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. You all, you all are... Crazy? No, crazy no. Crazy would be a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> Mark Harrison folding so early. You to say ben Dinelli. You to say ben Dinelli was someone we've seen a lot of on the EPT. This is an unofficial final table of nine. We have also some supporters from Brazil, or not? not no, yet. from the Netherlands. I think oh, Ben Dinelli is certainly you, you gone deep. In Brazil, I want to uh, say he's made at least one final table oh, you're Dutch? as well. Yeah, because, but you speak Portuguese as well, yes? No? I make a, okay. Mokri! Mokri! Mokri's button with the ace-10 offsuit. Here we go. 17 blinds. Again, not shoving with the ace-10. This is a raise to call it off. I would imagine so. Yeah, this one is a little bit different. Obviously, ace-10 has got... Ooh. We might be able to, about to find out, Joe. Yeah. We might be about to find out what his intentions are. Total, yeah, total. The Jables for Guerrero. Now you could yeah. sometimes have some hands that just want to shove at this stack depth if you're mockery. Then at the top end, you're going to have some hands that want to raise to induce action. Obviously, aces, kings, queens. Ace, king. I wonder where mockery feels like the ace 10 is for him. How wide Guerrero is willing to either three bet and potentially still fold against him, or how wide he's willing to three bet and call off against him. I think ace-10 offsuit is just in kind of a miserable middle ground, right, Maria, where you're never really that happy to stack off, but it does feel maybe too strong to fold. Yeah, and you don't really expect Guerrero to have too many light three bets from the small blind in this particular situation when, as Mockery, you could have some hands that you're going to induce. So, yeah, I mean, this is a very disciplined fold out of Mockery, and 
It's nice to, you know, in that spot as Mockery be able to open and because of ICM, if perhaps the small blind and the big blind get into a huge confrontation, then of course you could very easily bow out, which is why he probably didn't shove, just open shove in the first place. But also in that situation, reassess once Guerrero comes in with a three bet from the small blind and also fold. Yeah, I think he's definitely going to want to have some steals, but probably given the dynamic moving from like 65% button closer to like less than 40. Um, so importantly, we're not open shoving everything, but ace 10 is kind of a miserable close spot when you get three, but he does take the uh, disciplined option. Quick update on Bendinelli, thanks to Statric. Bendinelli won a 1K side event in 2013, Monte Carlo, but no main event final tables. I'm happy you for King Queen. Maybe add an eight. I'm very happy, yeah. Huh? Maybe add an eight. <coughs> we'll get eight. Mark Jerison, ace, ace queen under the gun. And we'll have all of the action behind short stacks and one bigger one. Pinto with a bigger hand and also lots of players to act behind, so just calls. Official with a six suited, gonna give it a think and then put it in the drink. Pretty interesting flat from Pinto. Of course, a hand normally we would expect to see the re-raise. It's a premium ace king. But this is very much, again, a product of the fact that Mark Jerison hasn't covered. We're playing within uh, very significant pay jumps. And Pinto still has close to 70 big blinds. It's a lot of big blinds if he re-raises and gets four bet. Very uncomfortable very quickly, even with a hand as strong as Ace King. And Guerrero reaching for chips on the button with Queen Jack off. A re-raise is going to end poorly. A flat is going to make squeezing incredibly appealing. There you go. <laughs> the thing is here, we're already, like, we're definitely dealing with one pretty strong range, right? Pinto's flats. We've already seen Margerison fold like king-queen. Kowalski fold queen-jack suited. Kowalski folded king-queen offsuit. So Pinto's flat versus a big stack is already quite strong. Kowalski getting some ridiculous pot odds. But again, with one of those hands that is dominated so easily by certainly the sort of hand that we'd expect One Pinto or more to have. hands out here, yeah. Yeah. But a good price. He does fold. And you've got to be really disciplined here. People think that because you're going multi way. I mean, that's crazy discipline. I'd be mean, like, ah, for, for just a freak <laughs> right. it in. Maybe I'll flop a straight. Right, but you, you actually, even though you're getting a good, good price, like your hands need to be stronger in order to get your equity back out of the pot. Wow, what a flop. Flop comes queen high. Margerison jumps way out in front. Was the original Razor. And this is a situation that you do want to bet into two opponents, right? Top pair, top okay. kicker, value protection, the whole nine. On this sort of board, I think Margerison, by and large, will be looking to drive value on his hand. Yeah. We might expect hands in a small blind. There might be some king queens or queen jacks. Um, obviously, having the ace of clubs, it does mean that there are fewer flush draws for him to protect against or worry about or, or indeed draw value from. Yep. So um, Pinto's going to take one off with ace king high, which is... Um, you know, he has two overs to the board. The dangerous thing for him, though, like, if he does connect with his king or indeed his ace, some of the time he's going to recooler himself because he's up against a king-queen or an ace-queen. So it can be tricky, especially with no backdoor flush draws. It can be tricky for him to, to move forward in the hand. I think Marge Harrison now is in value mode of trying to extract value from the king-queen and the queen-jack right. suited portions of Pinto's range. Just checks. And it's going to get a bet out of Pinto the hard way. Yeah, I'm not sure how much I'm loving taking this spot as a bet, though, for Pinto, just because you would imagine if Margerison was willing to bet into two players after opening under yeah. the gun on this flop that 
very likely, you know, certain hands that this bet would profit from getting folds out of right away, like, you know, sevens or eights, probably would have checked that flop. So it just kind of feels like Mar Jarrison doesn't have a super weak hand here that would just check fold. And so it just kind of makes this bet a little bit less profitable. More than two and a half million in the middle. Rivers a seven. It four. does bring that four, four liner in, Joe. Yeah. But hard to imagine that Pinto has too many eights in his range. Yeah. Um, I don't think we see him with maybe not even seven eights suited preflop, given that we're in early position against uh, a big stack. Pocket eights? Pocket eights, perhaps, but would he call the flop bet the turn? Perhaps at a very low frequency, but it's certainly not something I'd expect most of the time. So I think it's very hard for Marjerson to credit Pinto with an eight. It's also very hard for Pinto to tell the story that he has an eight. Now, that's not to mean that he doesn't have value bets, but we've also got to think that he might not be value betting that thinly against a big stack. We spoke about this earlier, like when you're reopening the action against a big stack, do you really want to be trying to bet like even something like king queen here and then get chet raised? That sucks when you can just show down. So just a little bit of context. To my understanding, Pinto is relatively new to the game. Right. Was in a motor vehicle accident uh, fairly recently, decided wanted to take a new lease on life. Poker is a part of that. And I think that <laughs> this move takes some real heart. Yep. It does. Maybe isn't the most logical move based on all the reasons Spraggy just went over. But, but he's going for it. certainly has swung for the fences here. 2.6. And it's a pot size bet pot as well. Pot size bet. But I like it. With no pair. Margerison. Immediately flummoxed. indifferent. Yeah. I mean, listen, I love the heart, and he's very lucky that Mar Jarrison has the ace of clubs in his hand, I think, because that just takes out a lot of the suited ace. The, the, the missed flush draws. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that will really help him potentially get a fold out of Mar Jarrison, because once again, the sizing polarizes his hand to, you know, straights or sets. Oh, he's double checking to uh, see which ace it is and lays it down. <laughs> Pinto steals one. Is it going to show it? One of the it? biggest stacks at the table, breathing a sigh of relief. And Jesus, we're ticked into a break here. What a huge play from Pinto. I didn't even notice. That hand was so intense. Amaze balls. That it is break time yet again. What a hand. From the relative amateur, Michael Pinto jumps up into third in chips. Let's take a look at those chip counts. As we head into break, Margerison begging him. We're going to find out anyway. Begging. No, make him wait. Make him make wait. Make him wait. Buy yourself the 28 minutes. Margerison still second in chips, but Pinto jumps up into third with a with a brassy move. Kay and Mockery still the shortest stack. Still the one everyone's waiting to bust. We're gonna take a break. Back in 17 minutes time, more from Barcelona when we return. Lined up already, 80,000, 160,000 with a 20k ante. Action folded to Fiorini. Queen 9. The Italian will pass. Pocket 10s for Big Toro. Ooh, and they're red. Please. How much is he going to make it? That's 335,000. Then more Guri will fold. Andreas Christopher has got ace jack. Looks like we're gonna be racing. He starts the hand with just over 10 big blinds. He can't fold and he can't call. He is all in. Whoa there, pocket jacks for Kimo Koko. How much? This is all going in. I'm all in. He reshoves for just shy of three million. Anybody else want to pick up a huge hand? 
Sormanen is in the big blind. He folds. It's back on Nielsen. What does he do here with tens? Definite fold. It's one you might give some extra thought to because of the severity of the situation, but this fold is easier than movie theater trivia. Come on, Big Toro. He passes. So Christoforo is at risk. And he only has one live card. Don't say, don't say what you had. Please, please. I respect, and hopefully K Dog does too. But slowly as. Asso Valen, 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 Valen. Rude. They are calling for an ace. Clubs, of course, work for him as well. Oh, it was an ace. He flops a gut shot. Nielsen would have flopped a set. Ew. Jack still lead. Christoforo drawing to an ace or a king. He's got seven outs. Four on the turn. Same outs with one more chance to hit. The river card is a three. We lose Andreas Christoforo. He is our eighth place finisher here at EPT Barcelona. Action folded around to Tom Middleton. 6 4 off suit in the cutoff. And he raises to 320,000. Wants to work the pressure with the big stack. Agu folds the button. Luca Fiorini in the small blind. Has Middleton dominated with a6, but he faults. Creston Nielsen, 8-9 in the big. Big Toro, big blind. You don't mess with the Toro in Barcelona. This is his town. He calls. Heads up to the flop. Both these guys have hands. It's pretty tough to be excited about. Queen, 10 deuce. That's a gut shot for Nielsen. Nada for Middleton. 9-8 can't be loving this flop. He's drawing to like third pair and his gut shot isn't even to the nuts. Nielsen checks. Middleton makes a continuation bet of 400,000. Now, I'm not saying Creston has to fold here, but since your hand's not always going to be good when you hit it, why not put in a little bloop, a little bloop raise, a little bloop in there? Instead, he calls. Well, you know, Big Toro does what Big Toro wants. More than 1.6 million in the middle. Seven of clubs on the turn. Nielsen improves. He's now open-ended, and he has a flush draw. Eight high flush draw. Not sure how I'd feel about that. I know I'd rather hit the six. Nielsen checks a second time. Middleton doesn't barrel. He checks behind. Five of clubs on the river. Nielsen has a flush. Again, an eight high flush. He checks a third time. I'd say there's a good chance Tom bluffs this. It's hard for your opponent to call without a big club on this board. And he likely knows if he checks his equity is going to be lower than the inhibitions at a company Christmas party. Call. Cool. Wow! A bet of 800,000 and an insta-call from Nielsen. That call is faster than the one you make when the delivery guy forgets your rice. Hello, I like call for him, damn I think Big Toro's been drinking a little too much of the Red Toro, if you know what I mean. Midi's down to 7.4 million. Nielsen up to 8.4. So we're six-handed. And it's time to play a hand from Tom Middleton's perspective as we sweat with Tom. Tell me he's in Middleton position. I can't because he's in the small blind. Nah, close enough. Action. Hold it around. To Passy Sormanen. The fin's on the button. And faults. So it's a blind-on-blind -blind confrontation. Middleton with 5-4 off suit in the small. Well, I think this hand's a little too weak to limp the small blind. He does limp. Unless we think the big blind is almost never raising. Luca Fiorini looks at his cards and checks his option. Fiorini does play pretty tight, but in general, I do prefer a raise there. It's an 8-7 deuce flop. That's a gut shot for Midi. We were probably going to bet this flop no matter what, so the fact that we flopped a gutter ball is just bonus. 250,000. Like to bet. Fiorini. Not going anywhere. He calls. Yeah, now depending on the turn, maybe we just give this up. The turn card is the King of Spades. This is actually kind of a sweet card to double barrel. While Middleton slows down, he checks. 
Fiorini seems like someone we could have maybe bluffed off if we had bet this turn, unless he's super strong. He takes over the betting. 430,000. Okay, so this is when I tap out. Just raise the white flag and fold. Guy doesn't strike me as the type to run big bluffs on scary turn cards and subsequently not the type to make big folds here. I do not approve of this. The green and black chips are worth 100,000 each. Tom Middleton check raises to 1,150,000. Hit the hole is here and he's having more fun than ever before. He loves the game and he loves Bryn Kenny. Fiorini calls. Okay, yeah, it's not looking good here for the Mormon soldier. Or us. The river is another king pairing the board. First of all, I think we're cooked. Second of all, I think this is not a good card to bluff. Third of all, if we were going to run a bluff, I would have preferred bet the turn, bet the river instead of the check raise on the turn. Middleton has bet 650,000. Yeah, and bluffing for that amount is like trying to throw a bucket of water on a volcano. Fiorini. Calls. Oop. You in. You in. Middleton mocks. Fiorini shows Ace Deuce. He called him down with a pair of deuces. Wow, that bluff got snapped off like the head of a post-coital praying mantis. Fiorini up to 9.4 million. That's not junk. Ace is for Nielsen. He's counting out a raise. Race. He makes it 435,000 from the cutoff. Queen Jack for Kimo Koko in the small blind. And while he's got a 4.4 million, that's sadly only 22 big blinds. Oh, and he shoves! Sormanen in the big blind. I'm surprised Crescent's containing himself over there. King. Eight, he'll fold that. Nielsen's calling for show. I call. Eventually. Son and here! I'm going to rule that not so much a slow roll as a big moment roll. If someone disagrees with you, I just heard a Finn say slow roll. Yeah, the Finns also think these hats are a good idea. They didn't work out last year, and they're not doing so hot this year either. Bad juju. Kirko at risk and way behind. Big Toro stack about to get even bigger. Let's see a flop. Queen 9 8. That does give Coco some hope. He's got nine outs. Oh, now he wants it quiet. A queen for trips. A jack for two pair. A 10 for a straight. The three on the turn. You guys, he said, shh. Coco is a 76% favorite to go out in fifth. But he gets there on the river again. Huge double up. Aces cracked. And is there an audio problem? Because this place is silent. Blinds, 120,000, 240,000 with a 30k ante. Luca Fiorini. Ace Jack. Well, forehanded, this is pretty dang strong. He starts the hand with 6.4 million. He raises to 625,000. Hold it around to Tom Middleton in the big blinds. Pocket Queens! Uh, you know those ladies are saying, boy, aren't you glad you didn't take that deal. You guys shut up for a second, I got a hand. He's going for the big chips. Three back coming. Okay, I'm only in. Fiorini shoves and Middleton calls. Forehanded, there was really no other way this could go. And high variance situations like this are the exact reason why a talented player would make a deal until he backs out. Fiorini looking for an ace. It's a 10 9 4 flop. He's set to depart unless he hits one of his three outs on the turn or river. It's a queen on the turn. Yes, it's a set for Middleton. Good card for you. But it gives Fiorini a straight draw. Quarter of the crowd thought that was a good card for Fiorini. The other three quarters thought it was a good card for Tom. 100% of the crowd shouted for nearly no reason. He's looking for a king or an eight. It's a nine, a full house for Middleton. Fiorini is out in fourth place. So far, Middleton and Israel are loving the fact that they did not take that deal. 
Please, guys, a little bit of sensitivity for Luca Fiorini. Blind still 120-240. Middleton on the button, folds. Cresta Nielsen in the small blind. Grace. King eight of diamonds. And he makes it. 480,000. Crescent should probably raise a little bigger, small to big. Kimo's gonna call with all but his absolutely worst hands. Can make it more, or just limping's cool too. 7 4 suited. Far from unplayable. Kirko defends, and we go heads up to the flop. Happy to see a flop for cheap with that hand. Wow, flop better, Kimo. Rut row. Despite the fact that he's drawing deader than the crew of the Black Pearl, I do like a bet here. Nielsen continues with top pair. How is Kirko going to play his straight? He should probably just call here. No reason to blow out so many hands that are drawing deader than the crew of the Black Pearl. Looks like he's raising. That's a big stack of greens. 1.41 million. How much? Kirko's very lucky he's up against a hand as strong as top pair. I assume Big Toro's calling at least one more street. Hang on a sec. Please. He re-raises! Nielsen three bets to over three million! No, 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 no. There's no reason to play a gigantic pot out of position with just top pair and not even top kicker. This race is only ever getting called by hands that are kicking you around like Patrick Swayze and Roadhouse. I think the only bigger mistake that can be made on this hand is if Kimo folds. Call it. He shoves! I call. And Nielsen calls! And once he three back, Creston definitely had to call the all in. He's not drawing totally dead. Straight front. Swara. He's drawing pretty thin. Kirko's a 91% favorite. This happens sometimes when you win too many hands, you think you're invincible. Oh, Big Toro picks up outs. An eight or a five would see him double up. Maybe he is invincible. The river card is a queen. Big Toro is terminated. Okay. Okay. Sorry, man. Sorry about the deal. This town's been pretty good to Bulls of late. They banned bullfighting in 2012 and in 2013. Preston the Killer, a.k.a. Big Toro, gored his way into third place in the EPT and into our hearts. 7-3 suited for Kimo on the button. And he just limps. Middleton checks his option with Jack-8. I know it sounds weird, but with how deep they are, Kimo probably should have raised. Six tray deuce. Karko with a pair. Not a bad flop for seven tray. Middleton leads, betting 600,000. Probably just a good spot to call with middle pair, see what happens. Kimo calls. Better part of 1.9 million in the middle. Six of hearts on the turn. Middleton picks up a flush draw. That's a good slash bad turn card for Kimo. Middleton now checks. He's probably gonna have the best hand a lot, especially after Tom checks, but it's hard to get called by a worse hand. Kimo checks behind. King of Hearts, that's the flush for Midi. Let's see if he's got the wherewithal of value bet it. Once again, he goes for max value, betting two million. Boy, he knows exactly where he's at and has made a great value bet. At this point for Kimo, this is an easy fold. Once again, Kirko calls! That's round trip tickets to value dice for Kimo Kirko. Hurts the stack and it's got to hurt the will. Tom Middleton now with a huge chip advantage over Kimo Kirko. We have never hit this blind level before on the EPT. 200,000, 400,000 with a 50k ante. That's over 10 times the starting stack for the big blind. Crazy. Kimo Koko raises his button with ace four off suit. Pocket fives for Tom Middleton. Stacks are a little deep for Tom to three bet, call it off a two five, so maybe he just calls here. Nope. 
That is a three bet to two million. And I think Kirko could go either way here. And by either way, I mean fold or shove. Tom has left himself room to fold to a shove. And if Kimo thinks that'll happen a certain amount of the time, he could easily stick it in. He does shove. And Middleton calls. Lose call by Middleton. I think he's really lucky to be up against Ace-4. Tom Middleton is a 70% favorite to win the EPT Barcelona main event on this hand. That's about as big a favorite as you can be. Kimo Kirko looking for an ace. It's a 10-7-6 flop. Fives holding for now. Not a particularly dicey flop for fives. The Finn's looking for an ace. It doesn't come on the turn. It has to come on the river, or we have a champion here in Spain. Three outs for the Finn. That is not one of them, which means Tom takes the title. Middleton is on Toppleton. He was the chip leader at the start of day three, day four, day five, and day six at the start of the final table, and now he is an EPT winner, joining his friends Jake Cody and Toby Lewis in that elite circle. Also, let's not forget, good game, Kimo Kirko. But it's time for Hit the Hole to Hit the Bar. <laughs> More memories from EPT Barcelona, but it's time to create some new ones. Hello, my babies. Once again, it's EPT 2022, day five of the main event from Casino Barcelona. We're at the unofficial final table. Nine players remain. That's all nine of them. Patrick Garrosh still crushing. 99 big blinds with nine players remaining. Scott Margerison second in chips. Pinto, Costo, Guerrero all with healthy stacks. Then things start getting a little awkward. Ben Dinelli, Fischl, Kowalski all with those awkward 20 to 30 big blind stacks. And it's Kahan Mockery who is still in the danger zone. Joe Stapleton, Nicholas Walsh. Hello, hello. And Sam Grafton. Hello, guys. All in the booth here to call the action. The aim is to get down to the final six players. Everyone now guaranteed 150,000 euros. 152,000 to be exact. And there are massive ladders to be had for every elimination at this point. Look at this, we've got little rails forming as well. Check rail, and uh, no doubt the Brazilians will be out in force to support their boy as Kowalski gets deeper. Um, the Brazilians are multiplying as they do. Build it and they will come. Shoeless Joe Jackson is going to appear at any moment. Ease his pain. <laughs> Yeah, I was out there just a moment ago, and those rails getting big and noisy, too. The hype is real. Final table, let's go. Good luck, Scott. One spilt beer, though, and the electronics on the whole <laughs> just goes up in flames. I got in trouble for eating a hot dog over the table, so. <laughs> Giuliano Bendinelli kicking things off with a fold. Action over to Kahan Mockery, who has also folded. Now we're on Jimmy Guerrero. Jimmy's got King Queen. Yeah, quite a character, Jimmy. Been on the scene a long time. I think primarily a live cash game guy. Uh, plays with a lot of uh, flair, has a lot of flair personally. And uh, nice to see him really, really deep. Um, feature of most stops. Jimmy's made it very fun today, both with his play, his table talk, his demeanor. 
He's yeah, kind of lost it a couple of times. <laughs> Got a little silly. I can imagine. Uh, many of the times I've been on the river betting into him, and he gives me a little speech. Well, Sam, oh, he's always like. He actually came to the table today, Sam, and he went. Uh, yeah, you guys, I know we've crossed the bubble. I've got my own bubble. I need to come 11th no? to break even for the trip because I lost so much playing cash. They are correct, yes. Well, he beat that. Yeah, he's burst his bubble, so now anything now is all profitable. Kowalski's been a force in this tournament, somewhat handcuffed right now by his 22 big blind stack. Artisanal sourdough, ace five suited. Kowalski shoves over the top of Guerrero. He could make this a bit bigger, right? Jesus. We don't see anything outside there. How much is that? Yeah, and King Queen, obviously, a frustrating hand uh, to have here. I think it's just an experience we all have. Whatever level we play at in poker, it's one of the first things you sort of experience where you're aware this is a really good hand, and then you just can't shake that feeling, oh, any ace high is ahead of me, right? right. And, uh, you know, that, that feeling I think we have when we play the, the first couple of poker tournaments is actually sort of uh, replicated here, where King Queen, very unlikely to be dominating. Perhaps there is actually a couple of combos in this exact instance. Uh, and, you know, let's give credit to Kowalski as well. Very brave to pull the trigger in a high pressure situation. Not necessarily against someone that's going to be super, super loose to themselves. But just, uh, you know, uh, this is a hand that, that we do want to jam very often. And Kowalski, very experienced. We've seen him obviously on the online streams as well, Joe. We have a mutual match. Yeah, I think... From the flip side of that, shoving ace five here and you get called by King Queen, you're not super happy about it either. Uh, the Joe Stapleton school of, if you if you did a poker book, it would be my glass is half empty. <laughs> Joe Stapleton on the Joe Stapleton on hold him. <laughs> you definitely can't make it high, high stakes if you look at ace five suited and don't get excited, Joe. This is this is the first mental. Barrier. I like ace five suited. In fact, it's one of the few things I've picked up from watching you guys play is that I will occasionally rip it in with ace five suited <laughs> uh, in a spot where I normally wouldn't. Uh, and it's freeing. It feels good. I've never been called. Yeah, Malcolm Gladwell pretty pissed off because you've done your 10,000 hours of watching and you've get, all you've gained is like an occasional, yeah. 10,000 hours and I, I learned to fire as much. Can you put the micro? They are a great club. The problem is I don't have 10,000 hours playing. No, of course not. I have 10,000 hours watching people play. I'm one of the best in the business watching people. But, you know, of course, that's why you're a world-class comedian, right? You've done your 10,000 hours, so... Um, yeah, Kowalski, of course, unknown by, uh, known online by his very creative squeaky ah. name of Kowalski One. Yeah. Are we all having fun? <laughs> Fabiano, having fun. Kowalski One, Kowalski. Oh, <laughs> At least it wasn't a long process. He's like, Kowalski, take it. <laughs> Kowalski <laughs> One. You know what, in. In. what is also outdated about the screen names of this table is, I feel like Scott picked well, Agro Santos as a sort of like, ha, ha, ha. Imagine if they think I'm Brazilian. They're going to think <laughs> I'm so terrible. So I'm going to pick like Agro Santos. He, he, he. Well, you know, egg on your face, Scott, because actually there's no Englishman anywhere deep in any event while the Brazilians are over are being overtaken. They're going to be calling it be calling themselves Agro Scott probably <laughs> in, in Sao Paulo. You know? Right. <laughs> Agro Bob. How do I make the whitest name possible so people will think I suck? Agro Winston. Yeah. You want to sound as English as possible. Can you put the macro? They took such offense at the screen name they, that collectively the entire nation decided to become incredibly good at poker. <laughs> We've had enough. We're not going to be mocked by this guy. It happened with Spain. Like, I used to, like, goof on Spain constantly. Like, oh, was, you know, oh yeah. I, you see the... The Team Pro Spain patch. You're like, D don't worry about it. Don't, don't worry. And then, then what's his name? Mateos ruined it for all of us. And he's not the only one. He was just yeah. the, the forefather. Yeah, he's ruined it for plenty of us. Scott, with a King-9 suited here, deciding how to play it. Uh, whether just to flat <laughs> or to three bet and, and knock out some hands. Decides just to call. Obviously, pretty deep stack against Costa. He's jacked for Ben and Ellie. This is the best hand. Oh, there's so much dead money out there, Sam. 
I feel like this is a pretty nice squeeze spot. Yeah, it just depends on his interpretation of how Costa's going to play. But this, definitely having the small blind money in there, which, as you say, is essentially dead, won't have much of a flat and then call off range, makes it a, certainly a more appetizing shove. But because of the ICM implications, he's going to just sure. elect to sure. flat, uh, keep in some dominating ha hands, exactly as Costa has. As Costa has. You know, Kahan, very short. The 11 big blinds is, 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 is playing into this, the way this hand playing out. And what a flop for Costa. I do want to uh, mention blinds 80,000, 160,000 with a 160,000 big blind ante. The chips of over 2,280 players are in play right now. What a flop for Costa here. Queen high, two clubs, the steel wheel draw for Costa. Yeah, and very frustrating for Ben Dinelli. See, ace jack high can be good here yeah. some of the time. Would much prefer to have club in hand. Sam, there's a guy in chat who said the highlight of his World Series of Poker was taking a leak next to you. <laughs> Tried to say hi to you outside the bathroom, but you were coaching Nick Petrangelo. You sure it wasn't the other way around? <laughs> Actually, I did a very good... Uh, well, I don't know what I can say. But I, I, I did a very good commentator bit, which you would have approved of, Joe. Like, I went into the restroom, and there's a re it was the break from the, from the 50K or the 25K. And I stood by the urinals and very loudly shouted, between them, these whatever have over 28 million in live earnings, 12 bracelets, four WPT titles. You know. And six and a half inches. Of <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, I, I, I mean, I don't know, you know, a few people splashed themselves, actually. It got so many, so many laughs. People just zipped up way too early, just went back with specs all over their trousers. Really pleased to see Benzinelli here. Personally, he was on my day two table. They are chatting, but there's so much chat going on, it's actually hard to make out a lot of it. Yeah. Yeah, but um, I played up with him all of day two. Actually lost a pretty big <laughs> pot against him where I uh, made a light bluff catch on the river. And he had the goods, but seemed a, a, a nice lad and uh, played very, very well over the course of that day. And, uh, yeah, amazing just to, to meet him in passing. And here he is playing for the real, real big bucks. I don't know, what are we, two weeks later? 12 days later? It was a long time ago. I just thought I'd be able to. It feels like it, right? Yeah. Yeah. So Folks cool. asking about James Hardigan. James is, is feeling better. His voice not 100% yet. Not sure we'll hear from him today, but maybe tomorrow. Speedy recovery. Folds round. Button actually folds here as well, so we're now blind v blind. Bendinelli with king four off in the small blind. Yeah, and it's just a very technical spot, very difficult spot to play. Yep. Blind on blind, you need to play so many hands, yep. but yet you're against a covering stack. It's really difficult balancing of priorities. And, and Frustrated yeah. fold from Bandinelli. See a hand that you would normally very happily limp. Sure. Um, it has begun. <laughs> I love it. It has begun. I will say this. I love it. I get. I don't get rattled or nerve wracked very much in this job anymore. But when I have to do the winner interview, the trophy presentation, that part, I still find a little nerve wracking. When there's a Brazilian winner and all they're they're on the rail and I just have to say like hey let's get it and everyone just goes bananas and starts cheering that helps a lot yeah yeah so I like it I love I love when there's a whole bunch of people on the rail a lot of friends part of the reason why I don't like when we end at three four five in the morning because the rail is a lot of times mostly dispersed uh, and I like having that energy there those people there to cheer their friends on it really is an ending more fitting for a champion than someone vacuuming up confetti <laughs> in the background. Absolutely. Absolutely. Cost the folds under the gun. I was looking at the screen and I saw one card. The other one was stuck here. Yeah, and th these guys, by the way, considering the magnitude of the occasion, considering this huge, huge first prize that they're playing, every pay jump very, very meaningful. Nice to see that, you know, there's 
somewhat relaxed atmosphere, that, that there's camaraderie between the guys. See, one of the nice things about being, uh, you know, a pro or amateur on the circuit, as we sometimes call it, is, you know, the forming of friendships. And it, often it can be actually quite a bonding experience to go deep with someone and see, you know, share the high-pressure moments, see the big all-ins, um, sometimes end up going on dinner breaks together. And these guys do seem to get along pretty well. Yes, yeah, Bragg, he said that uh, the first final table he made, the UKIPT, um, that he... The got, only or the, the first? The only, sorry. F first and only. Sure. Uh, he said that he's... It's kind of almost lifelong friendships with those people, that uh, they, they have this bond that uh, cannot, cannot be broken at yeah. this point. Yeah, absolutely. If the last two players have the same number of chips at the start of heads up and the small blind folds every hand after that, who cares? <laughs> I really got to get to the end of the question before I start reading them sometimes. Heads up to the flop fours versus ace tray of diamonds. One ace, one diamond. Yeah, nice flop for Jimmy. With the backdoor flush draw, the backdoor wheel draw, the top pair. We'll check back. And what a card. Ooh. Yeah. Jimmy obviously improving to two pair, but now mm -hmm. up and down, straight draw, the deuce, the six, and the four. <laughs> and Pinto going to bet out. Can fold out two overcards occasionally. Um, or like very often, two overcards had happened to take a check back. No. Might have been nice to go for a bit of a more polarized sizing and think about pressurizing kings, queens, etc. over two streets. But Pinto seems to be just sort of setting a nice price for themselves, himself. Um, and Jimmy, no worries with calling with the two pair. Again, could have considered a raise versus that sizing. River card is the six. That is straight for Pinto. Yes, and Jimmy absolutely hating that river card. Obviously, we saw players flat things like King Nine of Hearts. Oh, and he checks oh, it wow. over. That's surprising. Pinto, maybe. Oh, checks it back. Yeah. Well played. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I'm really surprised to see that check, Sam. I just feel like it's it's a river where there's going to be tons of check backs. You know, I mean, two pair might still go ahead and, and fire, but like, you know, ace, king, ace, queen, ace, jack, that kind of thing. Yeah, pocket you, you, kings, you, pocket queens yeah, with a heart. Sure, sure. You, you just want to go ahead and just, you know, go smaller or whatever. I mean, you can interpret whichever size you want, but what I'm saying is I think you got to lead there because there's too many check backs that you can still get value from, in my opinion. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, as we saw, Jimmy not incentivized to play a big pot against another big stack at all. So you want to just do the betting yourself. Um, you have plenty. If you get raised, um, you have plenty of flushes that you can call uh, and the like. So um, it's not too terrible a situation. Very unlikely you're going to get raised in that spot. So just for some context, Pinto, we believe, has not been in the game very long. Was in a motor vehicle accident a couple years ago. Had a new lease on life. Playing poker became a part of that. So, yeah. so uh, Good for him. We have had people on the scene. Uh, chatting with him throughout the course uh, of the week, did a couple interviews. I assume if we don't hear more about that today uh, through a roll-in package, we'll probably hear about it tomorrow. Oh, lovely, lovely. I'm yeah. not privy to all the details yet. Yeah, and, and you know, you're absolutely right to flag up that, of course, for slightly less experienced place, players, obviously erring on the side of caution is going to be, you know, a quite reasonable decision. I think from a strategic point of view, uh, you know, Nick's absolutely right. This is a, this is a hand where we want to do the betting ourselves. But that context, uh, Joe, makes makes the check a lot more understandable. If you guys could allow me to speak on behalf of the amateur, sp speak, speak on behalf of a less experienced player. The little guy. Um, the, the desire to trap is it's, it's is strong. is very it's, strong. It's deep set. It's very very strong. In fact, uh, the name of the co I wrote a poker themed comic book that's coming out in the next year, uh, graphic novel, and it's called Trapped. Well, because that's really something that it's a very good feeling. You don't understand all these spots where, like I need to bet here because my opponent's not going to fall for it. Like a good player is just going to check back. You can't really trap 
a lot of players yeah. these do you, days. Do you want to say that again? Trapped. Trapped. Avail T-R-A-P-E-D. Available at all good bookstores. <laughs> we're just plugging our own stuff, Nick. Is this what we're doing? We're just... We're just uh, we're, we're actually in talks right now for Dark Horse Comics to release it. That's really exciting. Yeah. That's so very exciting. It's coming out either way. But we're deciding whether or not we want to go with Dark Horse. Speaking of Trapped, uh, I have a new webinar coming out. No. <laughs> Speaking of Trapped, uh, I'm in this booth for another hour. <laughs> uh, That's really exciting, Joe. Yeah, uh, Joe, she sent me the first chapter to look over. I'm very excited to, to see what that looks like. I'm, I'm down to get opinions on it, Sam. If you'll read the first chapter, I'm, uh, they, sure. they want me to send it to my prominent poker friends to see if we can get some buzz. Oh, oh, oh yeah, I mean, I, I can see why he sent it to me first. I, understand. I completely understand. <laughs> Nick's the only one that has it right now. <laughs> I think Sam's opinion definitely needed. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to help you I'm any way I can, mate. Love that. And Pinto folding you know 10 8 of hearts on the cutoff. And we get to. Haven't seen much of. Shield. Walter Lemon says, speaking of traps, my 15th anniversary is next week. Very <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. Okay. There's a lot we can go with this, guys. Uh, I was kind of surprised to see the 10-8 suited not played from the cutoff there, Sam. What do you think, buddy? Mate, we've established this guy's top top boy. No more no more criticism of this guy's strategy. Uh, no, 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 no. I, I, I think the fold is also completely acceptable as well. But, you know, um, as, as one of the uh, one of the big boy ship leaders here, 68 big blinds, you know, and especially with one of the shorter stacks on the button, I feel like you, I feel like just, yeah. just just as a note, you probably can open up your range. Yeah, absolutely. Bit. Opening into Kayan in the big blind as well. Um, definitely a hand I would have would have considered opening, but uh, look at this. By the way, this is this yeah. is absolute scenes, and it's it's fitting that we actually showed the Tom Middleton rail. Obviously, that was such a remarkable final table, very memorable both for the Finnish presence on that final table, which which added a huge amount of energy. <laughs> Some iconic this, photos. Yeah, this, and then, this harkens to that. And, and then also uh, Tom Middleton, one of the one of the absolute greats of the game. And, uh, you know, a lot of, yeah, very intoxicated British rail. <laughs> That's crazy. I've, I've actually sort of known of MIDI or been around MIDI for like 20, like, well, no, like something like 12 years or something. Never had a chance to sit down with them really. And then in Monte Carlo, uh, we actually had a really nice conversation. I was like, I've known you, like, you know, ever since I was a dealer in the casino. We were very similarly aged as well. So it's really nice to catch up with Sam. And I would have loved to have seen some of those. Those looked like really, really great moments. Yeah, absolutely amazing guy, uh, Tom Middleton. He's actually someone, when you go, when, when we first used to go PCA, um, like back in the day, you know, no one would notice me. But even like Toby Lewis, like... Pab, you know, maybe even more, but every American would be, Midi, oh, there's Midi, they would want to come on. Like he was, you know. Hit the hole. Yeah, hit the hole, exactly. The hole. He loves the game and he loves some well-known players here. <laughs> Redacted. Look, look, it's okay to have loved Woody Allen's earlier works before we knew who Woody Allen was. <laughs> What a comparison. What, what an LA comparison. You can separate the art from the artist. <laughs> <laughs> Mockery all in from the small blind. Guerrero with an ace. Guerrero makes the call. Flamboyantly. He hasn't looked at his other cards, so it's going to be good news for Kayan. Mockery is live. <laughs> Jimmy trying to convince him to run the cards with the, the second card face down. Jimmy. Jimmy's getting cheeky. I can't believe this isn't just another ace going to be whipped over. Like, Mongri, Mongri's in this spot. Mongri, Mongri actually made that spectacular bluff. I saw that on Twitter. Unbelievable. We're going to see that very shortly. <laughs> love, love to see that. And, and so much excitement in the background. Everyone excited at the prospect of going up the ladder and getting to the official final table, but it uh, would be lovely to see Kay Han. King oh. Eye Flop, there is a deuce, but Mockery in good shape to double. Kayan is ahead. I'm loving this atmosphere, you guys. Wince of frustration for Jimmy. Obviously, a very important pot for him Ooh. as well. Yes, Mockery's tournament life is on the line, but Guerrero... He's going to be wounded by this if he doesn't catch up, and he does not. A double up for Mockery. <laughs> when 
when I was in the room, you could see it, you could hear other, other sides of the rail, either side of the rail, sort of uh, goading each other, representing their, their countries respectively. Yeah, and, and, and you can see Jimmy, for all his humor and, and flamboyancy and good grace, he knows that was a significant pop for him as well. Uh, not only with the short stack sticking around, but also denting his stack, pulling yeah. him a bit, you know, rather than catching up with the, towards the chip leaders, pulling him back down towards the short stack. Jimmy down to 30 big blinds now. <laughs> Sam, you mentioned Kahan Mockery's audacious bluff. It was against Peterson Machado. Now, we're not going to show that particular thing, but we did speak to Kahan about that bluff just a short while ago. Was like 10 big. Yeah. Kayan Mukri, 28, and I'm a professional poker player. 850,000. Oh. Wow. On that turn card, like, when I check raised the turn, this is what went through my head. Of course, you can have a royal flush, and I'm out. But, you know, you got, sometimes you got to go for it. It was on TV, even. Once I raised the turn, there was no going back. You know, hope you can get away and not too, lose too much. And then making your own luck and turning that what was once such a powerful top pair on the flop into a bluff. I felt like people get a bit scared at this stage. You gotta put the pressure on. Show them you're not afraid to give them help. Can I see how you have it? I love the way he is right away. Yeah, the, no, the stacks of yellow. I thought he had like queens or ace queen. I thought he had a set or maybe even a straight, but you're calling for your tournament life and, and we're playing like a massive pot at this stage. There must be thousands of things going through his head at that point. All in. Yeah, and he goes all in. It was balls, yeah. The biggest hand of EPT Barcelona 2022. Yes. So sick. Yes. Gets the set to fold. Great play from Mockery. Well done. Luckily, it folded, and uh, yeah, it was a good pot. Fortune favors the bold. Actually, really cool to see that, because I was not in the booth at the time. That was my first time. And uh, wow, to be able to pull off a move like that at that stage of a tournament, any stage of a tournament, honestly, yeah. it's a gear a lot of us don't have. <laughs> yeah, it's just super exciting when you see um, the, the sort of... Uh, intricacies of poker theory come together with just heart and courage yeah. and composure. Um, you know, the, 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 the two sort of sides of poker coming together there in a really, really remarkable hand. And it's no surprise to see Kahan still at the final, um, you know, if he's playing at anything like that level. Yeah, interesting flat from Scott here. Can think about nice. three betting this. Uh, this would have been the way gone. I would have gone, but uh, gone. at the same time, uh, gonna play well in position now that he gets it head, heads up. Yeah, you don't have to three bet big either. It's kind of just to isolate, right? You kind of want to get this heads up when you're UTG plus one. So many players to act behind, you can still call. Yeah, and, and you're just playing a very, very narrow range. You don't need to necessarily split it, I would have thought. But, of course, Scott, a top, top, top player in his own right and will have a strong sense of how he wants to play his range <coughs> and approach. Uh, Kowalski. See, some interaction for Kowalski. Um, you know, long-time viewers will immediately spot that gut shot, the three flush. Definitely not a terrible board for Kowalski. Um, gonna check it over to Scott. Three flush, he doesn't have a speed. Who's got the strongest range by far. Action on Mark Jerison. Looks like a relatively small bet into this pot. 400,000. Yeah, and now how does Kowalski want to proceed? Do we want to match this with the stronger parts of our range and raise? Or do we want to play it more passively? Really wouldn't want to predict which direction Kowalski will go in. 
Harsh but fair comment from Xpec who says, let's see if Scott folds top pair, top kicker again. Again, Pinto on the hand right before the break. Shoved with no pair with Ace King on a river <laughs> where some draws came in and got Margerison to fold Ace Queen on a Queen high board. Wow. wow. Yeah, I mean, this is a stage of the tournament where people will lay down hands. Um, neither player super excited to see that turn. Obviously, the playability of King Jack plummeting uh, and there will be the occasional flush in Kowalski's range so like his jacks and tens with the spade uh, are going to pick up equity and for that reason Scott might feel confident enough to bet again for protection against a hand like um, King Queen with a, with, a spe with a Queen of Spades or such like get value now Here's a question, though, Sam. Do you think that Kowalski, as the initial opener, would probably bet most of his flush draws on the flop as, you know, like first to act? Or do you think maybe he's more likely to check back with his ace-high flushes on the flop or something like that? What do you think? I, I mean, I would play no no bets as Kowalski. Okay. Yeah. I think, like, Scott's just got a very, very strong range here, right, flag right. plus one, yeah. and you need to you need to play your whole range as a check. And awesome. I think Kowalski would, would, would play it like that. And Scott picking up some chips. Obviously, uh, a fan favorite, I'm sure, Griffin. Has already <laughs> waxed lyrical about the great Scott Margerison. See a new father as well, uh, playing for nappy money out there. Maybe that's why he's a bit more focused and not just punting it off in level four. Griffin's so transparent too, by the way. Like Griffin, he's got like a cushy schedule. He comes out at 4 p.m. He like kicks in the door. He's like, "Hey, what's up? I'm here. Does anyone know how Scott Margerison's doing?" I'm like, "What?" Every time. It's not so important. Obviously, the, the thing with the thing with Griff is he's so both charming and persistent and exploitative. Who knows whether he even got a swap through? I mean, he's been wielding playing the friend card. Like, oh, bro, can I just buy three percent? I'm in the booth. I'd love to sweat. Like, he gets you at your most vulnerable. You're at you're in a club or a bar. You're like a little hug and just whisper, you know, sweaty man, just to get him to go away. Sometimes people succumb to that. Just a bit of advice, new poker players out there, never, never give action to Griffin. Goodness Griffin. gracious. No, I'm, if I'm in the booth, I'll talk really nice about you. Yeah. And yeah, wow. sure enough, he's just been Mate, like, oh, there's my boy. Great guy. Excellent yeah. poker player. Exposing a scandal. Pieces for compliments. Cash, <laughs> cash, for, cash for compliments. Scandal goes through the EPT. You want to make it in this business, kid? Yeah, you better... Better be good to me. You gotta grease the right palms. Hello. He's also uh, got the sad puppy dog look down too. Like when you like yesterday, he's like, "Hey, you want to get a drink?" And I was like, "I don't think I can." And he just like shoulders drop, head droops. Yeah, I mean, he's got no morals whatsoever. He's, he's probably told you. He, I turned him down in PCA, and he, he sent his girlfriend, his adorable partner, over to to. to Monsieur Grafton. Oh, please. Yeah. And je suis un peace pour. <laughs> yeah. S'il vous plaît. Exactly. And Mogri deciding that he can just three bet the king's hit with the top of the range uh, and try and induce right, something please. from Costa. Nine, seven of spades. Obviously, you would think one of the lighter opens that Costa would make. Yeah. And for that reason, no sort of blocking uh, properties towards top of range, just lets it go. And Mokri, who started my shift here, and let's be honest, that's all that's important. That's That bookmarks the start of the day in, in my eyes. Uh, moving from the shortest stack, now overtaking Kowalski <laughs> official. And Kowalski, who um, lost that hand with King Jack, is the shortest stack on under 20 big blinds. And the Brazilian rail continues to grow and grow. I wouldn't expect it to stop anytime soon. It's happy hour. Do they, do, do they pack that flag, Joe? They're like, okay, we're going to need this, <laughs> We you guys. discussed this in the last level. We think so. <laughs> we think they hand it to you at Brazilian Customs as you're leaving the country. <laughs> no. It's just folded up real tight. You just pull a string on it, it blows open like a, like a life preserver on an airplane. <laughs> Pocket sevens for Pinto. Got a crawl going right now about the PSPC coming back to the Bahamas. Very excited for a new 
hotel room that I get to defile. Let's go. Cable Beach. <laughs> Baja Mar. I'm excited for that, too. That's going to be great. Yeah, your graphic novel will be out around about that time, I think. That's January. <laughs> All good bookstores. Let's hope Read so. it on the plane on the way to Bahama. <laughs> and Kowalski, again, it's kind of a frustrating thing on finals. You know, uh, again, something amateurs say, you start at the beginning of the career, but rings true. Along, all along the way, you kind of either want really good hands or really bad hands. These sort of middle strength hands, kind of nothing much you could do with them. Uh, we'll release the ace 10 off. And Speaking of middle strength hands, yeah. a little bit different when you're in the big blind and you are closing the action and you are second in chips. Pinto's third in chips could be a potentially big clash here. <laughs> Agro Santos, 9-9-6. Nine, nine, so Not a terrible board for sevens. Yeah, Absolutely great board for sevens, but sort of balanced against the fact that, you know, the, 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 the paired boards, particularly a bit lower than this, do are very check favorable check. for the big blind. Nightmare scenario is to get check raised. But do you think Pinto's going to want to go ahead and bet and protect the sevens? And quite a big sizing here, actually, on the 996. Some players would elect to bet a little bit smaller than this, just because it's a board that's very hard to hit and get a lot of immediate folds. And then when Scott does continue, it's sometimes just with a nine that has you in bad Big, check. big trouble, yeah. yeah but uh, Pinto gets it done, and he'll just uh, be happy to pick up the pot. Good fuck, yeah. Uh, I had a good hand. It was a good fluff for my hand. Both? Back your both? Look at this, Scott being a bit salty. That's good. <laughs> he yeah. loved this. Even, by the way, Scott, Scott, I hope uh, Griffin this said this, has been moaning in oh, oh, <laughs> this yeah. result for a long time. Oh, it's <laughs> no, unbelievable, yeah, mate. Like Every time, oh, mate, so, you, this, they play so bad. I feel Scott. like I would get along great. I want to protect yeah. my Scott. hand. <laughs> despite, despite the fact that he's final table, I don't know, the Colossus won W Coop scoops. Yeah, no, I don't know. I mean, when we were covering all the online poker during those years at home, uh, Agro Santos popped up a lot. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. It's definitely not his uh, first. He's had a fair. The, the, the results to moaning ratio is a bit out of kilter. The equi equilibrium is off. I feel like his avatar is like a, a garden gnome. Uh, could be. Does that sound familiar? <laughs> What a lot of useless information is in your head, Joe Staples. And I wish I could remember what I'm supposed to do, you know, <laughs> sure. when I'm in the small blind with Ace King offsuit and it's gone raise, re raise. But I remember that Agro Santos had a garden gnome <laughs> avatar. as an avatar. Here is Kowalski. He's prepared in case there's a cold spell in Barcelona. He's got a scarf just in case. <laughs> I thought it was a comedy necktie. <laughs> and this is a very strong hand on the button. When you've just got 19 big blinds. Oh, yes. And Ben Dinelli. We saw him take the low variance line with Ace Jack. But this combo. Just a blocker. Only covers Kowalski by a bit. Very delicate situation for Bendinelli. I think some players would elect to jam here just to fold out the Broadway holdings, the suited connectors. But he elects to call. And we can see that's absolutely the right decision against Kowalski's holding. Other than folding. <laughs> yes. Well, that would be clairvoyant. So I will. <laughs> I, I would. I would. I have a bad feeling here. I'm going to fold Ace Five. Uh, three to the wheel. Yes. And Kowalski. Gonna feel like Ace Jack is still good pretty often, but t certainly totally whiffs the flop. Really interesting to see how this hand is going to play out. 
you think Ace-5 ever check raises here? I mean, you've got so much showdown with the Ace. It's kind of, like, interesting, but I feel like probably you don't want to be check raising when you actually have some kind of showdown here as often. Well, you... Yeah, it's not so much that you have showdown. I mean, uh, the, the thing here is you don't have as much 3, 6, and 5. You're folding a bit more under ICM. So maybe you are allowed to check raise it some of the time. Obviously, right. it would be... And also, Kowalski can't continue and float every ace that dominates you as perhaps he could for chips. So it's a bit of a balance, but yeah, I think continuing through call is certainly reasonable and great turn card for Bendinelli. For Bendinelli. Bendinelli picks up a pair. Obviously, we can see it gives him a, total, a very commanding lock on this hand. Obviously, for him... It's not going to be as comfortable. There are still plenty of hands that are ahead of the ace five. Plenty of hands with strong, strong equity against the ace five. But really nice to turn a pair. Means you can get to the river now very, very often. And what does Kowalski want to do? a pretty important moment here, Sam. Like, he's only Checks got 16 back. big blinds. And the turn action will greatly impact the way the rest of this hand plays out. The king of clubs. Yeah, very interesting river. Obviously a river that changes nothing against the actual hands, but one that is much, much better for Bendinelli than for... Sorry, for Kal Kowalski, I should say. Much, much better for Kowalski and his range than Bendinelli. I think both players have considerable showdown, though. I don't know if Kowalski's going to want to turn his hand into a bluff if it, if it is checked to him. You know, Ace-Jack is going to be winning here a lot of the time. But if he thinks he can get some deuce-x, four-x to fold, then maybe he will. And see, Kowalski doesn't immediately check back. What will he do? It does well, make sense that, that Bandinelli's going to have a 5-6 or something of that nature some of the time. A 4-3, a queen-4. There are hands you can get to fold. You're obviously opening way tighter than normal on the button as well. So you're a bit... No, and he checks yeah. back, and it's a resigned check back. Realizes he doesn't show down for much. And Bendinelli. Things really gone against Fabiano Kowalski. Yeah, that was a crucial pot for Kowalski. Down to 16 big blinds now. Not the extreme danger zone, but certainly one foot over the line. Yeah. Of course, he's super experienced. He won't get rattled by this decline in stack size, but definitely a bit of frustration. <clears throat> Look at that. You can just see such contrasting emotions there. Even though it's okay. just a four or five big blind pot, yeah, an actual up. dollar value worth, I mean, I mean a, small, a small fortune yeah. for most of us. Yeah, and, you know, one smiling, turning to his rail and chatting, and Kowalski looking glum. Speaking of small fortunes, worth mentioning, what's on the line right now? Everyone guaranteed 152,000 euros right now. If you manage to last one more spot, you make more or less 200 grand. So we're talking, we're talking almost a 50K difference, 46,000 euros just for not going out next. Yeah, and obviously you're just not playing this big very often in your career. Even as very, very experienced NTT players, Ooh, this baby. is like once or twice a career. And you really want to just make the most of the opportunity and maximize your EV in each and every hand. And, you know, while things have gone against Kowalski, everything coming up mockery, the ascent continues. As a, I feel like someone's destined to have aces now that I've said this without <laughs> just going around the cards. But, um, you know, very, very nice. Yarsh with ace Deuce suited. Mockery has raised the minimum. And yeah, and some chip leaders would go after this open uh, with a hand like this. This chip leader has been quiet for a little while. Been pretty chatty, pretty active all day. Yeah, and just thinks better of it. Um, realizing the strength of Mockery. He knew 5 4 suited was also out there. Over to Bendinelli in the small blind. Also has four high. Just taking his time anyway. So good. 
Bendinelli out. One player left to get through. And it's uh, Pinto with Jack five. nine. 3.7 behind. Good. Definitely a hand folks are going to defend pretty regularly. Yeah, so just for reference, guys, Mokri starting the hand with about 25 big blinds here when he opens the Kings. So a few Shields up. Shields down. Makes the call. Mokri. Third from the bottom to start this hand. Nine in the window. Top pair for Pinto. Two diamonds as well. Mockery has the better diamond draw. Yeah, and this is just dream flop for Mockery. Almost no two pairs possible. And quick bat from the Norwegian. And Pinto, top pair, a backdoor diamond draw. Just make him look like a jerk and fold. Soul read, let's go. <laughs> just it's not a folding of top pair based on a feeling, in my opinion. Just to Vidi could tie him, just like, yeah. check it, just check his pulse. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You've got too, it. You're too relaxed, I'm out. You blinked your eyes, sir, you have a set. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I want to... I, I, one presumes this isn't a time bank about calling. It's a time bank about do we proceed through raise or call with this hand. Them's look like raisin chips. Yes. Protection, obviously, somewhat important for uh, the top pair. You have to balance that against the fact that your opponent raised to 1.3. Wow. And at this... That, that seems a little large for a man of my taste. <laughs> and oh Man, that is huge, though. Yeah, and Mokri's just thinking, okay, does he just have uh, a, a, an ace nine or a, a good hand that I can stack now? Or is there any bluffs that I sort of want to keep in? Do I want to just put it all in and, and go against 10, eight of diamonds here and now? I, 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 think uh, it, I think it's just a jam. There's so much dead money in there now, Sam. You know what I mean? It's like uh, it's over half of the stack now at this point. Yeah. Of course, Montcreek going to balance a little bit against the times he has a, a tougher decision than Pocket Kings. Maybe he should soul read him and fold. <laughs> Do a really good yeah, you, you love your hand. I can tell you've got a great hand there. I'm out. 1.3. Too rich for my blood. We have a Triangle me, mm. dealer. Yes. And this this is the, the, the little bit of inexperience for, from Pinto, perhaps. Uh, he's raised, uh, wanting to protect his hand, feeling good. And, but now once his opponent goes all in, this nine really shrivels up in value. Really shrivels up. Of course, very now also even the jack of diamonds works a little bit against you, right? Yeah. You, you've ruled out queen jack of diamonds, king jack of diamonds, ace jack of diamonds. But surrendering the hand and giving up all the equity... Um, you know, with the backdoor flush draw on the top pair. That's also not an appetizing pros prospect. You turn like a, a, a reasonable so situation into a more. very difficult one. What? And I really yeah, feel so for Pinto here. Yeah. Very unappealing situation to find you yourself in. The cameras, the lights, the rail. This is where the pressure of the moment sort of... I wasn't the, uh, the Pinto... Barrel, what's, what's he saying? But knowing you, you could have everything. <laughs> oh, that's true. Mockery does have a re reputation. You really could. You really could have an up and down here. You could have a flush draw. Up and down. You could even have pocket eights, pocket nines. Uh, pocket sevens, I mean. Yeah, you're doing well against eights, not against nines. Maybe four or five. When you don't see the snap call, you're like, yes, this was the right play with yeah. the Kings. Yeah, all the things he naming, <laughs> he's naming are things that Kings are. He calls. Wow, Pinto makes the call. Mockery in a great spot to double. Have to be lucky. Boer negen, open negen. Ik moet een boer of een negen hebben. King, yeah. And we've got a Dutch rail on the scene as well now. He could have an overpair, but he... Yeah. No, he does have an overpair. Confirmed. Wow, look at the atmosphere here on the EBT final table. 
<laughs> calling for um, <laughs> support from the rat. Calling for the suck out. Mockery, 80% to double up. I don't know if I can handle this kind of heartbreak again. We saw Kalidou So go out in brutal fashion with Kings last night. Yeah, and that's a good card for Mor Nathan Mockery. Nathan Actually Nathan takes... Nathan no, it doesn't take any outs. It doesn't change anything. It's certainly not a bad card. Yeah. And that is a flush for both players. Mockery with the King High flush. Pinto, Jack High. Ship it to Mockery. And Mockery's, look at this, gonna just take a moment with his friends. Big, he, big, big moment for him. Man. Uh, look at this, I mean, I, I'm getting a bit of FOMO. This looks like the best fun that you could ever possibly have uh, at a poker table, really. And the Dutch are back on their fights. <laughs> yes. Uh, you know, big swing in Destiny. This is a very capable and talented player who's ascended from 19 big blinds to over 50 now. Yeah. Fourth in chips. Yeah, this is actually terrible news for Fabiano Kowalski, who is now the shortest stack at 16 big blinds. How much he has for the 3.5? Uh, big change of fortune. Pinto still around. 45 bigs is. I don't want to. Sam mentioned. Sam mentioned FOMO right now. I don't want folks to have FOMO for future events, specifically the PSPC. Bro, don't forget about my backyard, EPT London. <laughs> Come on, mate. Leather jackets for everyone. Well, PSPC coming up in January. Platinum Pass is still up for grabs. There is a Mega Path free roll on Stars tonight. Just putting that out there. Also confirmed. By the way, uh, producer Paul confirms that uh, Agro Santos Avatar is a gnome. <laughs> yeah, I don't, uh, by the way, I just want to point out that. Yeah. You know, Bahamas hasn't got you know, anything that, that you know, my land I know, I know. and uh, the, <laughs> the old Kent Road doesn't have. Old Kent Road. <laughs> uh, October. Both Kent Roads will be <laughs> in London. October in London sounds delightful to me. Anyway, I mean, there is an electric atmosphere on this final table. And, uh, you know, we've not lost the player, but a big change, a little tap at the table from Scott <laughs> like Garrison. Uh, uh, <laughs> Great to see, <laughs> see them with smile on faces. Yeah. This is, all, everyone just seems... Uh, I mean, rightly so, in great spirits, appreciating, uh, you know, the good fortune it takes to be on a big t uh, final table like this, the huge money that they've already locked up, and, uh, you know, that won't mean that it's not all business when they're in hands, but it certainly seems like a great camaraderie. Yeah, Sam, I couldn't agree more. Uh, dare I say it, I think this is the most exciting rail final table situation we've seen from any EPT this year so far. It's like, the energy in Barcelona has just been amazing already, but with so many people there, like, how often is it you can sit and play poker and then stand up and high-five your friends when you win a pot, you know what I mean? It's just not a thing that happens in real life, usually, you know. Very, very interesting dynamic here at Barcelona. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, cool. Everyone chatting with uh, yeah. someone next to him or whatever. Take my advice. <laughs> I will. I'll imagine, it out. imagine popping down to your local uh, two-five game, and then every time you win a pot, you turn around and high-five all your mates in the casino. You know? Yes. Absolutely. Of course, of course. Yeah. Yeah. So Mokri's going to fold under the gun there. Yeah. Look, at, look at that. You can see, by the way, how energized he is by that double. He knows that he's in for a shot for this title now. Uh, <laughs> someone that seems very, very confident in their own, the strength of their own game and their capabilities. <laughs> yeah, not a guy you want to give more ammunition to. And I mean, that's just such a big boost. To him. Up to 52 big blinds now. He's just in such a great position to, uh, to continue and ladder. And on this final table, those ladders are massive. The actual value, dollar value of those chips right now, absolutely huge, as Sam's already mentioned. Yeah, and Pinto gonna tangle with the chip leader with the ducks on the button. 
Nice to get it heads up as well. Seems good. So the effective stack here around 43, 45 big blinds at the start of the hand. So plenty of, plenty of chips to win if you do hit that set. What about four bet? Four bet glasses, I think? Yeah, wow. A lot of too many sunglasses. <laughs> Yeah, another, and Jarrah's not going to be super excited about that flop. See, we can see he's got a commanding lead, yeah. got the gut shot. <laughs> obviously, a lot of king jacks, king queens, ace jacks, ace queens, jack tens um, that are way ahead of the 9 8. And one of the problems about playing against the chip leader is I think against other opponents, we might want to immediately start turning these twos into a bluff, trying to fold out sixes, sevens, some ace highs. Because of who we're against, Pinto. So the. Maybe some of the lingering effects of that big hand. Just going to check back, and it's going to allow Jaros to take control of the hand. Actually, quite confident to be... <laughs> Calling for the rail. <laughs> Moaning at the strength of the Czech Republic rail. I <laughs> love it. There you go, guys. Now you got it. Yeah. I, I think in many ways, Sam, the check on the flop is actually a little bit more scary than a C-bet sometimes, right? On that kind of texture, it's like, I'm checking, but you know I'm not I giving up it. here, right? Because I would have C-bet with most of my bluffs, um, so. Play my blind three, makes sense. Three point two. makes sense, yeah. Yeah. And, um, yeah, Jaros seems like quite a character as well. Like, like absolutely great fun table to have yeah for he's the next couple of days he's yeah. been so fun on, on our feature tables as well he's just got a lot of really funny comments and yeah you know he wins a pot he's going yeah what, what can i do i'm always betting they're always calling they always call 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 all the time what can i do i'm always winning yeah i mean czech republic actually has a great live culture because of rosvedov and, and the scene around there right. a lot of players come through to playing the higher stakes or, or going on the tour and a lot of camaraderie because they meet up so often. I was uh, really great poker ambassadors like Martin Cabrell. <laughs> yes, absolutely. A man who eats a steak with his bare hands at the poker table. Always, <laughs> you know, nice to have representing your nation That's a man in to be the mind. Yeah. That's a man to he's be been feared. known to uh, devour many a steak. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and Pinto will go again. Like, nice to have the confidence to raise here. I think sometimes you can be, as an amateur, or your ranges aren't deep, as deeply ingrained, or you're not as experienced, you can sort of shy away from the spot. Lost a couple of hands and back off. Oh, my days. But as you say that, Mokri, the man who just took chips off him, is going to wake up at the big blind here with the aces. And, yes, Mokri jumping for joy inside here with uh, aces. And Pinto's... 1.5 million. Pinto's got to have some mental fortitude here because it forex things going against him and he has a hand which probably just wants to fold here and does immediately Later. really nice yeah don't don't get no ego no stubbornness no frustration with losing a couple of hands really really nice there from uh, Michael Pinto oh. Uh, good open and absolutely the right fold against the three bet. Not just playing results, but but the particular properties of that hand. And uh, I feel like this level we've seen uh, Mockery pick up kings, three bet, no action. Pick up kings, get the full double. Pick up aces, and pick up a nice pre-flop. I mean, pretty cool at this stage of the tournament. Absolute dream, dream scenario. You short stacked in, and and you just get those those big big hands. Really really nice. The yeah, you've got kings and your opponent puts you on 3-4. It's, it's, it's an ideal <laughs> scenario. <laughs> you could have 3-4 and you're just like, not easy, yeah, but you, don't. Have, you could have 7-8. <laughs> yeah, Mockery's going to get paid for the next, the full full next three seasons of EPT off that King <laughs> It's an absolute money maker. He set himself to be on TV. It's like, boom. Just, just no more bluffs for the next two years and, <laughs> and rake in the chips. I did it a couple of times on TV, but then unfortunately forgot to stop bluffing. Um, <laughs> Ever since then. So you've got to, like, uh, you know, switch up your game.
Holds around with a small blind, Mockery, king for offsuit. Yeah, and he was all in for just 10 big blinds against um, um, uh, Jimmy Guerrero, uh, covering him very, very strongly. And now Kaihan has nearly twice as many chips as Jimmy. That's, that's mm. what a, a change in fortunes we've seen over the last hour. Got like a, just a flat here with the king four at these stacked ups. Oh, never mind. This size to raise it up to 480. So exactly three times the big line. Yeah, and this is because of the nature of the stacks. Feels like he gets to raise quite a lot here as a covering stack. But Jimmy, uh, a cash game player, uh, and uh, I think any player would, would realize they have to defend the jack tent here. Oh, oh, yeah. But it does bloat the pot somewhat. One million out there already. Ace, Jack, Trey, two diamonds. Jimmy with a jack. Jimmy is flopping good. So 1.12 out there. What's the C-bet going to? What's this, the C-bet size going to be? Excuse me. Two six five. So less than a third here. Really, really small. Yeah, Mockery not going to be excited to get called here, of course. Uh, hoping Jimmy has a sort of eight, nine of clubs or, or, or seven, six of hearts type hand that he can just fold out. And look at this on the turn. Mockery outdrawing Jimmy Guero. Very fortunate turn card for the Norwegian. Still quite a scary turn, though, obviously. The diamonds complete, some straights complete. Queen 10, of course, now the nut straight. Two diamonds, of course, giving your opponent the made flush on the turn. I think when you pick up equity here and you could have turned the best hand, you usually slow down, right, Sam? You want to control the size of the pot here, see how your opponent responds. Yeah, absolutely. Now, that, that might be a bit of a tell. When people glance at their cards when three diamonds fall, it tends to be, I'm looking to see if I have a diamond, right? Or at least that's, that's kind of what they, what they tell you you're <laughs> supposed to think about, right? Yeah, I think Jimmy, so experienced, though, I mean, right. hopefully is just uh, balancing that. And I'm yep. certain on a right. big final table, he'll know yeah, actually exactly. the two hard, uh, yeah. cards that he has. Yeah, that, that was the follow-up. I feel like I've had conversations with many players who do that, you know, regardless. They'll do that when they have the made flush to intentionally look as though they're looking for a diamond. Yeah, so Mockery obviously beats all jacks. A Jack X, 3X, um, you know, some pocket pairs. And for that reason, we'll just check it over. Jimmy beats Mockery's give up, gives give ups. Um, his just air balls or his deuce X and 3X. And for that reason, we'll probably want to just show down. Yeah, that sounds about right. Cool. Yeah, and look at this. More heartbreak for Jimmy Guerrero. Things really gone against him and you see another cheer from the rail as and another Mokri pot takes chips after chips after chips <laughs> <It's in the laughs> yes. um, now you are it. yeah now you're enjoying right now, now you're playing again <laughs> now fun. officially having fun again. yeah, yeah. <laughs> officially now it's, uh, now it's official yeah and you you know swings in emotions uh, <laughs> at this final table jimmy you can see obviously so experienced but Still, what even for someone that? who's played as long and I'm sure as big as he has, this is a marquee final table for anyone. Look at that. What a scene. Down to the last 30 minutes of this level. Somewhat surprising we haven't lost a ninth place player yet. Two players now with sub 20 big blind stacks. That's Fischil and Kowalski. Kowalski with pocket tens under the gun. Yeah, and whereas Kowalski has 16 big blinds, has been involved in many, many hands. For Schill, just literally been sort of dealt out of this Silent. last few yeah. orbits. Yeah, muted. Uh, Mark Jerison, he's five suited folds. Ben Danelli's out with the hammer. There's Fischl. He's still there. 
Still getting dealt crap over the small blind. Jimmy's got seven high. Folds. Yarosh does not give up the big blind easily. And has not given up this one. Yeah, this, this even as chip leader, I think, is a little on the loose side. Uh, some players would fold here. Um, of course, could be very, very live against a hand like ace-queen and ace-king, but you can see that's not the case. And great flop for Kowalski. Hell of a flop for Tens. There's checks. Mr. Kowalski with the tens. I don't see any reason why you'd miss a bet here, Sam. Seems like the kind of board where you get a lot of action from big blind defends. Plenty of deuce X, plenty of 3X, plenty of 7X, plenty of straight draws. Seems good. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, folding out those overcards and the like. 250. Yeah, it just goes for smaller sizing on the disconnected board. And Jaros gives it up. Of course, this is one of the great things about being chip leader. Oh. Ooh. Uh, well, was 250 right? Ah, oh, he just, just oh, called. Just wow. Floats wow. with the eight high. The three straight yeah, feel, feeling good enough to call against a tiny bet. Hoping a card comes off that he can perhaps represent a five or a board pair uh, and lead. And what does Kowalski do on the overcard? I don't think you miss a bet against him. Yeah, sure, they might have queen seven, they might have queen three, they might have queen deuce, but I think there's more value to be had here from some of those smaller pairs. The queen of diamonds might be a card you bluff on because it's an overcard to the flop, of course. And there you go. Now now yeah. we get the full. But yeah. I like the turn bet. Yeah, absolutely. And it shows I like, shouldn't be so... My, my mistake there, so quick to interpret the action as a, how I would play it. I haven't seen Jaros play. And obviously, wants to be sticky, wants to be persistent as the chip leader, letting people know they're going to have to fight for every pot against him. But, oh, really? um, you know, uh, that's got to be sort of balanced against uh, hand strength, but felt he could continue there. And who am I to argue? Someone who has 91 big blinds at this uh, final table. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it was quite a small continue on the flop, and I feel like as the chip leader and Kowalski being the shortest stack, you know, a lot of times he might feel forced to be forced to give up with, you know, ace high, king high, something like that, and then you can get him off on a later street. A lot of people in the chat are like, he's floating with 8 6, he has no hand, no draw, but you guys are forgetting there's always the opportunity to turn your hand into a bluff on later streets, and the turn action is really going to, to decide that. Yeah, and. Uh, Really nice for Kowalski to just pad his stack slightly before playing the, putting in the big blind. Of course, the, you know, this, this big blind ante, very significant when you're on a short stack. Having to put in two big blinds is a big deal. And Pinto, who has not had things go his way last couple of orbits, picking up the bullets. Fischl still being dealt out. <laughs> We've all been there. You just want to scream. Yeah, like, ah, give me an ace king. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> I gave this hand. Yarosh. Why not? Once again, had Look forced to ditch the hammer. By the way, I'm loving Josh. Here we go, the 8 6. Again, 8 6. And Kowalski doesn't exactly have the stack to peel 8 6 that Yarosh had. And that would be a disaster to flop a pair of 8-6 against aces. Yeah, and here again, we just see the contrasting strategies of different stack sizes. Um, I mean, as I said, I perhaps would have folded in Jarvis' spot anyway. Um, but, you know, as, certainly as a big stack, much more liberty to defend widely against opponents with shorter stacks that Kowalski covered, letting the 8-6 go and... Absolutely good for him against the aces. What day for, of the tournament is this for them? Five or six? This is day five. Yeah, I mean, but I, not I, normal length days. We played six levels on all the days, which is one level more than usual. That's what it takes to get through a field this size. Yeah. 
really, really. I mean, I was, I was knackered on day two, mate. I was like pff, feeling exhausted. I was an hour and a half levels. <laughs> My whole man. So credit to these guys. See, the most important day of most of their poker careers. In fact, I would venture to guess all of their poker careers. And coming after four days, sometimes of not just the long poker days, but hard to sleep, the adrenaline pumping in a new city. Jimmy Guerrero probably out of the nightclub till four. Probably getting bottle service at Opium the first two days as well. I, the one the juicy thing, Omaha games. The one thing I miss, well, he did say that he had to finish 11th because he's down so much playing cash for right. this trip. So that's one. Two, I miss the old Jimmy Guerrero. I don't know if you remember, but uh, he made a final table for it. He had a toothpick. <laughs> the entire time. And I feel like the toothpick is really is the piece de resistance sure. with the whole image yeah. of Jimmy G. And Kowalski against what he knows is going to be a wide button open. Considering the jam here with King 10 and lets it go. Johnny Lahamo asks, what are the chips of each player? They are round. Thank you for your question. Yeah. And... We haven't seen too many clashes between, not, no hands play between these two big stacks since I started. 80 big blinds effective, and Scott gonna defend the low suited connector. Yeah, that sounds about right. 6 4 suited, very playable, facing that small open. Graphics team reminding us there will be a split 1% of the time. So. <laughs> that could be. It's not up to them. You know, they're not like typing, like, make sure you let them know there's a 1%. It's automatic. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. okay. I thought, I thought that, that's not Vivi's job. I thought she, each time the flop came down, she had to do quick calculations and put it up there. Beep up, boop, up, <laughs> and it's a really nice board for Jeros just to go ahead and see that here, in my opinion. I mean, yeah, we hyped it up. We said, this is it. Prepare. Fasten seatbelts. 1% of the time it's a split, but the, the, the other 99%, it's a 160 big blind pot with an equity value of 1.3 million. And instead we get a 7-9. Unacceptable. Can we get a change of dealer on the feature table? Manifestonia says, love you, Stapes. Any recent funny stories? Yes, actually. Thank you for your question. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, Jaros, what a, what a charismatic guy. Loving this. Yeah, I have to say, if I if I was nervous on the rail, if this was my first, you know, EPT final table, which of course it would be in my case, having so many people behind you backing you up would really give you the confidence to, to play your A game and not take it not take it seriously to the point where you get really overwhelmed in your own head, you know what sure. I mean? Sam? Sure, it's lovely to share and to share the moment with uh, Right. You know, it's, it's also great. Like, people have, like, swaps and sweats and bought pieces. Yeah. Um, you know, even, even obviously, with a lot of these guys being European, family can fly over on occasion. P people you owe money to fly in and <laughs> look to collect. Line it up, boys. Yeah, I've had conversations with friends along the lines of, if you make this final, I'm, I'm, I'm on the next flight, you know. And uh, that's the cool thing about European Poker Tour. Most of these locations depending on where you live in Europe, are, you know, three hours tops away. You know, it's nice to be on this side of the pond. You know, but most of the EPT stops are in Europe. Is this where you are? Exactly. Is that where you're off? Exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> most of them reside in Europe, absolutely. Uh, apart from the Bahamas, though, Sam. Absolutely. absolutely. I mean, that, one, that one's a little uh, bit... And also uh, England and Britain, UK. <laughs> that's true as We're well. We're just uh, foreign. In, in, in Europe <laughs> or England, that's correct. Exactly. <laughs> that's really funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he wants his change. Give me my change. <laughs> they don't even know. <laughs> Look at Jimmy Guerrero, by the way. Everyone else having the time of their lives. Yeah. Stacking up, like, yeah, 100 cool. big lives. Cool, cool, Look cool, 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 cool. laughing and high-fiving. And, like, Jimmy Guerrero is just like, oh, my goodness. All this time. <laughs> also, the man's been overshadowed by Elkie. He could have been the Elkie. Basically, Elkie took his spot. This is good, guys, yes. You can have my friend. Don't use my friend. <laughs> But we are actually friends also. We played oh. Mega stuff oh, together. Okay. Then you can use them. You can use yeah. them. We can yeah, share 50-50. Yeah. So because Kowalski is yeah. part yeah. swapping <laughs> of the... Uh, ooh. <laughs> ooh, la, la. Because Kowalski is part of the Samba poker team, Yarosh has been dancing and saying Samba when he wins a pot. That's why there's right. so much movement going on over there. 
Yeah, don't you feel, by the way, that that's true, uh, Joe? Uh, Elkie, basically, you know, it, it could have been Jimmy Guerrero. He could have won PCA. I mean, there's room for only one, you know, blinged out. You know, one, uh, there's only room for the, one Frenchman The only has tolerance for one French person at a time. Yeah. <laughs> yes. One French male at a time. French women will make an exception yeah, for yeah, it, it, it. Yeah, exactly. You know, it was, it was Charles de Gaulle, then it was Gerard Depardieu, <laughs> and then it was Elkie. Uh, <laughs> and until Elkie passes, there's, there's no, no room for an upper comer. You can only bedazzle one French yeah, exactly. at a time. Charles de Gaulle actually, you know, across World War II, he did wear bejeweled. It's a... Uh, <laughs> Yeah. And had a toothpick. <laughs> yes. I didn't know they had, they had Ed Hardy back then, but yeah, sure. That's why there's a giant toothpick at the airport. <laughs> but, mate, by the way, Patrick, is he won the tournament already. Does he, are they, are we giving him one by seven minutes. I've, I've, I've seen EPT winners less excited <laughs> I, than Patrick I certainly Jackson. have seen EPT winners less excited. <laughs> I mean. Hey, man, you think you could give me anything in this interview? <laughs> nope. Okay, back to you, James. <laughs> And it's three in the morning, and there's no rail, and there's no energy whatsoever. Oh dear! Oh dear! Yeah. No, these guys are all winners. They've already won in their in their own eyes. They're like, yeah, this is great. Having a great time. I feel like this is, this is the spot for Fischel. Go on, Fischel. He's, he's, he's in the big blind, and he's going to pick up Ace Queen off. This is my foresight on this how this hand's going to play out. I play the main event. Yeah, Look at that event. swaggy. <laughs> Flicks in the chips, leans back, the just as if he's playing uh, a cash game on the on Benzis Last Square. And Bendinelli with Queen nice. Jack suited. Did you have something from him? Obviously such no a beautiful and playable <laughs> hand. More delicate situation because of the stack size. Yeah, that's right. Bendinelli here with only 27 big blinds. So it needs to be cautious. We have seen him play, be, uh, play a little bit more passively here at this table so far. I think a flat's kind of what you always want to do here, though, anyway, right, Sam? I think we could just... Uh, against the chip leader, I don't even hate a jam, to be honest. Oh, wow. For Schill here, Carl. as predicted, 7-6 off. He's making do. Call, call, call. PlayStation, really? Call. <laughs> Multi-way <laughs> okay, pop, buddy. <laughs> uh, but yeah, obviously flatting also perfectly fine, and you can see very, very live against Trace wow. ways Ooh. to the flop, and Yarosh is not going to calm down anytime soon. One hundred percent flops two opponents dead. Very rare to see that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and Ben Dinelli, very strong rank in this position, but no club on board. No way. Very, very hard to outdraw the king because of that. If his opponent does have one or outdraw aces or the like. So getting word from our uh, colleagues from across the world that Pinto apparently means <laughs> in Portuguese. <laughs> <laughs> so they're having a very fun time on the stream over there. <laughs> well, isn't it beans as well? Isn't it Pinto? It's yeah, also, right, you know, if yeah, Pinto yeah, does yeah, happen yeah, to implode, it was yeah. a type of car in the 1970s <laughs> that would explode get, if you uh, tap the bumper. Czech Republic flag and the Norwegian <laughs> flag tomorrow. We get both. It's good? Yeah, it's fine. Uh, Jaros over a hundred big blinds, uh, distancing himself somewhat from Scott. Obviously, pot after pot after pot. doesn't make a huge He's difference. He's the table <laughs> with the amount of chips what he has. <laughs> Everybody are so scared. Yeah. Just Mr. Mokri. <laughs> I mean, it's probably the same thing we go through if there's a guy named Dick at the table, right? Sure. So, I mean, not, something you go through, yeah. I'm a big fan of Dick. <laughs> Dick is huge. And maybe some okay, maybe. Well played, Richard. $9.5 million. <laughs> fuck. I will get it. <laughs> so, uh, Mokri's going to be opening this pot. Ace 8 suited.
Bendinelli also with ace eight. Double suited. I feel like this is a pretty easy fold. Ace eight, pretty tricky to play from the cutoff here. Still lots of players to act behind you. It turns out CO means uh, co-pilot because that's when a hijack comes from afterward. The cutty, I think, is the cool way the to say cutty? it. The cutty? Is that what yeah, people I, say now? Yeah, you, you, you just say, I, I raised it up in the cutty. Uh, I think it sounds... I'm not having that. I'm not having that. We've, we've already made it CO for a reason. We've we abbreviated we, yeah, we way can't. too much stuff. Riv. People say riv sometimes. Come on. <laughs> what are you doing with all that extra time you're saving? Listen, the Norwegians having a great time of it. Brazil, Brazil is not here, actually. <laughs> Your friends are gone. <laughs> you win one, you win one hand. They're waiting for I two spots. I don't think you yeah, want to mock the Brazilians like when it comes to. <laughs> Take down the blind <laughs> screen. <laughs> I mean, what the fuck? <laughs> Come on. Oh, for, here just for the party, huh? Says the guy who hasn't they're been dealt a hand in party. four and a half hours. People, Understandable. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I, I, I want to fold and I want to cheer there. from the rail. Really? You know what I mean? Like, great fold, excellent, excellent fold. Never winning there. <laughs> so the Portuguese stream has over 7,000 people watching. What party? And they're what saying they're getting about 60 Pinto <laughs> jokes per minute. <laughs> <laughs> That's one per <laughs> second. Guerrero raising yeah, under the gun, two tens. There's a party for them. Mark Jarrison out. Ben Dinelli. <laughs> Going off? Out. Pinto is reaching for chips, has ace queen, and just calls. Fischl out. Costa out. Mockery out. Oh, not out yet. Sorry. 10 6 suited. Yeah. Not out, but in. So suited in the big blind. Great price. Let's play ball. Three ways to the flop. Love me some multi-way Pinto action. And that flop is queen, seven, four, top pair, top kicker for Pinto. Yeah, and Jimmy Guerrero's bad run of fortune continues. Just the one overcard. Of course, he's going to be aware that Pinto's going to have hands like fours, hands like sevens, ace, queen, king, queen, and the like. Very difficult to navigate the tens here. Checks over to Pinto. Prima. So, so, K, K, 2. And it's quite a big sizing, actually, multi-way. Going for the third pot here. Mark Reed just going to be, just going to pause and see whether he might be able to mess with the button. Mm. But Bye. Thinks better of it. And Jimmy, having checked a pretty strong hand, can he find a fold here versus... Pinto's bet. No, he can't. Reaching for chips to call. Hoping that his opponent slows down. Obviously, we know Mockery folded a 10. Just one out against Pinto's actual hand. And Pinto improves on the turn. Another bad card to see when you hold pocket 10s. Two per now. Top tuper. A nice moment for the amateur. Doesn't even check back at his cards, just immediately reaching for chips. And actually, although Jimmy's going to be annoyed to see that, it's going to make it a little bit easier, perhaps, to escape on the turn with the two over cards now. Oh, it's a minuscule bet, by the way. 230K into 1.9 million. Almost like he knows he's got his... If you knew your opponent had one out, this is the size that you would be betting. And will Jimmy... <laughs> one of the most disgusting... 
Pinto no. milking. Oh, reeling him wow. in. Wow. And Jimmy, a bit of stubbornness. Jimmy is getting stubborn. The sizing. Jimmy's missing rivers. Pinto milking Guerrero. Yeah, and there's actually, despite the tiny sizing, because the pot's gone three way, 2.5 million in the middle which would represent a huge part of Guero's stack. And now Pinto loading up, having pulled his opponent all the way along to the river, hoping that his opponent has an ace-king. See, a lot of aces, ace-jack and ace-ten, etc., would all chop. This and is a huge percentage of Guerrero's stack. Yeah, and Jimmy, tens, ten of clubs, very... Unfortunate holding to have, and this is. I mean, this is almost everything for Guerrero. Yeah, and Jimmy. I can't imagine feeling getting paid off. frustrated, talking to himself a little bit. I mean, this is just part of his flamboyancy, and will fold. And that's a big pot for the amateur, who made that perhaps arguable misstep uh, against Mockery. Pads is stacked hugely, and Jimmy Guerrero who started Pinto back up on top. Now, I did mention he's got a bit of an interesting story, and we got a chance to talk to Michael Pinto earlier today. I'm an account manager. It was always my passion to play poker, and uh, my dream was to play an EPT and eventually win one. I will do my best to make my dream come true. It was uh, approximately uh, three months ago. I drove with a motor scooter and I got hit by a car. I went a couple of meters in the air and, and, and landed on the ground. My helmet flew off and the police officer said I made a somersault in the air and I landed on my back and I hit on my head again. So it was like in the hospital, they thought that I had some brain trauma. I really had difficulties talking. I had difficulties remembering names, remembering people, stuttering, and I really had to recover for approximately seven weeks physically and mentally. Police officer said you had an angel on your shoulder. When I was lying on the ground, I thought one of the things that I really want to accomplish is playing uh, the Barcelona main event and to win it eventually. I didn't have the money to buy in straight away, play the qualifier at 11.50 and I luckily qualified. I'm very lucky to be here in the shape I am today. It really feels like a dream, everything. Hopefully I, I win the whole thing. It does sound like Michael Pinto has an angel on his shoulder, but I would like to remind him it's one player to a hand. <laughs> wow, what a story, though. <laughs> Very happy he's still with us. Seems like a really this? great guy. Just getting a little sense of the person behind the, the, the stack here. And uh, we're really pleased to have him on this final table, adding a lot both in the style of play and the uh, the demeanor with which he's conducting himself. With, with, with the which, you know, the way he took that, um, I wouldn't say beat, but the all-in altercation with a lot of good spirits, laughing and joking with his opponent afterwards, seems like a real sweetheart. And Jimmy, now with pocket queens against the Jack Five. Sorry. And, and he's a tricky... Oh, he just jams. I was going to say, occasionally, Jimmy can definitely be a little, uh, not not a stickler for the rules. We'll play his hand exactly as he feels best. It felt like, no, it felt like Jam was the player. I, I was wondering if he would do something unorthodox there. Jam's reasonable. Um, you can throw bet as well. But uh, he uh, he's definitely a, a real character to play with. And... Uh, you know, you can just see that even even for very, very experienced players, someone that plays as a professional, probably very high stakes cash. This is this final table very meaningful in terms of the money, the prestige, and it's it's tough when things go against you. Jimmy at the twenty three big blind mark. Yarrow is still on top. Mark Jarrison haven't heard much from him lately. Seventy seven big blinds, very comfortable stack. And Kowalski is first to act here. Kowalski starting with 18 big blinds. Ace-jack under the gun can be a dicey situation 
with that stack size. And there it is in the very next spot. Pocket Queens for Margerison. Probably three. Maybe 2.8. Yeah, this is not what you're looking for with Ace Jack off the stack on your left, taking an interest. It's the very nice hand to be opening off a short stack where block blockers are so important. And Scott coming out with the three bet. <laughs> These two will have played a lot of poker against each other online. Both regulars on Poker Stars over the years. I've played with them both myself a lot. Good point. Costa with the King Jack of Diamonds. See you later. Yeah, just take you a moment to mourn the fact that you can't play this beautiful hand. Mockery. With oh, kings. No, no. Can you believe it? Wow. And, and these are two. Big stacks. Mockery third on the leaderboard. Margerison second. And this is this is going to be a shame. Mockery with sixty big blinds, and you know what? Kings for the third time this level. Yeah, does it make it like two point two? Yeah, I was going to say something in that region. Really, really small four bet here is called for. Yeah, and. Kowalski's ace jack going to shrivel up and Scott, one of the best in the business, going to realize the narrow, narrow range of hands that Mockery's okay. representing. So this is 2.1. Margerison. 1.175 to call. Yeah, and even as experienced as Scott is, uh, not often you face this exact spot on a big final table. And I, w all three things are possible depending on the type of player, the type of approach Scott wants to make: fold, call, and shove, or or, or five bet. Uh, and I, my instinct is that Scott's going to proceed through call but we shall see this is probably this is just a real genuine tank from scott this is a very unusual situation yeah. to be in um he's assessing his stack uh mockery's scat stack the position in the tournament actually mockery with just 46 big blinds does mockery's reputation play into this at all knowing that he's made moves like this with eights before he's made crazy bluffs yeah, well, I don't. I think Scott's gonna recognize. You know, to to some players, it seems like Mockery's gonna uh, Mockery's crazy. I think to Scott, he's just gonna recognize his opponents smart and capable, Got right? It. And it will be with a lot of respect that he takes this takes this flop. Um, the flop is nine high. Still big, big trouble for Margerison. Yeah, both of them with a spade, and this is just a very neutral flop. Like not much changes. Very occasionally. Mockery might have hit a five or four, depending on what hands he chooses to bluff in this situation. But nothing really changing. Mockery doesn't have tens, probably doesn't have jacks in this situation. It's a hand a bit stronger than queens or a bluff. Very occasionally ace-king. Uh, ace-king suited particularly. Uh, Ace King off Mike elect to shove just really narrow ranges of hands and Mockery of course is also going to realize that Scott has a very very narrow range of himself but this is at one of those small sea bets yeah no need to bet big under a million so under just about a fifth of the pot yeah and and this is a high pressure moment you oh, see you're God. seeing one of the UK's finest poker players in a very difficult spot. Do we want to fold out ace-king, raise now, um, you know, fold out an ace overcard? Do we just put it in and hope for the best? Or do we proceed through call again and sort of make Mockery blast off, keep his bluffs in? What does Scott want to do? Michael on YouTube says, I don't know why Mockery would bet this. I do, to build a pot. Yeah, this is... this is To win chips. High stakes poker, by the way. 
on the biggest. No, in oh, Mark Jarrison oh. shoves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just wants to follow. And, and wow. No Mockery oh, wow. makes the call. This is the biggest pot of the tournament. Mark Jarrison with two outs. Mockery, the player at risk. Mark Jarrison will not go broke here, no matter what. Trying to figure that out for himself now. Trying to see what he'll be left with. Yeah. If the 90% probability holds. Yeah. Huge deflation for Scott. Big hand after big hand for Mockery this level. They have all either won pre-flop or held. This will be Mockery's second double up of the level if these kings hold. Yeah, all 10% of the time. Scott Marjorson will be a huge ship leader. That's a brick. That is a brick. One card to come. And we will be on the 75 minute dinner break after this hand. River card is another nine. Those kings do, in fact, hold full double up for Mockery, who is now table chip leader, tournament chip leader, 123 big blinds. Mark Jarrison drops to below the 20 big blind mark. Yeah, amazing scenes. And you see, Mockley doesn't even overtly celebrate. He's aware almost of the magnitude of the moment and doesn't want to rub it in Scott's of face. Of course. Because it's such it could a have happened the exact opposite way. Absolutely. And good poker pros know this. Yeah, and Scott tumbles to 14 big blinds. Ooh, 14 big blinds, excuse me. Massive, massive pot. The biggest of the tournament worth six figures in equity. And this is no limit holder tournament poker, by the way. He's gone from being the shortest stack on this final to the chip leader in a, on the unofficial table final. And look at that, Scott. You can see, even for someone of Scott's experience, this is an, a, a, it's a body blow. And it's great that he's going to have the break to just regroup and get used to the new position oh, yeah, he finds right. himself in. I don't know how anyone is supposed to eat at a time like this, it's but Mockery can, <laughs> yeah. will probably spring for the surf and turf and surf again. Yeah, it's a good job Scott didn't eat before he, the hands were tabled. Might have seen that <laughs> unfortunate situation. And... Very disgusting spot for Mark Jarrison, who at the new blind level will have 14 big blinds. When we come back, those blinds are going to be 100,000 for the small blind. 200,000 for the big blind and 200,000 for the big blind ante. Mockery was all in and called with King 4 off uh, literally an hour and, and 15 minutes ago. Up against Ace High and did manage to spike the King. Yeah, what a run. Unbelievable seats. And, uh, this is why we tune in. Up nearly 10 million chips from the start of the day. But that graph is going to look like a roller coaster. We are headed to dinner break. Let's see all of the chip counts before we go. Kahan Mockery, the man of the hour. Leapfrogs, Patrick Yarosh, who was top of the leaderboard. And there is a lot of space between those two players and everyone else. Costa Pinto, semi-comfortable, and then everyone else, Ben Dinelli, Guerrero, Margerison, Kowalski, Fischil, all in trouble. We're going on dinner break, back in 73 from EPT Barcelona. So the goal today is to play down to six players, but as ever, it's oh, fluid. Nice. <laughs> kind of like me in college, you know what I mean? Yeah. There's a lot of different outcomes <laughs> that can happen. Sure, no judgment. Uh, if we get down to six players very quickly, we'll probably play a little bit longer. Uh, if we play six full levels and we're only at seven or eight, we'll probably call it a day. But the goal is to get to six and have it so that uh, so that the average stack isn't super, super deep by the time we start the final tables. Yeah, yeah. I mean... 
you know, Joe's been doing this a long time. I think he's right. What we want is, you know, a decent amount of action tomorrow to follow, but not so much action that it's like five o'clock in the morning here in Barcelona when we finish, right? Correct. Yeah. You know, we want to uh, we want to see plenty of action tomorrow. Fill up our entire schedule. These are normal. My my goal is that it doesn't go so late that when I hand the trophy over that I don't remember the winner's name. <laughs> And that has happened multiple times. Let's give it up for <sighs> Manic Lurzer. Luckily, I didn't have to do that one, but that would have been a situation. <laughs> Guerrero all in, 8-7 suited. From plus two. Guerrero starting the hand with 1.1 million, which is around a 15 big blind stack. Kind of risky, I don't know. You know what? I'm, I'm actually not sure about this line. Uh, you know, these suited connectors are very frequently going to sneak into some of these jam spots just because they perform so well when called by some of the premiums. And actually, these are some of the best combos if you're going to run into aces or ace jack. He still has plenty of equity here, though, Joe. That's kind of the point I'm trying to make. He'll still be about 60-40 against ace jack. I mean, this is unfortunate. Also, shoving into the big blind of the biggest stack at the table who can afford to call you as light as possible. I think I think yeah, this I is know, a call every time. <laughs> yeah. I know. <laughs> Certainly for the 136 big blind stack of Michael Pinto. Yeah, I mean, he's going to give it a thought. He does, you know, you don't want to make any mistakes here. You've got time. I just think if, if you really dig deep, he's going to shove a lot of weaker aces here. So immediately you're crushing a bunch of that. He might shove hands like 8-7 suited once in a while. He might have like 9, 10 suited once in a while. Pinto makes the call. Guerrero at risk. I'll say this. It takes heart to shove eight high from under the gun plus two. Yeah, I'm not completely sure if this is the shove that that I would make. But I mean, I'm not super well versed on these sort of 15 big blind spots um, when we are still eight handed. But as Nick said, you're going to be live a lot of the time when you get called here. Yeah, that's exactly why some of these perform so well when you're playing push fold. Um, they perform some of the best against aces as well. Yes. Oh, Six, seven, eight, <laughs> nine, <laughs> ten. How do they know? Guerrero flops the joint. <laughs> Let's go. Pinto not dead, but Guerrero with 91% of this pot locked up.